Honorable members, I regret to inform you uh, that he, uh, yesterday we received uh, sad news uh, from the right honorable speaker. Uh, her mother, uh, Ms. Kamuzina uh, Helen, uh, passed away. So the right honorable speaker uh, will not be able to preside over uh, this sitting uh, this morning. As per uh, the YALA rules of procedure, uh, Annex 3, uh, I'm supposed to uh, preside over uh, this uh, informal meeting uh, this morning uh, to elect a member uh, to preside over uh, the sitting, uh, this sitting in the absence of the speaker. So, uh, honorable members, uh, this is just information, and uh, uh, as we begin, we'll be able uh, to guide you through uh, what the Annex 3 or the procedure for electing a, a member to preside over this particular sitting. Uh, thank you. Honorable members, uh, uh, according to Annex 3 of the procedure for election of a member to preside uh, at the sittings of the assembly in the absence of the speaker, I uh, guide as follows. One, the clerk shall preside in the election of a member to preside in the assembly in the absence of the speaker. The sitting shall be informal, but in the chamber uh, of the house. Two, the nominations for the candidates for election of a member to preside in the assembly shall be done on the floor of the house. Number three, the member wishing to propose a name for the person to preside shall rise in his or her place. And upon uh, catching uh, the eye of the person presiding, shall state that I uh, wish to propose that honorable so-and-so do take the chair to preside in the assembly for today's sitting and the subsequent sittings until such time as the speaker may be, may, may be present. The proposal shall uh, be seconded, and if the member proposed consent uh, to the nomination, he or she shall be deemed to be duly nominated. Number four, if more than one member has been duly nominated, the presiding officer uh, shall call for a vote by show of hands. The member scoring the highest number of votes shall be declared elected and conducted to the chair of the speaker. If only one member is nominated, he or she shall be declared elected and conducted to the chair of the speaker. The member elected uh, will be then make extempore and a brief remarks expressing gratitude for having been elected and submitting himself, herself, to the will of the House, the supremacy of the rules of the House, and the laying claim to the privileges of the Assembly and the members. The member elected, number seven, would make a short adjournment and would lead a procession to the office of the Speaker for the Assembly. Number eight, the Speaker's procession would then return to the House for continuation of the rest of business. Number nine, and the last, during the debate in the House, thereafter, all members shall refer to the member elected as Mr. or Madam Speaker. Uh, honorable members, uh, uh, that is the, uh, the procedure uh, for uh, electing uh, a member to preside uh, 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 the sitting. In the procedure. Of the procedure, Mr. Clark. As you... The flag. That's for last thing. Thank you, Mr. As far as Annex 3, therefore, I wish to propose uh, Honorable 
Dr. Pierre Rigema uh, to take the chair to preside in the assembly for today's hearing. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, uh, for me, I have a proposal. Uh, uh, though it's not in, to, in the rules, because of the procedure which we are going to follow, uh, I think we sh for me, I propose someone who's in Arusha who will be easier to, to be guided by the clerk. Therefore, I'm proposing Honorable Remoyan Josephine. What? Honorable Mr. Thank you very much. I would want to move on the procedure point that if it, today the lead clerk for this particular budget session is Alfred Tugume, so if the submission of Honorable Christopher was to go through, then we would have to consider someone from this side who's in Uganda. So I would, that's why I was striking out. I would move straight out to that submission that it does not matter about to whether. Uh, Thank you very much, Honorable Namara, for, uh, for, uh, for, for the procedural uh, guidance. Uh, honorable members, uh, we should take in, into cognizance that uh, today uh, we are going to uh, have a very hectic uh, sitting uh, to do with the uh, budgeting uh, from this morning uh, to the evening. So, uh, honorable members, I would uh, request your intelligence uh, to nominate uh, people uh, who may have experience uh, uh, before uh in the assembly so that uh, we can be able to move uh, faster uh, so far we have Mr. two Clark, nomination sir. thank you very yes, much yes i have nomination clerk mr clerk mr clerk procedure mr clerk i am nominating honorable mr clerk yes honorable honorable bahati alex I, uh, I wish to propose that Honorable Dr. Oboro Ginga no, no. to do the chair of the presidents of the assembly for today's sitting. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 Honorable Clark, I thank uh, Honorable Alex uh, for uh, nominating me, but I, I, I wish to decline from uh, taking that position. Thank you very much, my Honorable members, so far we have received it to Honorable Mary Mugeni. Yes, Mr. Clark, sir, you have the I would like to, nom to second the nomination of Honorable Dr. Wigema. And, uh, and the reason is given uh, is that um, it's an experienced leader and in parliament. This is not his first time in parliament, but also I learned from last time that when the speakership is held by a chapter, then it is normal that the oh, chapter the members will yeah. decide over the, over the house is from that chapter. So for those reasons, I would like to second the nomination of Honorable Dr. Rigema. We are always uh, Thank you, Mr. Hey, Clark. Clark. Mr. Clark. Honorable Lemoyani. Uh, thank you very much, and let me express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to uh, Mushimiwa Chris for nominating me. 
uh, this is an indication that maybe when I come next time, I'm going to be very close to those positions. Otherwise, I would uh, really uh, honor uh, the, 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 the suggestion that uh, we get somebody with uh, much experience, especially due to the fact that this time we are going to discuss the issue of budget, and it's going to be a, and it's going to be a, a, a quite a heavy uh, session. Not that I'm afraid of it, but I'm declining. Thank you very much, and I'm proposing Regema to continue. Usika Sirike, I need Usika Sirike. Mr. Clark, eh? Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. I think. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Honorable members, uh, missed, so missed, far missed. we have received uh, two nominations, but now uh, uh, like the only one uh, name uh, has carried out the day. Honorable Dr. Uburu. Honorable Pierre. You have a hand, yes. Well, oh, that oh, 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 and second, uh, uh, Honorable Rigema for the position of uh, speaker uh, for the session. Thank you, thank you, Banaklak. Thank you, uh, Honorable Dr. Oburu for, for second. Mr. Clark. Honorable Pierre, yes. you, you, have, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Clark, for the for the opportunity. I would like to ask uh, procedurally, what about the mess? Are we are we going to move the mess to Kigali, or we, we are in Arusha? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Honorable members, I think all of all of you have the virtual rules of uh, <laughs> procedure, and uh, they are very clear uh, that uh, I mean they clearly guide. Uh, this particular virtual house uh, to proceed uh, without uh, any problem. Uh, uh, so wherever the speaker is, uh, uh, we can still uh, continue doing. And uh, I can actually guide you uh, in our rules of procedure for virtual uh, 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 meetings, uh, rule seven, uh, about the mess. It, is, it says, once the speaker enters the virtual chamber, the clerk shall cause the mess to be placed at one of the clerk's tables uh, in the virtual chamber before the prayer by the assembly. So uh, we have no problem with that uh, because wherever the speaker will be, uh, where the clerks are, uh, they will be placed. And we have the clerks in Arusha here. Thank you, Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark. Well done, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Clark, for the opportunity. Let me recall that uh, the conditions where we are in, they are quite extraordinary. Yes. We are working through VC facilities. And as you know, budget process requires much traditional practices, whereby I think that the support of the clerk will be of most important, and uh, I'm proposing that since the one who will be leading these activities will have to have physical consultation with the clerk, because without support, physical support of the clerk, the chairperson will be in trouble. I am proposing Honorable Musamari from Uganda, because the clerk to Gume is more experienced in this budget process. He will be helping much. Yes, I am not opposing Honorable Rigema. He is from Rwanda. He is in Michigari. There is no substantive clerk who will be helping physically. So I am proposing Honorable Musamari, who is in Kampara, and the clerk to Gume will be helping much. I raise my case. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Muhirwa. Uh, let me hear from Honorable Rigema first uh, before I ask for seconda for Honorable Musamari. Honorable Rigema, uh, Honorable Dr. Rigema, please. Honorable Rujema, Dr. Rujema. I hear you. Uh, good morning, first. And I good morning, uh, uh, Honorable Dr. Rujema. Do you hear me? Yes, I can you hear, hear you. Me? Okay. I, 
I tell you morning first, and uh, I appreciate for the nomination of my colleagues. I can refuse the nomination, I can do that. But my problem, perhaps, is that I have to be with next to the clerk, and now I'm in Kigali, you, you are in Arusha. Thank you very much, Honorable Rujema. Uh, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, honorable members, uh, I would like to ask for a second for Honorable Musamali. Oh, all of us. Excuse me. Honorable Mr. Clark. Excuse me, Clark. Honorable Ambassador Fatuma. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to allow Honorable Rigema to, ex to further express himself. I think the concern he had was with the clerk. But we've had a, a situation where the speaker has been in Kigali and the clerks were assisting him because this is virtual. So probably, because mm -hmm. I didn't hear him refuse, unless, so I was requesting that you allow him to further say what he wants to say and probably guide him on the clerks because there's been a precedent where the speaker has ever chaired from Kigali and he got the services of clerk from Arusha because from Arusha this is virtual. So he didn't say no, but he wanted to get uh, that support of the clerks. So maybe he okay. can speak uh, for himself. Honorable, honorable members, uh, as I earlier on alluded, uh, today's sitting uh, is very critical and uh, uh, it is highly packed. Uh, highly packed in the sense that uh, uh, we have almost six pages uh, of the order paper for today, uh, mm -hmm. from morning up to the evening. And uh, we have uh, quite a number uh, of order, uh, of agenda items uh, to be considered. And uh, normally, uh, the office of the clerk prepares uh, what we call as a notes of speaker. And uh, in this case, uh, the speaker uh, is uh, actually uh, highly required to be very close uh, either uh, to the clerk in uh, Kampala or the clerk here in Arusha. Because today uh, we have two preside, I mean, clerks at table. Uh, the acting deputy clerk, Mr. Tugume, who is in Kampala, and uh, Mr. Uh, Sherry Wimile, uh, who is seated with me here. So these are the ones uh, who are going to be at the clerk's table uh, to guide uh, the speaker and the house uh, over uh, this uh, budget session for the whole day. Uh, so in this case, uh, I would just uh, request for your indulgence and the wisdom uh, that uh, the speaker uh, would need to be very close <laughs> Uh, to uh, one of these two officers, so that uh, he or she is guided properly. Uh, so if uh, you think we can be breaking time and again uh, for consultation and uh, being guided and we move forward, it's well and good. But if we think it is going to be very cumbersome, then honorable members, I would request you to uh, actually uh, go the way uh, some of the members are proposing. I, I thank you. Yeah, uh, ma Mr. Clark. Yes, uh, 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 Acting Deputy Clark, Mr. Tugumi, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, is there. Thank you very much, uh, my senior colleague. Uh, Honorable members uh, of this assembly, I've listened attentively to your, your submission. But... Uh, like my senior colleague has said, this exercise is not only tedious, but it is also highly technical and highly procedural. I have to admit that in previous sittings, we've had the speaker preside over the assembly while in Chigari without any clerk next to him. However, that was not during the consideration of the budget. You have to appreciate that passing the budget, unlike other business of the House, involves passing bills. 
Any procedure mistake regarding the passage of bills will lead to the nullification of the entire process. I believe the assembly is not prepared to go through that. My humble appeal to you is take into consideration the proposals that have been made by members, more so those who are saying that let someone who's going to preside be someone who has experience and possibly reasonable knowledge in, in, the, in this kind of exercise. Secondly, it should also be someone who would either be in Arusha or in Kampala, so that at least me and my colleague who is in Arusha, we are able to give the necessary support. The other appeal to you, honorable members, is since the news, the sudden news of the death of the speaker's mother has just been brought to our attention, I know how damaging that can be. I would request my senior colleague that we suspend this interaction for 10 minutes so that members can be able to consult among themselves and they come up with the, pro the, the names that you eventually vote on. I thank you. Thank you very much, honorable members. Uh, honorable members, uh, k k since uh, this information has just come abruptly, and maybe uh, you want to consult for a few minutes, uh, I suspend for 10 minutes, and then when we uh, resume, uh, we might have made our, uh, our, our, our decisions on how to, uh, to move forward. Uh, the informal sitting... Uh, Clarification. Yes, um, before we break for the 10 minutes, I would like to have it clear whether we have agreed to only pick presiding of, uh, the presiding uh, speaker from the two capitals named, that is Arusha and Kampala. Is that the agreed position so that then we can be focused? Yeah, we support two. that, Moshimio. But if it is not, then it it leaves us a, a wide range of uh, of members to choose from. So I would suggest that before we break, let's agree on that principle. Are we narrowing it down to only the two capitals where the clerks are? Oh, it's still open. Let's agree on that, Mr. Clark, first. Thank, I thank you very much, Honorable uh, Mary Mugeni, for uh, good guidance. Honorable members, I, I, I think... Mr. Clark. Clarification, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. On, on, Honorable... Honorable Mr. Clark. Dr. Oda? Uh, Honorable Oda. Ma hmm. Thank you, uh, Clark. Uh, honorable members, uh, good morning. Honorable Chair Council. Uh, first of all, we regret to, for, the, for the loss of uh, the mother of our right honorable speaker. Um, I would wish that uh, we take the, the 10 minutes, but I, I wish that we consider the, the, the guidelines we had put ourselves on the virtual meetings. If we start opening it up, then it will be difficult, and as you have guided, uh, we have a very difficult uh, 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 challenge of time as we are going to deliberate on the budget. So I think let us uh, do it uh, simple. We are members. Uh, this is a one-day uh, activity. Let us consult among each other, each other, not as capitals, and uh, come up with uh, uh, recommendations of uh, uh, the honorable members who can help us today. So I would wish to propose that uh, we follow the guidelines we had put in place uh, than introducing the new ones. And we come up with the names among ourselves, which uh, we can uh, choose among them. And let us make it simple. This is uh, anyone from our, 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 our team can do this exercise. And our senior clerks, wherever they are, we have the means where they can inform. There is no secret in this. They can even take uh, request for, for, for a chance to propose to the speaker 
to the presiding of a speaker on any procedural matter, and all of us follow. So I would wish that we continue and follow the guidelines we have put in place and let any one of us uh, preside over today's meeting as simple as it could have. Uh, we could all wish to make sure that our budget passes today. I wish to submit. Mr. Clark. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Oda. Uh, Honorable Mr. Muhira. Clark. Honorable Muhira. Uh, yeah. I, 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 Thank you, I, I Mr. Clark. You, you, you have already spoken. I, I, I wanted to uh, make a proposal before we suspend. Procedure. Procedure, Mr. Clark. Procedure. Yes, yes Honorable Muhira. Yeah, Mr. Clark, this house is the house of laws. We have laws of procedure that govern our activities. When you go and revisit Alex three on how members we elect a member to preside over in the house of the, of the speaker, there is no way members have to consult. When one when, the, when there is more than one member, this clerk will proceed on votes, on voting. And we had proposed Honorable Mosamari, and there is Honorable Wigema. And he declined. We still have a single nominated person who is Honorable Mosamari. Let's hear from him if he declines or not, and then we proceed. I raise my case. No, this is Honorable members, uh, procedure, Mr. Clark. Procedure. Honorable, Honorable Dr. Makame. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Uh, I'm just standing on, standing on a point of procedure and uh, to support the submission uh, made by uh, my colleague, uh, Honorable Mohirwa, that uh, we have a nomination already. And uh, we should hear from the nominee whether he accepts the nomination and then we can proceed with the business. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Honorable oh, no, members, uh, we have two nominations. Uh, may I uh, ask for the seconders for Honorable Dr. Rijema uh, first? Procedure, Mr. Clark. Honorable members, I'm asking for... Procedure, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Procedure. Procedure. Procedure, Procedure Mr. Clark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honorable... Christopher. Nasitia. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, uh, I think uh, Honorable Dr. Rwigema has declined. So... <laughs> I don't know if it's being forced, but he himself is declined based on the issue of Clark. Having Clark will be guiding him. However, Mr. Tugume mentioned some important point. He said that should anything happen, the whole process will be thrown out because there was no guidance of uh, of a Clark. So we have to put into consideration on that, or, or we can seek an uh, advice from the CTC, since it's sitting there, on how we are going to go about it. Thank you, Mr. Clark. One o'clock. One o'clock, you are not seeing me. Mr. Clark, on, 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 honorable I members, uh, I've, I've seen you, honorable Dr. Buru, but I'm also uh, requesting you, honorable members, uh, to switch off your uh, microphone uh, because there is the echo and our hand-study uh, editor is unable to be able to, uh, to record uh, for transcribing. So let's see, uh, be uh, talking one after another. Honorable Dr. Oburu, uh, and uh, next Honorable uh, Dr. Dujem. Uh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, uh, I, I had uh, uh, seconded uh, Dr. Rugema, but uh, I was not very clear that he actually withdrew. If he withdrew, Mr. Clark, uh, then uh, what is the point of uh, us adjourning again? 
why don't we just declare uh, Honorable Musamali, who is an experienced legislator, who, 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 who actually ah. is quite capable of conducting this session, and declare him uh, elected and opposed without going into details as to whether he's doing that because words he has a clerk next to him or not. All right, what Honorable gave us was an advice, and uh, we appreciate the advice. But we do not necessarily need to go by the advice. But, but the procedures say that if there is one nomination, then that one nomination takes, uh, I, I mean, uh, the, the, the person nominated, so nominated, takes uh, the, 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 the chair immediately. So, uh, and makes a speech to appreciate what, uh, I mean, the, the nomination or the election. So, Mr. Clark, I don't see any reason why we should adjourn when we already have only one candidate and uh, the procedures say that once we have one candidate, we should proceed. Because this is going to prolong, and we yet we have a very heavy day, and we should just proceed immediately and start... Uh, Let's vote. Let's vote. Unless there, there, is a, there are people who still want to nominate others uh, uh, because they were not given enough time. But personally, I would feel that we proceed. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you very much, Honorable Dr. Oburu. Dr. Rijema, uh, you, 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 had, you, you wanted to take the floor. Yes. Uh, Mr. Clark, thank you very much for giving me the floor. And uh, I thank my colleague who nominated me. I didn't decline. I only evoke the problem of being far from the clerk, as this matter is a technical matter only. But uh, I'm able to present uh, over with uh, budget uh, <laughs> I did decline. Honorable members, uh, do, we, uh, do we have any other nomination apart from the two? Honorable yep. uh, Namara. Uh, uh, one o'clock, uh, I would want to nominate uh, Honorable Rosa Cole, who's an experienced legislator in accounts and uh, budgeting for more than 10 years and a commissioner. And uh, I'm being informed by her that she's almost here. She was caught up by jam, but she's almost yeah. entering appearance. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Namara, uh, for the uh, Now, I would like to request for uh, uh, seconder for Honorable Okol, Rose Okol. <laughs> yes, guy, there. Yeah, there. Procedure. Procedure. Procedure, procedure, procedure. Honorable Dr. Makame, on procedure. On procedural matter. You are most welcome. Uh, Mr. Clark, I would like to raise uh, on Annex 3, the rules of procedure, where members are supposed to nominate. There is no provision for secondment. So, Mr. Clark, uh, once a member is nominated, then if it is confirmed that that particular member has been nominated, it is concluded. There is no provision for secondment. We don't have to introduce new provisions unless we want to amend the rules first. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Honorable Dr. Makame, uh, I, I, I have heard you on a procedural matter, but we, we, are, we are following our rules of procedure, uh, 2015, Annex 3, uh, uh, which uh, clearly states on uh, Annex 3 
uh, annex three three the member wishing to propose the name for the person to preside shall raise his or hand or, or, or shall raise in his or her place and upon catching the eye of the person presiding shall state that i wish to propose uh, that honorable so and so uh, do take the chair to preside in the assembly for today's sitting and the subsequent uh, sitting Mr. Clark, I time, as the, the proposal shall be seconded uh, that is where uh, uh, we are basing on our route. The, the, the rules of procedure for virtual uh, meeting does not. Uh... <laughs> yes, it would be thrown. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, honorable member. Uh, uh, we are not yes. hearing you, Chair. Uh, right. We are not we have, hearing we have Mr. Clark. Three nominations uh, uh, which have been seconded. One, uh, on, Honorable uh, Rosa Ko. Uh, two, Honorable Dr. Celestini uh, Rijema. And uh, Honorable uh, Paul Msamali. Now, I would like to call upon uh, uh, my colleagues to assist uh, because now we are going for, for voting. And that's our procedure, annex three. Procedure, procedure, Bana Kirak. <laughs> Honorable Paul Msamali. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Bana Kirak, for this opportunity. And also, uh, Bana Kirak, someone whose mic is uh, still on. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Bana Kirak, for this opportunity. And the members for entrusting me with the denomination to preside over this very important uh, function uh, of the assembly. Um, Clark, as you have put it, given the fact that this matter is very technical, uh, we have. Uh, it has been put forward that, for example, <clears throat> we needed a clerk closer for technical input. And uh, even in those houses which have been presided over by uh, speakers who have served for more than 10 years, when it comes to matters of this kind, I have seen them consult day in, I mean, all the time. Uh, so for this matter, being closer to a clerk is very important, but uh, we are in politics, Bwana uh, clerk and members, so we should not also be insensitive to the politics of the community. Much as we are doing this work, <coughs> uh, technical work, but we should also not be insensitive to uh, the politics of the community. Personally, I am declining the nomination. Uh, I thank you for entrusting me, but I'm not taking it up for technical and political reasons. <clears throat> now, procedure, Honorable Clark, I wanted to propose that uh, we break off you adjourn this house for, say, 15 minutes, and we consult amongst ourselves. Now that we have two candidates that are now remaining, we consult amongst ourselves, and we agree on a harmonious position, both politically and technically. And then we conduct the business of the house, uh, uh, Buana Chair. I thank you. Uh, I thank you. Procedure, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Paul Musamali and Honorable uh, Mary Mugenyi. Uh, I think the proposal which Honorable Mary Mugenyi uh, 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 brought before this uh, uh, House, uh, which has been seconded by Honorable uh, Paul Musamali, is in order. Uh, honorable members, uh, as we suspend uh, uh, this... There is a point on procedure, Clark. There is a point on requesting. procedure. There is a point on procedure, Clark. Yeah, Mr. Clark. Procedure.
Honorable Fancy. Honorable Makame has raised a point on procedure, but you are not listening. Honorable Makame rose on a procedural matter which he has already withdrawn. Not at all, Mr. Clark. It's, a, it's another procedural matter, Mr. Clark. Okay. Yes, uh, Honorable Dr. Makame. It's another a fresh one. Because you see, Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark, Honorable Musamali is, pro is proposing something which is not procedural. But if for that reason we want to be correct politically and technically, then we have to submit a fresh application of Honorable John Cloud Barimuyabo, who is in Arusha, and uh, that can be the most political correct one, because it will be politically correct and uh, also technically correct. Thank you, Mr. Speak Mr. Clark. Thank you very much, Honorable Makame. Uh, honorable members, the reason Mr. why Clark, we want to, uh, to suspend Clark, this uh, informal sitting for 10 Clark, minutes, uh, Clark, you know Clark. the community uh, is the community of consensus. And uh, it is absolutely important uh, that uh, we agree on uh, how we proceed on all our uh, matters. And uh, that is the reason uh, why uh, I want to suspend this house for just 10 minutes. Uh, when we come, uh, let's uh, do the nominations. We will vote, or if we, we are going to have only one candidate, then we will declare and we move forward. Honorable members, uh, the informal sitting uh, stands suspended for 10 minutes. Thank you.
Uh, honorable members, uh, when we suspended, uh, we had uh, uh, agreed that uh, we were supposed to be consulting. And uh, when we come back, uh, as uh, uh, we have done now, I would like to call for fresh nominations. Uh, then we move forward uh, uh, to the other processes. Honorable members, uh, uh, I'm calling for fresh nominations. Thank you. You are, you, you are the one who nominated. Honorable uh, Namara. Have you had prayers? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, one o'clock. I nominate uh, Honorable Rosa Call to take over the temporary leadership of the House as we consider this session. Thank you very much, Seconda. Uh, Honorable Wanjiku, Honorable Musamali, uh, Honorable Christopher, and all the members raising their hands. Uh, any other uh, nomination? Hello? Uh, uh, Honorable Dr. Rujema? Yes. Uh, Thank you, Clark. Eh? Uh, considering what uh, was very interesting to nominate me in a few last minutes, uh, and I consider the technicality of the process. And for this reason, I ask my colleague to get a high understanding to let me withdraw. And I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Dr. Rujema. Uh, honorable members, uh, since it seems uh, there is no any other nomination, I would uh, now like to declare Honorable, uh, to declare Honorable Rose uh, a call elected uh, as an opposed. Elected as a member to preside at this sitting uh, of the assembly in the absence of the speaker uh, and opposed. Yeah. Now, uh, before I, I request uh, Madam uh, Rose a uh, call, uh, to make a short uh, statement uh, or remarks, uh, I would like to uh, just uh, suspend for two, three minutes uh, so that we can do uh, uh, logistics uh, uh, with her uh, before she, uh, she makes her statement. Uh, the, House stands adjourned for uh, for five minutes. Five minutes, I cannot be.
Speaker uh, elect and the honorable members, I would like to call the House order. And I would uh, like to welcome uh, Madam Rose Oko, uh, Speaker elect to preside over uh, this city uh, to make extempore and brief remarks expressing her gratitude for having been elected and submitting herself to the will of this house, the supremacy of the rules of, of, of the house, and the laying claim to the privilege, uh, privileges of the assembly and the members. Honorable uh, Rose, uh, uh, call. you are most welcome, yes. madam. Thank you, Clark. Uh, morning, uh, honorable members. I request you to mute your microphones. I'm hearing a lot of uh, echo. Uh, honorable colleagues, I would like to take this opportunity to express my profound appreciation to you for having elevated me to this high office, albeit for a few days. I feel greatly honored and proud to, for the confidence and trust you have expressed in me. I submit myself to the will of the House, the supremacy of the rules of the House, and lay claim to the privileges of the Assembly and the members. In accepting this responsibility, I would like to confirm that I will uphold the dignity of this House at all times, and that I will apply the rules of the House without fear or favor as I seek to promote the good image of the assembly. With those few remarks, honorable members, I submit my will to the house. Thank you. Uh, honorable members, as it is the usual procedure, I will have to adjourn the house for about 10 minutes, suspend the house for 10 minutes, as I prepare myself for this chair and also to get the necessary regalia of the, the, the speaker. I the chair spend is the hot. house for 15 minutes. Thank you. The chair is hot. <laughs> hey, what happened?
Can we humble ourselves? Almighty God, who in your wisdom and goodness has appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society, good of all human lives upon it, and the just government of its people. We beseech you to look with your abundant favor upon us, your servants, whom you have entrusted with the performance of such important trust in this community. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled and grant that we, we may treat and consider all matters that shall come under our attention and deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of this region and of those whose interests you have committed to us. Amen. Amen. I, item number one on the order paper, administration of oath. To welcome you, honorable members, to this meeting. And uh, with us, we have a new member from the Republic of uh, Burundi. And we, it's now time for us to have the the member sign in as a member of this house. Point of can we have can point we have uh, point some of members uh, escorting him to the house? Point of uh, sorry, point of procedure. Yeah. The agenda. Honorable speaker. Point of procedure. Right, honorable speaker. Yes, honorable Dangiza. Thank you, uh, right honorable speaker. Let me start by congratulating you upon assumption of the speakership. But I just wanted to request this August House that we stand for a, a minute of silence to remember the passing on of the mother of right honorable speaker. Thank you. Uh, honorable colleagues, I think uh, that is in order, but uh, after administration of oath, there will be communication from the chair. And I think that will be the appropriate time for us to, to do that. So since we have a, a member who is due to be sworn in, maybe let me just read this. Yeah. Honorable members, I notify you that Honorable Nibigira Ezechiel, the new minister in charge of East African Community Affairs, Youth, Sport and Culture of the Republic of Burundi, is present and would like to take his seat in this house. However, in accordance with rule five of our rules of procedure, Honorable Nibigira Ezekiel can only take his seat in the assembly after taking the oath of allegiance to the treaty. Rule nine two of an extent to the rules of procedure of this house specify that when a new member first attends the house, other than at the first sitting of the of the new assembly, the member shall be introduced to the speaker virtually by a member of the assembly, who shall state the name of the new member. The speaker shall then administer the oath of affirmation of allegiance to him or her. I therefore request any member who knows Honorable Nibigura Ezekiel to introduce him to me, to enable me to administer the oath of allegiance. Members, can you mute your, your microphones as we proceed with the business of the house, please? Can a member from Burundi please escort the... 
please, the minister, to come and take oath, please. He's already here. Danny, he proceed and take the oath of allegiance, please. Okay. Okay. May I start? Proceed, Honorable Minister. Please proceed. All right. I, Honorable Ambassador Ezekiel Nibigira. Do swear or affirm that I will give true and faithful service to this assembly and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the East African community and I will preserve, protect, and defend the treaty for the establishment of the East African community as by law established. So help me God. Uh, thank you, Honorable Nibigira. I now request uh, the clerk on my behalf to hand over the instruments, and that is the 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 rules of procedure and the treaty to our new member of the house as a, as it is normally so clerk and you can do that on my behalf please i hope there's a clerk there or oh, any member from burundi please can you is, yeah please hand over the book Uh, thank you. Now, Honorable Minister, I also request that you you sign the form. There is a form with you that you you have to sign after taking oath. Sign a hard copy and they will transmit it to us. Uh, thank you very much, honorable colleagues. Uh, you may need to have a brief on who our new member is. Honorable Nibigira Ezekiel is a senior economist. He's an economic advisor of the second vice president he was. He was also a minister of foreign affairs in, of the Republic of Burundi. And now he's a minister in charge of the ESC affairs, youth, sports, and culture. He comes with a wealth of experience and education, of course, with his education background. He has a Bachelor of Arts degree in business administration and economics with a major in banking and finance, attained in September 2004 from the University of Hope of Africa University. He also has a Master of Business Administration with, with a major in finance and accounting, attained during the period 2013 to 2016 from University of Liverpool. He's also currently working on his dissertation with a specialization in Doctor of Business Administration and Finance with the University of Walden, that is the Walden University of the United States of America. So we have uh, uh, someone with a wealth of experience and of course with the relevant, relevant uh, education background mm -hmm. with us here at ESC. You're most welcome, uh, uh, Honorable Minister Nibigira Ezekiel to the East African Legislative Assembly. Now, uh, honorable colleagues, as usual, 
We will allow the minister to make his maiden speech now or when he's ready to do that. We will give them the, him the, the opportunity. And no, now we also now. want to communicate members that... Uh, no, no. Yes. I... Yes, oh, we can call him later if he's not ready, please. He's ready, he's ready, he's ready. Honorable. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, honorable Chair, Speaker, I'm sorry. I'm very happy uh, this morning to participate to this session. As you know, it is my first time to be here. I believe that I will work with my fellow honorables to enhance the agenda of our community. I am engaged, I am determined to work with you as a team. For other things, I believe that we'll, we will continue to share our experiences. I bring my input and I believe that I will receive more from you. Thank you very much, Honorables. Item number two on the order paper, communication from the chair. Uh, honorable members of the House, as you are aware already, we are starting a bit late because of uh, some challenges that we, we had this morning. We received information that the right honorable speaker lost his uh, mom and therefore is unable to be with us. And on that note, I would like us to rise for a moment of silence in the remembrance of uh, our dear mom who has uh, gone to be with the Lord. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Amen. Amen. Our honorable colleagues, we now want to move to the to the next item. Item number three on the order paper, laying of papers. Uh, chairperson of the Committee on General Purpose. Uh, the, the, the report to be laid on table. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one, the report of the Committee on General Purpose on the Supplementary mm -hmm. Budget Proposal for the East African Community for the Financial Year 2019-2020. And then the report of the Committee on General Purpose on the East African Community Budget Estimates for, of Revenue and Expenditure for Financial Year 2020-2021. Uh, Honorable Chair, please lay the papers. Right Honourable Speaker, I beg to lay on table the report of the Committee on General Purpose on the ESC Supplementary Appropriation Bill 2020. I beg to lay. Uh, right Honourable Speaker, I also beg to lay a report of the Committee on General Purpose on the ESC Budget Estimates for Revenue and Expenditure for the Financial Year 2020-2021. Right Honourable Speaker, I beg to lay. Okay. Item number four on the order paper, consideration of the supplementary budget of the East African community for the financial year 2019-2020 by word motion. <clears throat> Chair Council, to move uh, the motion. Honorable Speaker. That this assembly do, zero, do dissolve itself into a, a committee of ways and means to consider and approve the financial statements for the supplementary budget for the financial year 2019-2020, and b, a committee of the supply to consider and approve the estimates of expenditure 
for the supplementary budget for the financial year 2019-2020, I submit. Uh, Second as to this motion. Okay, I see Honorable Fatuma and Danjiza. I see Honorable Woda and all those who have raised their hands. The motion is seconded. Uh, can the Honorable Chair Council justify the motion? Uh, report of the Committee of the General Purpose on the ESC Supplemental Appropriation Number Two. Uh, Bill 2020, Speaker. There is a communication problem, so we are trying to rectify our side as well. Chair Council, please move on to justify. Our communication is a bit poor this side. Um, uh, speaker, the objective of this bill is to provide the appropriation of a supplementary sum of the United States dollars, uh, 815,000. 582, uh, that's USD, right? out of the community budget to meet additional expenditure for the Inter-University Council of East Africa for the financial year ending 30th June 2020. Uh, thank you, Chair Council. Now, Team be around to uh, sorry, honorable members. We have a problem with the network and it had momentarily gone off, but we shall always resume whenever it is on. Now, since the chair council has justified the motion. I now call upon the chairperson of the Committee of General Purpose to read the, to present the report to the House. Chairperson, Committee of General Purpose. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Right Honourable Speaker, Honourable Members. Uh, the report of the Committee of General Purpose on the ESC Supplementary Appropriation Bill 2020. 1.0 Introduction. In accordance with the provisions of Article 59 and 132 of the Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community, and Rules 66 and 75 of the Rules of Procedure of the Assembly, the Chairperson Council of Ministers presented the House and read for the first time the ESC Supplementary Appropriation Bill 2020 on the 28th day of September 2020. In the same vein, the Chairperson Council of Ministers laid on table the financial statement for the supplementary budget for the year 2019-2020. Pass one Article 49.2b of the Treaty and Rule 67 of the rules of procedure. Procedure. The right honorable speaker. Procedure. Procedure, Madam Chair. Honorable Chair. Speaker. Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, the chair was presenting the report, but I had a procedural matter being raised. Yes. Yes, Honorable, can you proceed? I'm not getting you, but you can proceed with your point of procedure. 
Yeah, I, uh, I would like to, to ask the technical team to display the, the text on the screen so that everybody can uh, follow easily. Okay, yes. Honorable member, I think, honorable colleagues, I think the issue here is uh, to do with the, the network. We have a problem with the network, otherwise the report should be on the screen. But I'm also aware that uh, each of us received uh, a soft copy of this report. Unless there's anyone who didn't receive that soft copy. The challenge here is the network problem. But I believe we all received this report on our, in our emails. Is that true? Can yes, yes. Yes, we received it. Yes. yes. Uh, as we try to rectify, as the, team, as the technical team try to rectify the, <laughs> the, 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 ch the challenge you have with communication, I think let the chair proceed to read it as you also refer to Procedure, Madam Speaker. Procedure, Madam Speaker. We make progress in the next five years. Yes. Madam Speaker, procedure. Madam Speaker, procedure. Yeah, I'm, I've got your procedure, Romata, but I want the technical team, first of all, to to justify whether we still can, can continue with this kind of uh, communication. We have serious challenges with the network. Technical team, please. Huh? We can hear you, Madam Speaker. Yeah, I want the technical team to be to clarify to us whether we can continue with this with this challenge of the network mm -hmm. because it is on one minute one minute is off if there is a serious challenge there they need to advise us please mr murenzi arusha Madam Speaker, we can hear you and we we can see you all. Uh, we are not getting any problem uh, on our side. Is that the case with other member states? Burundi? Yeah, we can see yes. you. We are okay now. Yes. We, we are okay, you can hear you loud and clear. We, uh, I can also see you and hear you clearly, Madam, from Kisumu. In South Sudan, we are also okay. We are getting... Tanzania, we can hear you just fine. This is Dr. Zagambi, yeah, we can hear yeah. you and see you just fine. We may continue. We it's right up the speaker. It's okay. Proceed, Madam Speaker. We proceed, Madam Speaker. We can proceed, hear you. Madam Speaker. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Madam Speaker, procedure. Yes, honorable members, I think we shall have to maybe oh, proceed until such a time that we can't proceed any longer. But in Pro the meantime, proceed, we'll Madam on and off until proceed, the... Madam Speaker. <laughs> I've seen you. I'm communicating, then I'll allow you huh? to proceed. Yes, honorable colleagues, we shall proceed. Proceed, proceed, Madam Speaker. Okay, honorable Munya, please. Can you come with your procedure, no matter? Apa. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Procedure. Procedure, Madam Can Speaker. Can you proceed, Honorable Munya? Please proceed. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Oh. Can you proceed, Honorable Munya? Please procedure, Madam Speaker. I continue, proceed, Honorable Munya, please. Yeah, I would like to to know, Madam Speaker. Are we going to pass the main budget or are we going to pass supplementary budget first? Which one should we start? 
Honorable I wonder whether you have the order paper with you. Please follow the order paper. And we are starting with the supplementary because the supplementary is to handle matters of the previous financial year. And once we have So I was communicating, honorable colleagues, that uh, can we have one meeting that uh, we are first of all handling the supplementary, which is an item to do with last year's financial budget. Once we have concluded with the last year's financial budget, and supplied, then we will proceed to handle the new financial year. That is the procedure. And that's why the items are arranged in the order paper in that manner. So can we proceed with the supplementary? I hope that one satisfy you, satisfies you, Honorable Mnya. Yeah. Now we have the Honorable Chair Committee on General Purpose proceeding with the report. Can you mute your microphones, please? Mute your microphones and we proceed. Uh, pass one to Article 49 2B of the Treaty and Rule 67 of the Rules of Procedure. The Honorable Honorable Speaker refer the Supplementary Appropriation Bill and the Financial Statement to the Committee on the General Purpose for consideration. Accordingly, the Committee considered the bill and hereby presents its report on the ESC Supplementary Budget for the Financial Year 2019-2020 for consideration and adoption. A background. Right Honorable Speaker, at this. Yeah. Honorable members. Uh, I think we uh, the best I the best I can do for now is to suspend the house for 10 minutes as we consult with our IT department as to what the problem is and whether it can be rectified because we cannot continue like this every other minute the the I mean the systems get off so I'm um, suspending the house for 10 minutes as we wait for the IT, IT department to rectify the issue that is disorganizing our communication. The House suspended. Ten minutes. Clarification, Madam Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Fancy or rainbow or shaky shavu. Acha. Incha choka. Kitugena kishi mana.
Welcome back, honorable members. I think we shall just have to proceed until we can't proceed anymore because now the network seems to be a, a big challenge, but uh, we've been assured that uh, it will be worked on. So I request the honorable chair, general purpose, to continue with this report. Uh, thank you, honorable speaker. Uh, right honorable speaker, at its sitting held on 20th June 2019 in Arusha, Tanzania, the assembly passed the total budget of US dollars 99 million 770,716 for the East African community for the financial year 2019-2020. During the consideration of and approval of the budget, most organs and institutions of the ESC remained with a number of unfunded priorities due to the budgetary constraints. Over the course Madam Speaker, the network is still shaking. Hello? I think you've gone to the top line. Okay. You've gone to the top line. Mm, stable. This is why I'm proposing we go back. We go back. I, I support you, madam. We are going to another place now. Yeah. We have overstayed in Arusha. Yes, but let's go physical. Physical, yes, but in another place. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, no problem. Let's go if to the Doma. Uganda. The Doma was Tongea. Oh, Juba. Yeah. Oh, no, no, uh, Kigali. Kigali is Kigali. the best. Popote pale, whether Kigali, Uga, uh, Kampala, Nairobi, Arusha, Popote, but we should go back to physical. Sure, that one is good. Yes, because we cannot continue like this. You're right. We will not be able to follow properly. We should surely go back. It's a difficult situation. You gotta resolve it. Mm -hmm. I need support as honorable members.
Mheshimiwa mm. ah, Aden. Mheshimiwa yes. Aden. Yes, tuna, tuna, tuna mpango kazi hapa wa kufanya moyo wa Mheshimiwa Council Chair Umelt turudi kwenye physical meeting. Sasa taratibu moyo wake uh-huh. umeanza kulainika. Tuanze kumshukuru ili uh-huh. uendelee kulainika zaidi turudi. Sansi pokea simu. Aya. <laughs> Okay. Victor ndugu yangu unaendeleaje bana? Victor Yes sir. Now is the event. How are you? Na kuona unanenepa tu ndugu yangu bwana. Eh? Kumbe sisi huko Arusha ndio kwetu tunakukondesha bwana. Sikuski. Hii ya kukaa kaa nyumbani bwana. Eh? Eh, unakula kula kila mara
Jemati, no members. Member for ten million members. Members, the clerk is addressing you. Come on. Honourable no members, let's resume our proceedings. How are we going to resume while the network is still shaking, Honourable Clerk? Uh, Honourable members, uh, owing to challenges which have become uh, a, a big challenge, or challenges of our network, I would like to say that we, we, we suspend, I'm proposing that we suspend Motion. proceedings. Motion. Motion, Madam Speaker. Let the speaker finish, Honorable uh, Vic. Eh? Motion. You were not elected to be a speaker, Mweshima Fatima. Hey. I'm addressing to our right honorable speaker. Let the uh, first address us. Yeah. Yeah. I suspend the house. Yeah. Honorable members. Because honorable motion members, speaker. You motion. can help me, please. Motion speaker. Honorable members, due to challenges, we are. There is a motion before you motion suspend, is there is a motion, you're ignoring it, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, you're ignoring it, the motion. <laughs> Can we have the motion presented? <laughs> Thank you, Madam no, we Speaker. No, we need to hear it now. Is a... Uh, Proceed with your motion, Christopher. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, based on the situation we are facing now, uh, I would like to invoke Rule 30, Sub Rule I. We are not getting in. He's invoking Rule 30, Sub Rule I. This is a motion saying that. This is an L. where I would like to, to request that this house should go back to Arusha. And this also is the under rule two of procedures where it not, says not that part of the business. Rule two, where the seat of the assembly shall be at Arusha in the in the United Republic of Tanzania. Therefore, Mr. Speak Miss. Madam Speaker, I request this house to go back to Arusha. Thank you, Speaker. Seconders, Madam Speaker, ask for seconders. We have so many speakers now. Clarification. Seconders. Honorable yeah, members, yeah. the right honorable speaker is out in yeah, the yes, yes, yes. chamber because of network connections. So she's not allowed. She's not allowed so far. Uh, she's back. She's back. Okay, honorable members, in reply to the motion that has been that is on table by honorable Christopher, this is a motion to do with seatings and venue where the house sits, and this is specifically uh, a motion that has to be dealt with by the commission. It can only be the commission. And the rule you're referring to is about bills. So the motion you're referring to has nothing to do with bills, no order. but you are making reference to the rule with regard to uh, bills. Madam so, Speaker. Just a moment, I'm communicating honorable. Uh, the, the rule you have quoted is uh, not applicable. But secondly, oh. the issue you are requesting for, that the House convinced in Arusha, is an issue to do with the Commission, and it will be dealt with at the Commission level. That's what I want to say. Uh, Madam Speaker, this Rule 30 it says, any motion on urgent matters of public importance supported by one third of the member presented. Therefore, this motion is within our third eye. It, it, it does with our uh, public importance, which means 
this problem we are facing and now is actually affecting our interest and the interest of our community. As you can see, we've been postponing so many times because of this uh, VC problem. So that's the reason why I brought this motion so that we can convene in, in Arusha where every member will be and we'll be discussing this uh, house business within the house in Arusha where I invoke rule two Yeah, rule two of procedures saying that the seat of the, the assembly shall be in Arusha. That's my point, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. We need seconders. We can say Clarification. Clarification, Chair. Madam Speaker. Clarification. Madam Speaker, those raising their hands are, are, are seconding. We are no, seconding, no, Madam no, Speaker, we are seconding. Honorable members, the right to Madam Speaker, we are seconding. Honorable members, the right Honorable Speaker, is, right. Honorable 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 member, is, right. Honorable speaker is oh, she's back again. Point of order. Honorable members, owing, owing to technological challenges, we cannot proceed with any business, including the matters that uh, are being raised by Honorable Christopher, as much as I have advised. Now I'm suspending the house, business of the house. Madam up Speaker, to but we don't have a budget. We need to have a budget. The community is at the stake. The of the First of all, I'll October. suspend it to 2 p.m. We don't have a budget, and tomorrow is 1st of October. We cannot spend. How are we going to work? Community is going to stop. Uh, uh. Go to Arusha with
Okay, that's fine. Honorable Chair, Madam Speaker. Honorable, Chair, I'm, I'm here. Communicating, Honorable. Mm. I'll allow you if there's anything you want to move. I'm still communicating. Uh, Honorable members, uh, the afternoon session is now ready to proceed. Uh, I'm seeing Honorable, the Honorable member from Burundi. Honorable. I'm still a single man waiting for oh, yeah, others, so we don't have a quorum for Burundi chapter. Tell them not to come here. Go and call them. Go and call them. On, uh, on their way coming, please. They are coming. <laughs> <laughs> they are coming. They are joining us soon. The clerk, the clerk maybe should ascertain whether we really have quorum or not. Okay. Already here, yeah. Clerk, please endeavor to ascertain quorum and uh, so that we can proceed. Huh? Good, good afternoon, honorable members. Uh, we are ascertaining quorum no, okay. of members uh, present I'm, I'm now. The voice is stopped. We are certaining members uh, who members but who are present are, uh, now, we so we we'll go uh, by partner uh, state. Uh, the Republic of Burundi, how many <laughs> members are around the Republic of Burundi? I'm still one. Uh, Republic of okay. Kenya. We are more than three. There are four members from the Republic of Kenya right now, Honorable Wajiku, Honorable Jematia, Honorable Buru, and the Honorable Fatuma. Um, Republic of Rwanda. Republic of Rwanda. We are eight. 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 Eight members from the Republic of Rwanda. The Republic of Rwanda. Congratulations. The Two in of Juba. Sudan. Another Juba one. person is here. Two members of Juba, Juba and uh, we see Honorable Guy Deng and uh, one member is in Kenya. There are four members from the Republic of South Sudan. Okay. United Republic of Tanzania. United Republic of Tanzania have one member here in Arusha. So only one member from United, United Republic of Tanzania is available now. Uganda. Republic of Uganda. I see the right honorable speaker. Yeah, we are four. Okay. Four yeah, members. Four, because there's honorable men somewhere there. So four members from U Uganda. These people are very poor in communication. They never send me any. Is you? So, uh, uh, let's speak with you. Honorable members, we have. Uh, we are facing the challenge of two members from. Honorable members of South Sudan, can you mute your microphone, please? Yes. We are listening to you, South Sudan. Honorable members, can you mute your microphone? That will make sure it doesn't happen again. Keep keeps keep happening. Yeah. I never got anything. Yeah. Honorable Ito. Yes, mute, mute right your microphone. While, while listening to your conversation, can you mute your Sorry. microphone? Here. Yeah. And our members, we have. Uh, uh, we are lacking a in, 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 uh, number of members from Tanzania and uh, Burundi. There are one member. F there is one member from Tan from Tanzania and one member. From Clarification, uh, right, uh, honourable speaker. Yes, honourable. I'm not seeing you. Eh? Yes, it's uh, it's order. Okay, yes, honourable order, please. Uh, thank Proceed. you. Uh, 
Madam Speaker, I just wanted to get clarification uh, as we had a quorum in the morning and I thought this is a continuation of the activity we started in the morning. Uh, and I, I feel that uh, continue with the urgency of the matter on the table, uh, I wanted to get a clarification from you, Madam Speaker, that in order to speed up, and uh, as we were informed by uh, the representative of Burundi, that uh, the colleagues are on their way. So I would advise if it doesn't um, go against our rules, that we continue, because it is a continuation to my understanding of the activity which started in the morning. So the issue of the quorum here, I wish to request that it should not be proceeded, and we continue as we started in the morning. I, I, I thank you. Thank you. Procedure, procedure, Madam Chair. Procedure. Procedure, Madam Chair. Procedure, Madam Chair. I pass up to rule on this procedural matter as raised by Honorable Order, before I can allow you. Now, Honorable Members, let me read the report regarding quorum here, as the, in our books here, as the rule, here. rule 12, it says, the quorum of the House or the, of the Committee of the whole House shall be half of the elected members, and such quorum shall be composed of at least one third of the elected members from each partner state. If at any time of a sitting, can we listen? If at any time of a sitting or where the House is in committee, any member objects that there is no quorum present, the speaker or chairperson shall on ascertaining it to be true, suspend the proceedings of the House for an interval of 15 minutes during which a bell shall be rung. Now, honorable members, I requested the, the clerks at table to ascertain quorum in the House, and indeed, uh, it, 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 it appears to us yes. that we, we, we do not have quorum as guided by rules of procedure. We, we don't have, we have a few members from Tanzania, I think one, and also one from the Republic of Burundi. So the rules as guided by the rules, I have to suspend the house for 15 minutes. Chair. And then we- Speaker we procedure. Yeah, speaker, speaker procedure. Speaker, Madam Speaker, you have just read in our very own rule that the issue of rules have to be- ascertained by one, have to be raised by one member. There is no member who raised it to you, yourself, as the speaker who... I raised the, the issue of quorum. I raised the issue of quorum before. Honorable I raised it. Oh, you the didn't. issue of quorum was raised by a member from Burundi and it cannot be ignored. <laughs> yes, I did. The issue of quorum was raised by a member Chair. from Burundi. Honorable speaker. And as the rules provide at any time, at any one time. So I only have one option to suspend the house until we have quorum. For 15 minutes, the house is suspended. You are right, Madam. And the chair has two people now. Honorable, procedure, Honorable, honorable Speaker. Yes, we are, we are, honorable Speaker, we are informed by our clerk seated next to us that it was raised before members from Kenya joined. But we are also informed there was no prayer. So did he inform a formal a constituted uh, assembly or an informal? Honorable Wanjiku, please. The house was only suspended. So we are only resuming from a, a, a session that was. This is the same session. Same session with the same quorum, honorable speaker then. Yeah. It is yes. a continuation. So there is no need of continuation, yeah. Yes. Speaker, like it is a, it's the same session. The honorable members, please read the report. Yeah. But, but, yeah. yeah. but madam, you yeah. need to go back. Speaker, session. madam speaker. If a member raises the issue of quorum, even if it is the same session, then the speaker must adjourn the house for 15 minutes, even if it is the same session. I agree. I, I, I think the position of Honorable uh, Dr. Oburu is true. We need to so, seek a uh, quorum, chair. And I think the speaker has made the appropriate ruling.
Eh, danger here. Madam Fatuma, how are you? Honorable Fatuma. Yes, Meshmua, temporary chairman. How are you? Temporary chairman. <laughs> yes, I'm good. <coughs> things things oh, don't look nice, eh? So, but wh wh why are people moving out from passing a budget for the community?
and we can proceed. So I would like us to proceed because we now have quorum and uh, where we are. Procedure. Uh, Procedure. Yes, honorable. Yes, honorable Anjiko. Madam Speaker, I'm raising a procedure according to Rule 30D. That is motion without uh, notice to suspend Rule 12, which require quorum. And I want to suspend Rule, quorum, rule 12 for all our businesses as per the order paper until they are all disposed today. Can we have seconders? I have, I can see Honorable Jamatia. Point of procedure, uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable point of procedure. I second. Point of procedure. I can see what, yeah, what has been seconded. Point of so procedure. We can proceed now. We can proceed. Point of procedure, Unless, right, Honorable Speaker. It's there a is procedural some... matter on another matter, please. No, not it's quorum. a procedural matter on the procedure that has been used, which is not necessary. We don't we don't need to pro, to suspend quorum when we already Fatima, have quorum. It is done. It I've already ruled. ruled. I've ruled. So can we proceed? Can uh, we proceed to have quorum? Uh, can we proceed? Uh, Madam Speaker. The chair is going to proceed with the report. Uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, yeah. Christopher, can you see me? Yes, I can. Actually, okay. Madam Speaker, I want to invoke Rule 33 to withdraw the motion which uh, I proposed earlier, uh, Rule 33, sub Rule 1, whereby a notice of my uh, of a motion. Where the rule? Uh, okay. Where the rule? Uh, okay. Rule one. Rule one. Yes. Okay. Rule one. Yes. They are moving under which rule? To withdraw your rules of procedure. Thirty-three sub rule one. A notice of motion may be withdrawn by the member who gave the notice, but notice of the same motion may be given again either by the same member or by any other member. Therefore, I'm, uh, I'm withdrawing the motion I proposed earlier. Okay, thank you. Thank you, honorable <laughs> member. So we can now proceed with the report. Thank you so much. So the chair, 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 general purpose, please, can you proceed with the report? Honorable Chair Namara, proceed. Right on speaker, at its sitting held on 20th June 2019 in Arusha, Tanzania, the Assembly passed the total budget of US dollars, 99 million seven hundred seventy thousand seven sixteen for the East Afghan community for the financial year 2019-2020. During the consideration of the and approval of the budget, most organs and institutions of the ESC remain with a number of unfunded priorities due to the budget constraints. Over the course of the financial year, the unfunded priorities continue to affect the, effect, the effective functioning of these organs and institutions. The committee was informed that the Council of Ministers, in collaboration with the ESC Secretariat, managed to mobilize additional resources managed to mobilize that would be used to finance some of the unfunded priorities identified during the budget process and other agencies that arose during the budget implementation. During the, for the first for the first meeting of the Council of Ministers held on 4th August 2020, a supplementary budget amounting to US dollars 815,582 was adopted to finance activities under the Inter-University Council of East Africa. The funds are from uh, KFW amounting to US, amounting to US dollars 719,852 and the Swedish International Development Agency CIDA amounting to 95,730. 3.0, expenditure line is under the supplementary budget. According to the report of the, for the first extraordinary council meetings held via video conferencing, the council of ministers adopted and according requests, the assembly to approve the following expenditure lines under the ESC supplementary budget for financial year 2019-2020. Uh, projects and activities to be funded by supplementary budgets, financial 2019-2020, 
they are in that uh, they are in that table and uh, the organ or the institution is the in the university council of east africa project one is to implement the esc stroke kfw scholarship program in brackets leadership to foster regional integration and the funding source is kfw stroke PM, pmu of seven hundred nineteen thousand eight hundred fifty two thousand us dollars the second one is to conduct a study on enhancing of research management capacities for improved performance of higher education systems in East Africa. It is being funded by CEDA to amount of 95,730. The grand total is 815,582 US dollars, 4.0 methodology. During the consideration of the bill, the committee, one, held a meeting with the Inter-University Council of East Africa Principal Accountant and the ESC Budget Officer. Number two, scrutinized the bill and the financial statement. And three, made reference to the ESC financial rules and regulations, the ESC Budget Act, and the reports of the 41st meeting of the ESC Council of Ministers held on 4th August 2020. 5.0 observations. The committee made the following observations. One, it was noted that the supplementary budget presented to the committee of US dollars 815,582 meets the reallocation and supplementary budget requirements as stipulated in Regulation 19 of the ESC Financial Rules and Regulation 2012. Two, Section 71 of the ESC Budget Act 2009 stipulates that the total supplemented budget that requires additional resources over and above what is appropriated by the Assembly shall not exceed 5% of the total approved budget for that financial year without prior approval of the Assembly. Three, with regards to the supplemented budget request being presented for approval, the Inter-University Council of East Africa has spent 325000 650 US dollars, which is 4% of the total approved supplementary budget as passed, uh, as passed by the ESC Council of Ministers. The percentage of the budget spent on ESC stroke FW scholarships is in the following items. One, students' tuition fees to the, to the host universities. Two, students' air tickets for travel from country to host universities. Three, students' arrival allowances and monthly stipends. And four, bank charges for transport tuition fees and student allowances. 6.0 recommendations. One, the institution will always avail the committee on general purpose with all the necessary documents backing up the request for the supplemental budget. Two, the assembly approved the supplemental budget amounting to US dollars 815,582 for financial year 2019-2020 and passes the ESC supplementary appropriation bill 2020. Madam Speaker, I beg to the board. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. And uh, colleagues, I think, and, I, uh, think I want to thank the, 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 the Committee of General Purpose for the short and precise report. And uh, it's just a one item supplementary. And I believe we have all observed that uh, the issues that are being raised here are substantive issues to do with the, the core. The core activities of IUSEA. And I believe it should not attract a lot of debate so that we can proceed to the next item. So now that the committee chair has presented the, the report, the, the report is now open for debate. Honorable members. It is open. Yes, I, I can Chair. see Honorable Francoise. Honorable Francoise. Honorable Gideon. Yes, Honorable Gideon. And then? Honorable Guru. Chair. Yes, Honorable Guru. So, start can we, start. so can we start with Honorable Francoise? Please, Madam I'm going Speaker. to allow each of you not more than three minutes because it is a one item supplementary. Thank you, honorable members. Not more than three minutes. Madam Speaker, first and foremost, I thank you for the floor and I congratulate you upon your election to preside this plenary session as our speaker. I also this opportunity to congratulate yeah. and welcome yeah. the, the new member of this August House, Honorable Minister, and Ambassador President Nigeria. Nigeria today. 
Point of order, Madam Speaker, we are not able to listen to you. We don't hear, even hear you. <laughs> okay, honorable members, I was trying to say mute your microphones, please. There is and second, there in the house, please. Madam Speaker. Yes, I have also seen a stranger, and I'm requesting whoever is near that stranger to request the stranger, please, to move because we are in full session of the house. Honorable members. That yes, honorable one. Francis, please proceed. Yeah, thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I give warm welcome to the new member of this house, Honorable Minister Ambassador Ezekiel Nibira. Uh, and as I proceed, Madam Speaker, I declare that I'm a member of this uh, committee, General Purpose, and I would like to express myself to support this supplementary appropriation bill 2020. In fact, Mr. Madam Speaker, allow me to, to tell you that the fact that this supplementary budget, as it was presented by the council chair and referred to our committee by the, the House for scrutiny, uh, this supplementary budget is really meet the, the allocation and supplementary budget requirements as stipulated in Regulation 19 of the EAC Financial Rules and Regulations. 2012. Madam Speaker, we have observed some delays in the submission of NESCA documents uh, upon the request for this supplementary to be scrutinized and uh, approved by the House. And uh, we have given recommendation in the future that organs and institutions should really observe the promptness of submission of the documents to justify the the supplementary, either the report and so on. But at the same time, Madam Speaker, I'm very glad uh, upon the collaboration with the, the Council of Ministers and uh, the Secretariat and the senior officials of the Inter-University Council for East Africa. Uh, and uh, I support the report. And as I wind up, Madam Speaker, I encourage members of this, uh, of this house to support the report because it, it is well done and we believe in the, the reliability of the documents submitted, a bank a statement, all the documents were really good, even if we observed a delay in submission. I submit and I support. Motion. Thank you, Honorable. Motion. Honorable Mukuli, I hope you are not moving a motion to stop debate because members are debating. Members would like to have a few. Chair, of the is report. it my turn, Chair? I'm I am moving a motion. It's my turn. There is a motion on the floor by Honorable Mukuria. Proceed. Yes, uh, Speaker, I want to congratulate you first for assuming the chair. And I would like to move a motion under Rule 36 on the limitation of the debate that the whole debate for this should be at least 10 minutes in total. I beg to move. Any seconders? Are there any seconders? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Seconded. Yeah. So, uh, as members, as you had, I think now we have just two minutes to amend the perhaps. Addition information I had a, chair. I had a the Honorable Francois, now we have Honorable Gideon, and then Honorable Bull, please. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Speaker. Information. I want to take this opportunity Chair, to uh, welcome the new member of the House. Uh, uh, Honorable Chris, that info, I'm not going to take it based on the not, time limit. Not, that for, been given. not for you, not for you, it's for Madam Speaker. I'm on the floor. I'm on the floor, let me wait for the communication. The, the second person to speak. <laughs> uh, uh, Madam Speaker, is in addition information to Rule uh, 36, Actually, I would like to ask Honorable, those members from you. GP. You are giving information to who? Uh, to, to you, Madam Speaker. No, you I'm cannot the give the speaker I, the I information. I want us to read the rules. Honorable yes. Christopher, I'm not on the floor. I'm a speaker. There is a member on the floor. The speak, to this is the person. Uh, uh, after Madam I'm Speaker, right. I wanted to add speech? information on the, the, mo the motion uh, proposed by Honorable Mukuria. 
Right, Honorable Speaker, I want to welcome the, the new member of the House. Uh, you are highly welcome, uh, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, my second point is that uh, based on the report of the GP of the general purpose, I want to say congratulations to our committee, the general purpose, that they have done a very good work. This is excellent. I also want to extend my appreciation to the institution, the, the, the Inter-University Council of East Africa, that they have presented uh, the required documentation. However, I need to emphasize one uh, recommendation uh, from the committee that uh, the recommendation number one, that the institution should always avail the committee on general purpose uh, with all the necessary documents backing up the request for the supplementary budget. This means our committee had some um, up somewhere when they were doing uh, uh, the scrutiny of the proposed uh, uh, supplementary uh, bill uh, budget. So I want to encourage also the all other institutions in ESC to always be cooperating with the uh, members of general purpose so that our work could go the way it is. I therefore support the motion the way uh, it is, and uh, I encourage the members to pass this uh, supplementary bill. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gideon, for being precise. Two minutes exactly. I now call upon Honorable Buru and then uh, Honorable mm -hmm. Fatuma Ismail. Th th thank you, Madam Speaker. First, I, I congratulate you for uh, your election. Uh, secondly, I will uh, take this opportunity to pass my condolences to Mr. Speaker. And thirdly, I also want to welcome the Minister from Burundi. Now, Madam Speaker, having said that, I would like to congratulate the Committee on General Purpose for a job well done. I would also like to congratulate the Council of Ministers and the University Council of East Africa for having been able to negotiate funds from abroad. Because, Mr. Madam Speaker, you know we have problems in getting contributions from member states, and when our institutions are able to source money from uh, abroad, it is a plus to us, and we would like to encourage the Secretariat to work hard so that uh, most of the institutions get funding from uh, abroad. We know that this is not the best source of funding. Eventually, we shall have our own independent source of funding, our institutions. But before then, it is important that our institutions have the capacity and the, the ability to source funds from abroad. Uh, Madam Speaker, because it is two minutes, I just want to finish by again emphasizing that this kind of budget should have come to this assembly, to the general purpose, last year, last financial year. And it is coming very late because this is not actually the time we should be discussing supplementary estimates. This is the time we should have passed the main budget long ago, Madam Speaker, and it is very, very sad that we have to discuss a supplementary budget which inhibits the institution from spending money, which also gives, I mean, inhibits them from uh, having a credit on the ability to consume funds given by donors. Madam Speaker, we should never allow this kind of a situation where a supplementary budget on the funds donated from abroad is coming too late to us. Madam Speaker, with those few remarks, I support and uh, I congratulate the Committee on General Purpose. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Buru, for that precise and very <laughs> pragmatic presentation. I now call upon Honorable Fatuma Ibrahim. Please make your Thank presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair, mm -hmm. in allowing me to quickly speak on this. Uh, this supplementary appropriation uh, bill. Honorable Chair, first I want to congratulate you uh, for being elected as the, uh, the speaker of this uh, uh, session and could be the next one. Chair, I want to also congratulate the minister from uh, uh, Burundi for his new in joining the assembly and I welcome him. Chair, I want to go straight to the appropriation bill, the supplementary. Chair, this supplementary, Chair, I, I'm also a member of this committee, 
and we have discussed this, is just a one item, one institution appro supplementary appropriation. So, Chair, I want to appeal to members to quickly pass this bill so that we move to the substantive uh, budget for 2020-2021. Chair, Madam Speaker, this money is, is from donors, GTZ, and uh, and CIDA. And the main purpose is to support the students who are going to university. And I don't know whether members have seen the advert of, of IUCA uh, seeking applications from citizens of East Africa community, uh, seeking for application with a time-bound uh, faces. And I urge, and this money is meant for, 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 for students' allowances. It is meant for, for tickets to students to go to uh, the university in East Africa, bank judges, very simple and straightforward supplementary budget. Chair, I support. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Fatuma Ibrahim. Uh, honorable members, uh, for the few discussions which have gone on the floor, I notice we all support. We all support this supplementary because this is actually the substantive uh, part of the substantive objectives under IUSEA. And what I also wanted us to notice that uh, the delay, perhaps, in bringing this supplementary is because of the mismatch in financial years of the East African Legislative Assembly and our donors or our development partners. So I think that could have been the issue. It's not intended, but because of the non-matching financial years, we are bound to have this kind of, uh, of uh, delays in presenting the supplementary. But uh, you say I should also try to advise the, or to, to advise the donors of this issue now that we are facing as an assembly. So that next time we have it in time as a, as a noted by Honorable Buru. So members, unless there is any debate to the contrary, I believe we move to the next stage, which is the committee. We, we first of all allow the, the chair council, uh, general purpose, and then the chair council. And we conclude on this supplementary. It's one item, unless there is any debate to the contrary. I think there's none. Nobody's raising his hand. So I call upon the chair to come and answer the issues that have been raised. Then chair council. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, honorable members, I see that most of the comments were comments of appreciation and supporting uh, the supplementary report of the General Purpose Committee and the other issues that were raised by Honorable uh, Honorable Buru. Indeed, as it says that uh, it, is, it has taken long, it should have come last financial year, but of course, you know, the challenges we have been facing, even in meeting, uh, even in terms of us having this supplement that you are aware, that actually it was laid on table just the other day when uh, the Honorable uh, Speaker was around, Honorable Martin Ngoga, and was referred to our committee, and we could only consider it within one day, and the clerk spent the whole night working on the, on the report, so it was quite a tiresome uh, activity, but I thank Honorable Francoise, I thank Honorable Gideon, I thank Honorable Buru, Oburu, and Honorable Fatuma who have contributed positively towards this, uh, this, this who have supported this, uh, this uh, report. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I now call upon uh, Chair Council to reply. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much. I think this item uh, that has been brought to your attention is to do much uh, more with the school fees or scholarships of our students in the region. And uh, I concur with the Honorable Obura about the timing, uh, but also let's put it that this money is coming from partners uh, to, to our development, and we'll come them at any point in time. Their budgets and our budgets are not necessarily uh, congruent, but we have taken note of the uh, issues raised, and shall make sure next time this issue is solved. Thank you, Honorable Chair.
Thank you, Honorable Chair, General Purpose Committee, and the uh, Honorable Chair Council for being precise. I now want to put the question. I put the question that this House constitutes itself into a committee of ways and means to consider and approve the financial statements for the supplementary budget for the financial year 2019-2020. And B, that this House constitutes itself into a committee of supply to consider and approve the estimates of expenditure for the supplementary budget for financial year 2019-2020. I now put the question. Will those in favor say aye and to the contrary no by raising your hands? Those in favor, raise your hands. And those against? Those against, raise your hands. Or oh, the eyes have it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I now, this is now, we are now moving to the Committee of Ways and Means and the Committee of Papa. Madam Speaker, the stranger Madam is receiving us. I think we have a stranger. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Yes. Madam Speaker. Where is the stranger? The stranger in the house. Oh, no. <laughs> I have not seen the stranger yet. You could tell me where, which country, or where he is. If you have seen him, is where he, he yeah. is? Is with the honourable? With Nuru. honourable Nuru, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Honourable members, I want you to be reminded that this is a proper house sitting in session. We are holding an, a plenary meeting, and strangers are not allowed. Only members of parliament and our ex official members and staff relevant for this sitting are allowed in the house. So please, if you are in your home environment, limit it to yourself, because that environment has been constituted to a plenary session. You are in the house. So let's try to avoid that, honorable members. I know when we're at home, we feel like, you know, you are, you are at home, but uh, let's avoid this so that we don't get interrupted. Thank you for notifying me. So, Honorable Noor, please, can you dispatch the stranger so that uh, we're able to proceed? Chair yeah, Council, can you please move the motion? Uh, Honorable Speaker, that the East African Community Supplemental Appropriation uh, Number 2 B 2020 be read for the second time. No, no, no. I beg to amend. Uh, the report. Honorable Chair, I have moved. The, the motion is for the approval of the financial statements. So you first, let's start there and then you, you'll, that one comes later. Uh, Honorable Chair, I beg to move that in accordance with the provision of Article 132, uh, into brackets 5 of the treaty and the Rule 76 of the Rules of Procedure and the Committee of the Ways and Means to consider and approve the financial statement. I beg to move. I now propose the question that the financial statements for the supplementary budget for financial year 2019-2020 be approved. Those in favor say aye to the contrary, no by raising your hands. Uh -huh, those, those against? The eyes have it. I now put the question that the financial statements for the supplementary budget for financial year 2019-2020 be approved. 
Those in favor say aye to the contrary, no. Raising hands, please. Aye. Those against? Okay, the eyes have it. Yeah, one. Are you on? members, we are now in the committee of Sakurai. The House is expected to announce itself from the funds to be supplied or allocated to the inter university fund. Uh, vote 009. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 815,582, under vote number 009, be provided for the expenses of the Inter-University Council for East Africa, IUSEA, as revised expenditure for the financial year 2019-2020. And I put the question. In favor, say aye to the contrary, no. Those against? The ayes have it. I now put the question that, the, that a total sum of United States dollars, 815,582, under vote 009, be provided for the expenses of the Inter-University Council for East Africa, IUSEA, as revised expenditure for the financial year 2019-2020. Those in favor, raise your hands. Those against? The eyes have it. Motion. Motion for the house to resume. We are standing. Yeah, Chair, Council. Where are we now? Yeah, Council, uh, please move, move the yeah, honorable speaker. House to resume. speaker, I beg to move that the House do resume and the Committee of Supply and, and the Committee of Ways and Means report, uh, report there too. I beg to move. I put the question that the House do resume and the Committee of Supply do report there too. Those in question say aye by raising your hands. Those again is say nay. Those again is say nay by raising your hands. The eyes have it. Report report from the Committee of Ways and Means and the Committee of Supply. Yeah. Honorable Speaker, I beg to report that the Committee of Ways and Means has considered and approved the financial statements, and the Committee of Supply has considered and approved the revised estimates expenditure for the financial year 2019-2020, totaling to SD 815,582 for the Inter-University Council of East Africa, USA. I beg to move. Chair Council. This is Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the report of the Committee of Ways and Means and the Committee of Supply be adopted.
I'm seeing a stranger. Please, can you hear me? Again. I'm, seeing, I'm seeing another stranger here, the same person. Honorable Noor, please, can you tell the gentleman to move out? There is a stranger with you, Honorable Noor, and we are seeing him. Can you tell him to move out? Okay, honorable members, I now put the question that the House adopts the report from the Committee of Supply. Will those in favor say aye to the contrary? No, aye by raising your hands. Yes, those are getting raise your hands. The eyes have it. Next item on the other paper, that is item number five. The East African Community Supplementary Appropriation Number Two Bill 2020. Bill second reading by word motion. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the East African Community Supplementary Application Number Two Bill of 2020 be ready for the second time. And we have a second to this. Uh, Honorable Chair of General Purpose, I can see Honorable Ndangisa Fatuma, Honorable Happiness. Rubiko and Honorable Francine. Yes, and Honorable Prime Minister. <laughs> yes, you are the Prime Minister, please. Yes. One the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister. Yes. So the yes. motion has been seconded. Yes, and we now move to the second stage, the Minister to justify the bill. Okay. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the object of this bill is to provide for appropriation for a supplementary sum of United States, 815,582 uh, out of the community budget to meet additional expenditure for the Inter-University Council of East Africa for the financial year ending 30th June 2020. So I propose the action. Uh, thank you, Chair Council. I now propose the question that the East African Community Supplementary Bill be read for the second time. Chair Council. Chairperson, rather. Sorry, Chairperson. The East African Community Supplementary Appropriation Bill Number Two of 2020, Bill Committee Stage. This is a virtual sitting. We'll be standing up, but this is a virtual sitting, so remain seated, please. Now, honorable members, we are in the bill committee stage. We are supposed to consider the bill cause by cause. Honorable members, I propose that clause one do stand as part of the bill. Will those in favor say aye to the contrary? No, by raising your hands. 
but you can see it. Yes, those again I say nay by raising your hands. The eyes have it. Honorable <laughs> members, I put the question that clause two of the bill do stand as part of the bill. Will those in favor say aye to the contrary? No. The, the eyes. Raise your hands. Those against, the eyes have it. I said you. I can't hear you, Madam Speaker. Sorry, we are operating with the with the laptop here. Colleagues, I, I read the question again. I propose the question that the title be part of the bill. Those in favor say aye to the contrary, no. The eyes, you raise your hands. Those against, the eyes have it. I now put the question that the title be part of the bill. Those in favor say aye. Those against, nay. The eyes have it. Motion for the House. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the House do resume and the Committee of the whole House report there too. I beg to move. Report from the Committee of the whole House. Uh, honorable, honorable, members, honorable members, I now put the question that the House do resume and the Committee of the Whole House do report there too. Those in favor say aye. Raise your hands. Those against nay. The ayes have it. A report from the Committee of the Whole House. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the Committee of the Whole House has considered the bill entitled East African Community Supplemental Appropriation Number no. 2, Bill 2020, and passed it uh, without amendment. Without amendment. I beg to move. Adoption of the report from the Committee of the Whole House. Person. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the report of the committee of the whole house be adopted. I beg to move. Honorable, honorable members, I now put the question that the report from the, the committee of the whole house be adopted. Those in favor say aye to the contrary, no. Raise your hands. Those against, the eyes have it. Item, item number six on the other paper. Seven. Item number six. Seven. Item number seven on the other paper. The East African Community Supplementary Appropriation Number Two B, 2020. Honorable Minister. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the East African Community Supplementary Appropriation Number no. 2 Bill 2020 
be ready for the for the third time and do pass. Thank you tomorrow. Seconders. Honorable Nambara. Honorable Francine. Honorable Bahati and Honorable Francoise and all those who have raised their hands. I now propose the question that the East African Community Supplementary Bill Number Two, 2020, be read for the third time and do pass. And I put the question that the East African Community Supplementary Appropriation Bill Number Two, uh, Financial 2020, be read for the third time and do pass. Those in favour say aye. Contrary, no. Aye. By raising your hands, those, yes. Those against, the eyes have it. The East African Community Supplementary Number Two, an act that has been passed for an act to appropriate appropriate. $815,582 as additional expenditure for the Inter University Council for the financial year 2020. Congratulations, honorable members. I want to thank you for your patience. In the morning, we had challenges with the, with the system, but I think now things are better. And I thank you for having concluded the, the first item of considering the supplementary application bill. We are now moving to the next item. Honorable Clark. Item number eight. In the order paper, consideration of the East African Community Budget Estimates for the financial year 2020-2021 of motion. Chair yeah, Council. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that this House do dissolve itself into a a committee of ways and means consider and approve the financial statements for the financial year 2020-2021, and B, a committee of the suppliers consider and approve the estimates for the expenditure for the financial year 2020-2021. to I beg you to move. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I now, Chair Council, I now call upon the Chairperson Committee on General Purpose to present the report to the House. Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, members, uh, report of the Committee of General Purpose on the ESC budget estimates for revenue and expenditure for financial year 2020-2021. Introduction. The East African Legislative Assembly, AYALA, is one of the organs of the East African community established under Article 9 of the Treaty for the establishment of the East African community. The Treaty bestows upon the Assembly three cardinal functions legislation, oversight, and representation. In the exercise of its legislative and oversight function, the Assembly, among others, scrutinizes, debates, and passes the budget of the community. The Assembly largely exercises its legislative and oversight functions through its committees. In particular, the Committee on General Purpose is mandated to, among others, scrutinize, scrutinize the budget of the community before it is approved by the Assembly. Article 49.2b and 132 and 5 of the Treaty for the establishment of the East African community, and join the assembly to debate and approve the budget of the East African community. The is enjoined Article, Article 14E, 132, and 5 of the treaty to prepare and submit the same budget to the assembly for approval. Section 41 of the East African Community Act 208 provides that the council shall not later than the 30th day of April in each financial year submit and lay before the assembly 
the budget of the community for the next financial year. On 12th of August 2020, the Chairperson Council of Ministers laid on table the ESC budget estimates for the financial year 2020-2021. In accordance with Section 4.2 of the Budget Act, the Right Honourable Speaker referred the ESC budget estimates for financial year 2020-2021 to the Committee on General Purpose for consideration. Further to this, on the 25th day of September 2020, the Chairperson Council of Ministers presented to the House the budget speech for the financial year 2020-2021. Pass one section 43 of the ESC Budget Act, Rule 81CE and G and Annex 5F of the Rules of Procedure of the Assembly, the Committee on General Purpose considered the annual estimates of revenue and expenditure of the East African community for the financial year 2020-2021. The committee hereby presents its report. Methodology. During the consideration of the budget, the Committee A reviewed the ESC budget estimates for the financial year 2020-2021 and the ESC budget speech for the financial 2020-2021. B. Interacted with the Council of Ministers, Secretary General, Heads of Organs and Institutions. C. Scrutinized among others the following documents. 1. The policy statement on the ESC annual budget estimates for the financial 2020-2021. The ESC budget MTF for the financial 2020-2021. The ESC budget summaries for financial 2020-2021. The ESC financial statements for financial 2020-2021, the ESC Annual Operational Plan for 2020-2021, the ESC Pre-Budget -Pre Conference Report for the Financial 2020-2021, the For the First Extraordinary Council of Ministers Report Extract, and the ESC Appropriations Bureau 2020. Achievements during the financial 2019-2020. Priority programs in financial 2019-2020. According to the Secretary General, following are the priority programs activities planned for the financial 2019-2020. One, consolidation of a single customs territory and the promotion of intra and extra and intra and extra ESC trade and export competitiveness. Two, development of regional infrastructure. Three, effective implementation of the common market protocol, that is enhancement of free movement of persons, labor capital, and implementation of com commitments on other areas of cooperation as envisaged under the common market protocol. Four, enhancement of regional industrial development, agricultural value addition, skills development, technological advancement, and innovation to stimulate economic development. Five, implementation of the roadmap towards the ESC Monetary Union. Six, promotion of regional peace, security, and governance, and constitutional making for the ESC Political Confederation. Seven, institutional transformation, focusing on implementation of the institutional review recommendation, sustainable financing mechanism, and improvement of performance, management of ESC organs and institutions. Eight, cross-cutting priority areas. Key achievements during the financial year 2019-2020. The Secretary General further informed the committee that the following were the key achievements during the financial year 2019-2020 in line with the priority areas outlined above. One, implementation of a single customs territory progressed well. The region has fully rolled out into regional transfers on imports and direct exports and is working towards the rollout of the transit regime. The region authorized economic operator program facility Facilitating clearance of goods for compliant traders was further enhanced with a total number of 115 regional uh, AEOs. Two, operationalization of one stop border post has progressed well. In addition to the thorough operation OSBPs across partner states, in September 2019, His Excellency John Tombe Joseph Magufuli, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, and His Excellency, and His Excellency. Ed Galungu, President of the Republic of Zambia, officially launched in the Tunduma one-stop border post located on the Tanzania-Zambia border. Three, the ESC Secretariat carried out a capacity building program towards integration of the Republic of South Sudan into the ESC Customs Union. The Republic of South Sudan is expected to make formal submission to the Council to consider extending the grace period to start implementing the ESC Customs Union. The Council resolved 14 NTBs out of 18 that were outstanding as of February 2019. Five, trade performance among the ESC partner states demonstrated an increasing trend. According to the ESC Trade Report 2019, intra ESC trade recorded an increase of an increase of around 7%, rising from exports of $2.9 billion in 2017 to US dollars $3.1 billion in 2018. Six, there was remarkable progress towards the inclusion of the conclusion of the agreement for the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area, as already 54 out of 55 African Union member states have signed the agreement. 
The agreement entered into force on 30th May 2019, having Zohari ratified by 22, 28 African Union member states. The Republic of Kenya, Republic of Rwanda, and the Republic of Uganda have ratified the agreement. Seven, in respect to Comesa ES Sadak tripartite free trade area agreement, so far 23 tripartite member states have signed the agreement. These include the ESC partner states, except the Republic of South Sudan, the TF the TFTA agreement will end into force once ratified by 14 out of the total 27 tripartite member states. Eight, concerning free movement on trade in services, the ESC Sector Council on Trade, Industry, Finance and Investment adopted the revised ESC schedules of specific commitments in seven private service, service sectors, namely business, communication, distribution, education, finance, tourism, transport and services. Nine, as regards the issuance of the ESC e-passport, the Republic of Rwanda commenced the issuance of the e East African e-passport on 1st of July 2019, thus joining the Republic of Kenya, United Republic of Tanzania, Republic of Rundi, and Republic of Uganda, which had already started issuing the e-passports in September 2017, January 2018, May 2018, and December 2018, respectively. Ten, there was a redrafting Annex 7 of the ESC Common Market Protocol to provide for a legal framework for the development of mutual recognition agreements, which will be considered by the Sectoral Council of Ministers on Legal and Judicial Affairs. Uh, Eleven, the community has successfully held the fourth edition of the ESC Arts Cultural Festival, Jumia Ya Africa Mashariki Utamaduni Festival in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania in September 2019 under the theme, Cultural Diversity, a Key Driver to Regional Integration, Economic Growth and Promotion of Tourism. Twelve, in response to the outbreak of COVID-19 in the region, the Joint Meeting of Ministers Responsible for Health and ESC Affairs in March 2020 directed all partner states to institute measures towards the containment of the spread of, of the disease. Thirteen, with financial support from the Alliance for Green Revolution, the ESC Secretariat commissioned the Agriculture Joint Sector that Review is. Assessment. The, the draft ESC Joint, Joint Sector Review Assessment Report was considered by the 13th meeting of the Sector Council of Agriculture and Food Security held in September 2019. 14. With the support of the World Bank, an ESC statistics development and harmonization of regional project was finalized and became operational in 2019. On the constitution making process for the ESC Political Confederation, the constitution experts developed all documentation required to undertake stakeholders' consultation at both partner state and regional levels. The ESC and the UN concluded long-term cooperation arrangements through an MOU signed with the UN and the Secretary General for Political and Peace Building Affairs on the 5th of March 2020. The MOU defines core areas of common interest that will jointly be implemented in the areas of governance, peace and security. Uh, 17. The four-year European Union supported maritime security project was concluded with intensive training provided to investigations agencies of general forensic investigation and of criminal analysis covering one of the systems of the region. The negotiations for the court Please, the issue of them. We can now proceed. I think the system is up and running. The system is up and running. We can now proceed. I hope you can get us. Can you get Uganda? Can you hear Uganda? Yes, yes. Yes, yes we can. Yes, yes. 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 
Yeah, thank you, thank you. So we can now proceed, honorable members. Okay, thank you very much. I was on which one? I think I was on 17. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, honorable speaker. Uh, number 17, the four-year the four European Union support the Maritime Security Project was concluded with intensive trainings provided to investigations agencies on general and forensic investigations and criminal analysis, covering 150 officers from the region. Number 18, the negotiations for the fourth A APSA, or APSA support project, were concluded with the commitment of euros 1 million Honorable Noor, can you mute your microphone, please? Mute, mute the microphone, mute. Yours, yours, Honorable Noor, please, mute it. With your stranger. <laughs> no, wait, it's, it's... Can you mute it, Honorable mute. Noor, so that we can proceed mute with the presentation? Yes. Mike, Mike, mute the microphone. <laughs> Chair, yeah, proceed, please. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. 18. The, the negotiations for the fourth APSA support project were concluded with a commitment of euros, one million dollars nine hundred and fifty thousand, covering thirty-eight months with effect from first March 2020. 19. A financing arrangement was concluded with the European Union for funding support towards combating transitional, transnational, and cross-border security threats at a total sum of, of euros covering a 44-month period, as from 1st January 2020. Number 22, the AC Secretary continued to seek support from development partners' financial agreements, totaling to 170 million, 244,000, US dollars, and these were signed. A budget performance in financial year 2019-2020. The total budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 was US dollars 99 million 770,716 uh, plus supplementary budget amounting to 4 million dollars 977,475. The total partner states contribution and expenditure by organs and institutions up, up, up to against the approved budget for the same period was as below. There's a table one, which is status of contributions by partner states toward the ESC main budget, ESC secretariat. <coughs> Uh, Ayala, ESCJ, LOVBC, EKC, ESTECO, EAHRC, and ESCA amounts in US dollars. So the partner states from the Republic of Burundi, the areas, the areas were six million dollars five hundred and fifteen thousand zero twenty-three contributions due in 2020, 2021. Seven million dollars eight hundred sixteen zero fifty three contributions paid so far for this financial year zero total outstanding on the ESC main budget is fourteen million dollars three hundred thirty one zero seven six Republic of Kenya zero areas contributions so far for this financial year contributions which are supposed to be paid this financial year seven million dollars eight hundred sixteen zero five three contributions so far paid this financial year zero and the outstanding so far is seven million dollars eight sixteen zero five four. The public of Rwanda zero areas. This year they are supposed to contribute seven million dollars eight sixteen zero five three. And so far in this financial year 2020-2021, the Republic of Rwanda has so far paid nine hundred seventy six thousand nine forty seven, which is twelve percent. The outstanding ESC main budget now for this financial year is six million dollars eight three nine one zero six. Republic of Sudan, South Sudan. Outstanding areas, $24 million, 626514. Contributions due this financial year, $7 million, 816,053. So far paid zero. The total outstanding to the budget is $32 million, 442567. The United Republic of Tanzania, the areas, $1,000, 509. So far, they are supposed to pay seven eight seven million dollars eight sixteen zero five three. So far, paid this financial year zero. Total outstanding is seven million dollars eight hundred seventeen five sixty two. The Republic of Uganda, uh, area zero, they are supposed to pay this financial year seven million dollars eight 
816053. Uganda has, of, has so far, as of today, paid $2 million, $679,224, which is 34% uh, of the budget. Of the contributions. So, and so, they are so, sorry, outstanding Madam Speaker. Areas, sorry, outstanding... Madam Speaker. Sorry, Madam Speaker. There is one mic which is on, is disturbing our attention. Please, can everyone switch the mic? There's one mic which is on. We can't even follow up. I'm sure even the answer we can Honourable... speak to you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Members, can you please check your your microphones, please mute them as we proceed with the presentation from Honorable Chair. Please, Honorable Members, check. Honorable Nuri, you can check yours as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, so Uganda, the outstanding as of this financial year is $5 million, 136,831. So total outstanding areas, $31 million, 143,045. Contributions due this financial year as per the budget, $46,896,320. Contributions paid so far, $3,656,669, which is 8%. Total outstanding to the budget, $74,383,196. So I would want to commend the Republic of Uganda, the Republic of Rwanda, for already at least showing positiveness by paying some money this financial year. University, in the University Council of East Africa, amounts in U.S. dollars. Partner states areas. Republic of Burundi, the University Council of East Africa is demanding from the Republic of Burundi $5 million, 957,591. Contribution is due this financial year, 661,650. So far paid zero. And the total outstanding to IUSEA is $6 million, $619,241 from the Republic of Burundi. The Republic of Kenya, the area is $1,975. Due this year is $661,650. So far paid is zero. And the total outstanding is $659,675. Republic of Rwanda, areas outstanding to IUSEA are $2 million, $785,519. Due this financial year is 661,650. Contributions paid so far zero. The outstanding to ISEA, $3 million, Republic of South Sudan, areas $2 million, This financial year they are supposed to pay 661,650. So far paid zero. And the total amount owed to ISEA by Republic of South Sudan, $3 million, United Republic of Tanzania, outstanding areas 11,509. Contributions this year 661,650. So far, I've paid nothing. And the total outstanding is 673,159 US dollars. The Republic of Uganda, outstanding areas are 973,876 US dollars. Outstanding this year due 661,650. Uh, so far, Uganda has paid 174,578, which is 26%. And they're being demanded $1,469,48. Total areas to the University Council of East Africa from all partner states, $12 million, Contributions to IUSEA this financial year, $3 million, from partner states. And contributions paid so far, $174,578, which is 4%. And total outstanding is $16,353,945. Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization amounts in U.S. dollars. Partner states, the Republic of Burundi, areas three, contributions due in 2020-2021, Contributions paid so far Procedure, zero. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Procedure. Yes, Honorable. Honorable Minister. Jean-Claude. Honorable Jean-Claude, yes. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I was trying to peruse through this report. And it looks like from page 6 up to page 17 of the report, it's only tables. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that maybe we, the Honorable Chairperson of the General Purpose Committee, um, reads only the, the totals so that we can, for in the interest of time, so that we can finish on time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 
Okay. okay, thank you, Honorable Jean Claude. Uh, the Honorable Chair has uh, understood your proposal and is going to implement it, I believe. Thank you. Another procedure. Honorable Speaker. Another procedure. For members, can we allow the chair to proceed? Kindly, it's about time. Kindly, it is about time. I just want to move a motion to extend, uh, to extend time. Yeah, we still have time. It's just three. It's just uh, coming to four. Virtual so we still have time. Five. Virtual sitting still. is five. So we need to have extension. We still have time. We'll extend when we're there. When okay. we're there, then you extend. <laughs> Thank you so much, Reverend Speaker, and uh, for that guidance. So I will be reading the totals. Uh, so, like Victoria Fisheries Organization uh, amounts in US dollars. Uh, all of the partner states, the areas, uh, 348,856 contributions due, one million dollars nine hundred forty-five nine thirty-eight contributions paid so far, one thirty-two thousand nine fifty-two, which is seven percent. Outstanding to like Victoria Officials Organization is two million dollars one hundred one thousand eight four three. Budget performance table two summary for the budget performance per organ institution from July to December 2019. ESC Secretariat their budget performance is uh, uh, from partner states was at 47 percent and uh, uh, development partners. 15%. ESC, East African Court of Justice, per se, per budget performance from partner states, 45%. Development partners, zero. East African Legislative Assembly, partner, partner states, budget performance, 49%. Uh, there was nothing from development partners. The Victoria Fisheries Organization, like Victoria Basin Commission, partner states, 33%. Budget performance, development partners, 6%. Uh, in the University Council of East Africa, 43% budget performance from partner states, 37 from rural partners. The Victoria Fisheries Organization, 25% from partner states, and 18% for rural partners. East African Science and Technology Commission, uh, 31% from partner states, 23% for rural partners. East African Health, East African Health Commission. I think there is, there is the a East African problem. Swahili Commission, partner states 27%, development partners zero. East African Health Research Commission 37%, partner states zero, development partners. East African Competition Authority, budget performance was at 15%. Uh, so, total, the budget performance generally for the last financial year was at 30% for all organs and institutions of the community. Table three, partner states total outstanding obligations, summation. I think this one I will have to read it because it's very important. Republic of Burundi, outstanding areas, total of million dollars, 472,610. Outstanding contribution is this financial year, 2020-2021, million dollars, 964,188. Overall, uh, Contributions to ESC main budget, uh, what is outstanding, is $21 million, $436,798. Republic of Kenya, outstanding total is $8 million, $962,213. Republic of Rwanda, the outstanding is $10 million, $286,275. South Sudan, $36 million, $281,403. United Republic of Tanzania, $8 million, $980,982. Republic of Uganda is $6 million, $951,312. Total outstanding is $92 million. Total outstanding for partner states, $92,898,983. Yeah, Budget estimates for the financial year 2020-2021. The Council of Ministers requests the Assembly to approve a total budget of 97 million 669708 for financial year 2020-2021 as compared to US dollars $111 million $450,529 for 2019-2020, as shown in the table below. So this is a summary of the proposed ESC budget for the financial year 2020-2021.
The council proposes that uh, the ESC Secretariat uh, this financial year is given $48 million, 564400 from $53 million to 96404 of last financial year, registering a decrease of $4 million, 732004 which is a negative 9 percentage in terms of the budget. East African Court of Justice, uh, the Secretariat, I mean the Council proposes that uh, they appropriated $3 million, 970406 from uh, a total of last financial year of $3 million, nine, uh, I beg your pardon, $4 million, 225241, which is a negative 6 percentage reduction in the budget. East African Legislative Assembly, the Council proposes that this year the Assembly is allocated $16 million, 7557255 from $18 million, 973845 of last financial year, registering a negative 12% uh, in terms of budget. Lake Victoria Benson Commission, uh, the budget proposed is $8 million, 380057, which is a negative 36% from last financial year, which was $13 million, 193849. East African Science and Technology Commission, uh, the proposed budget is $1 million, 536751, which is a negative 20 percentage compared to last year's uh, total, which was $1 million, 915073. East African Kiswahili Commission, council proposes that this year is given $1 million, 399318, which is a negative 5 percent in terms of their budget. From last year, from last year, which one million dollars four seven four seven seven five. East African Health Research Commission, the council proposes one eight one million dollars eight seventy nine six hundred, which is a negative fifty three percent of their budget. East African Competition Authority, the council proposes proposes one million dollars one twenty eight two twenty four, which is which is an increase to them by fifty five percent. I would want you, honour members, to note those percentages very carefully. In the University Council of East Africa, their, their budget was increased to $10 million, 977-276, which is 15% budget increment. The Victoria Fishers Organization, their budget was decreased to $3 million, 77,934, which is a negative 24. Total, total this, this financial year, the Council proposes $97 million, 669-708, from last year's, last year's budget of $111 million, 450529, which is a negative 12%. Expected revenue. We have uh, monies from uh, partner states, ministries of ESC. They are supposed to contribute. Uh, 49 million, uh, last financial year was $49 million, 791446. This financial year, the council reduced the budget to $46 million, 896321, which is a negative percent, negative 6 percent. Ministry of Response of Education, the council, the council proposes uh, the budget to be $3 million, 969898 as contribution, uh, which is a negative 9 percent from last financial year of $4 million, 379968. Uh, Ministry of Response of Fisheries, council proposed the $1 million, 945938 from last year's uh, uh, budget of two million dollars uh, 06845. Member universities council proposes 394,960 as contributions from last year 468,300. Development partners uh, last financial year the development partners that it was 54 million. 031725 and this financial year is for the 1 million 97792 as their contributions towards the budget a reduction of negative of 22 percent in the budget miscellaneous revenue uh, last financial year miscellaneous revenue was uh, 296145 this financial year is 225850 negative 24 uh, general reserve general reserve last financial year was 422 100 
This financial year is 226,100 as contributions towards the budget, a negative 37%. General reserve for the University Council of East Africa, last financial year, zero. This financial year is $1,999,950. So therefore, the totals, the total contributions of all these uh, all these, all these other sources for this financial is estimated to be at uh, uh, 41 million 970 792, which is a reduction from 55 million 698 That is a reduction by 12 percent of 13 million dollars 78881. Summary of the proposed budget for 2020-2021. Allocation of contribution from partner states and miscellaneous revenue for financial year 2020-2021. ESC Secretariat, uh, this financial year, this, this financial year, they, will, they are supposed, the council proposes that uh, they receive $17 million, 466257 from the partner states contribution and 462,770 from other revenues, totaling 17,929,027 from last financial year of 19,125,008. This is a negative 6%. East African Court of Justice, this financial year, Council proposes uh, $30 million, as contributions from partner states and other miscellaneous revenue. Uh, which is a negative 3% from last financial year of $3 million. East African Legislative Assembly. Last financial year, uh, this financial year, <clears throat> Council proposes $16 million, from last financial year of $18 million, being contribution from partner states and other miscellaneous revenue, which is a reduction of 12% of the budget. Lake Victoria Benson Commission. Uh, Council proposes 2,789,103 from last year 285. Uh, last year, uh, from last year is negative 2%. East African Science and Technology Commission, uh, 1,536,751, uh, which is a negative 6%. East African Swahili Commission, 1,399,318, which is a negative, which is a plus. 3%. The their budget was increased by 3%. East African Health Research Commission, uh, $1,879,600, and the budget was increased by 4%. East African Competition Authority, uh, $1,128,240, their budget was increased by 74%. In the University Council of East Africa, $6,364,808, an increment by 31%. The Victoria Fisheries Organization, $1,945,938, million dollars nine four five nine three eight and a reduction by is uh, negative six total for partner states uh, so the total deduction from partner states and all other miscellaneous revenues because the total is fifty five million six ninety eight nine sixteen compared to last financial year which was uh, uh, fifty seven million four one eight eight zero four which is a negative three percent contribution to, to the main budget for the ESC 2020-2021 for each partner state. Republic of Burundi, last financial year, the Republic of Burundi was supposed to contribute $8 million, and it was decreased $7 million, and this is for all the other partner states. So the total contribution last financial year was supposed to be for the nine million dollars seven ninety one four four six and council reduced those contributions this financial year to forty six million eight nine six three twenty which is uh, two million dollars eight nine five one two four negative six amidst the growing institutions of the community contributions to ISEA budget for financial 2020-2021 compared to financial 2019-2020 by each partner state the public of Burundi Last financial year, the Republic of Burundi was contributed 729,995. And this financial year is supposed to contribute 661,650. 
and that is the same for all the other partner states, meaning there is a reduction from $4 million, 379.970, to $3 million, 969.898, which is a negative 9% decrease. Contribution to the Victoria Fisheries Organization budget for financial year 2020-2021. This financial year, the uh, Republic of Kenya is supposed to contribute to LVFO 486,485, just like the United Republic of Tanzania and the Republic of Uganda, which, which, is, uh, which, is, which is a total of $1,000,000, 945, Nine, even the Republic of Burundi, uh, $1,000,000, 945938 It's a negative 6% uh, percentage reduction. Details of miscellaneous revenue to fund the budget for financial year 2020-2021 <clears throat> as compared to last financial year. <clears throat> Member universities, fees paid to UICEA is, uh, this financial year is 394960 compared to 468300 last financial year. Miscellaneous revenue from interest from investments in fixed deposit, current accounts, proceeds from disposal of fixed assets. This financial year, 80,930 compared to 172,551 last financial year, a negative 3% decrease. Other contributions from road stroke highway authorities this year, 144,920, last financial year, 123,594, which is an increase by 17%. The ESC General Reserve. Uh, last financial year was 422,100. This financial year, 266,100, uh, which is a negative 37%. I see a reserve, $1.99950 million. Total, uh, total miscellaneous revenue to fund the budget of this financial year. Uh, this financial year is uh, $2 million, 886760 A decrease, a decrease. No, an increase from last financial year of $1 million, $186,545. That is 143% increase. Development partners support to the budget for the financial year 2021, uh, 2020-21 compared to last financial year. Partnership fund basket. This financial year is $797,278 from last year, $2 million, $975. 638. African Development Bank is $9 million, 811,720, uh, which uh, compared to last year, $9 million, 620,068. There are quite many. United States Agency for International Development, this financial year is uh, $73 million, 842,635. Compared to last financial year of $8 million, this is a, a negative 32 percentage decrease. German through KFW, this financial year is $5 million, 573629. Last year, 3915391 for the 2 percent increase. World Bank, this financial year, $12 million, 242554, compared to last financial year of $17 million, 373733. Negative 30 percent. Other projects funded by European Union, one million dollars four zero seven four zero eight two three. This financial year, from last financial year of four million dollars six. No, no. Uh, last financial year was uh, two million dollars three two four seven nine two. This financial year is four million dollars zero six five six one five. That is 75 percent increase. Chinese government. This financial year, three seventy two thousand two ten. Uh, from 198,150, 88% increase. Uh, ICIPE by Innovate Africa, uh, this financial year zero, last financial year 99,660. Uh, United Nations Environmental Program, this financial year 1 million dollars 675, 120, last financial year 1.82734. 1, 1, that is an increment of 8%. African Union funded project through African Union. $1 million, 61700 this financial year, from $2 million, 89800 last financial year, negative 49. Swedish International Development Agency, CIDA, uh, this financial year, $1 million, 333766 
from last financial year, $3 million to 35 a negative 39%. Uh, GIZ, this financial year, 417,500 from last financial year, 913,740, negative 4%. Bill and Melinda gets foundation. This financial year, zero. Last financial year, 634,298. That's a negative 100%. Ag Agra. Agra, this financial is 237,730 from last financial of 196,800. Uh, that's a plus of 21%. DAAD, -D -D -D. last financial 261,120, this financial near, negative 100. International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis, uh, this financial 439,040 from last financial 350,590. St. Andrews University, Last financial year zero, this financial year 5813 US dollars, which is a 100% increment. Swiss Federal Department for Foreign Affairs, this financial year 90,000 from zero last financial year. So the total uh, contributions, this financial year from all these uh, uh, donor funds and development, development partners is $41 million, 930,792 compared to last financial year. Of $54 million, 031725. That's a negative 22%. East African budget summary as per categories for financial year 2020 2021. Personal emoluments. This financial year, personal emoluments, that is the current expenditure, will be $33 million, 734. 432 compared to last financial year, which was uh, 36 million dollars, 36 age 216, which is an increment of 34. Then we are attending it virtually. Honorable Mary, I think. Uh, Honorable Mary, please mute your microphone. We are receiving your echoes. Hi, Honorable Speaker. I'm very sorry. Okay. Other administrative charges. This financial year are $70 million, 097520. Uh, last financial year were $28 million, 14194, an 18% increment. Development budget. This financial year is $46 million, 837756, from last financial year of $36 million, 711702. Therefore, this financial year total estimates. Uh, and 97 million dollars 669708 uh, compared to last financial year of 111 million dollars 45529 uh, as as per the as per the presentation by the council of ministers priority areas and programs for the period 2020 2021 and 2022 2023 the mtf for the financial year 2020-21 2022-23 was prepared in line with the global and sector-specific priority areas adopted by the 39th meeting of the Council of Ministers held on 21st, 28th November 2019. Various summit and council directives and sector departmental projections. The theme for the budget for financial year 2020-21 is stimulating the economy, safeguard livelihoods, jobs, businesses, and industrial recovery. During the financial year 2020-21, the community will focus on the following key priority areas. One, consolidation of a single customs territory, to cover all imports and intra esc traded goods, including agriculture and other widely consumed products. Two, infrastructure development in the region. Three, enhancing free movement of all factors of production and other areas of cooperation across the partner states as envisaged under the Common Market Protocol and Monetary Union Protocols. Four, enhancement of regional industrial development through investment in key priority sectors, skills development, technological advancement, and innovation to stimulate economic development. Improvement of agricultural productivity, value addition and facilitation of movement of agricultural goods to enhance food security in the region, promotion of regional peace, security, and good governance, and institutional transformation at the regional and partner states levels. Expected outcomes over the medium term, 2020-21-22-23. It is expected that implementation of the above priority programs will result in the following outcomes. 
consolidation of a single customs territory will further enhance the e intra esc trade and lead to increased efficiency and reduced cost of doing business in the region implementation of programs and infrastructure will improve transport interlinkages increase efficiency and delivery of freight and passenger services lower transport costs ease movement of persons and goods and enhance regional trade. Effective implementation of the ESC Commonwealth Pro Protocol will result in the realization of accelerated economic growth and development of ESC region, particularly towards promotion of employment and improvement of standards of living and working conditions within the community. Enhancement of regional industrial development, agricultural value addition, skills development, technological advancement, and innovation will boost the region's export competitiveness for fast economic development. Implementation of roadmap towards the ESC Monetary Union through harmonization of fiscal and monetary policies and establishment of the requisite EAMU institutions will facilitate economic integration for sustainable growth and development of the community. Promotion of regional peace, security, good governance, and constitutional making for the ESC political confederation are critical for attainment of a stable and politically united East Africa factors that will be necessary for the successful implementation of socioeconomic programs to further support growth and development of the ESC region. Seven, promotion of peer learning in entrenching democratic values through sharing and follow-up of election observation outcomes. This is critical, sustainable stability, which is a key ingredient for successful integration. Implementation of, inve of the investigated institutional reforms will ensure that operational systems are fully streamlined to achieve the desired level of efficiency, accountability, and value for money. Implementation of cross-cutting projects and programs will complement those that are specific to the four pillars of ES integration towards the realization of the community's objectives, both in the short and medium term. <clears throat> Key challenges affecting budget implementation. Despite the progress made in the implementation of the community's projects and programs, a number of challenges still persist. They include the following. Inadequacy of resources and delays in disbursement of financial commitments from partner states. For example, during the period under review, the East African Court of Justice was forced to cancel two court sessions, which led to delay in the conclusion of cases. Two, postponement of technical and policy meetings, leading to delays in the implementation of decisions. Three, recurring non tariff barriers that affect the movement of goods across borders, slow pace of implementation of common market protocol and single customs territory that hinder the free movement of goods both raw materials and finished products, and services from one partner set to another. This affects regional intra-trade and encourages stiff competition by foreign outside ESC imported products against locally produced products. The ongoing and anticipated impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the community's activities and economic economies of the partner states. Risks associated with unreliable disbursement of enrollment partner funding, particularly in donor-reliant sectors like peace and security. Strategies for mitigating the challenges. The Secretary General informed the committee that the, com the community will implement the following strategies to mitigate the effects of the above challenges. One, close follow-up of remittances by partner states to facilitate timely implementation of the projects and programs, including identification of alternative financing options for the consideration by the Council. Enhancement pre enhanced prioritization of activities to avoid wastage of resources. Improvement of processes, systems, and infrastructure through use of information technology provide high levels of efficiency, quality, and cost effectiveness in operations. Continuous dialogue with development partners, support of the ESC projects and programs, a concerted and coordinated effort to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the regional economy, and implementation of council directives on progressing winning of peace and security sector for donor dependency. Proposed budget allocation as planned activities in the financial year 2020-2021. The ESC Secretariat. According to the budget estimates, the ESC Secretariat was allocated US dollars for 8 million five six four four zero one for this financial year. This amount was allocated to the relevant offices as indicated below. Office of the Secretary General. Uh, the, the office requests the approval of US dollars one million two seventy three eight six one to implement, among others, the following key programs in this financial year. To provide, to convene an annual forum with the private sector bodies and civil society organizations, to convene two honorary summits of heads of state, to participate in four AUC stroke UN statutory meetings, SG's mission to World Bank IMF annual and spring meetings, and in the continuation of negotiation rounds with development partners, 
coordination meetings with the European Union, you said Germany, African Development Bank, Japan, and France. Convene two briefing sessions with the chairperson of the summit to engage the technical assistance for installation of the PCU project management software. Working executive retreat to disseminate activities of the project coordination unit. Publication and information sharing, highlight issues and progress of regional integration. To attend five consultation missions, partner states, and five official functions, in fa functions invited by DSC heads of state. Participate in three AYALA plenary sessions and conduct a four internal audit assignments each year, each quarter. Internal audit unit to convene quarterly meetings of the Auditor Risk Committee, procure new laptops for internal auditors to facilitate audit work. Defense and liaison unit to convene by biannual by annual meetings of command of commandants of ESC senior command and staff to review programs in cooperation in military training, legal and judicial units, to convene and facilitate meetings of the sector, Sectoral Council of Legal and Judicial Affairs, to provide legal input to the legislative instruments adopted by Council, provide legal support to organs and institutions of the community, corporate communications and public uh, affairs, develop the second ESC communications policy and strategy 2018-19, 2023-2024, to organize media briefings, live streaming, arrange media <coughs> breakfast engagements, for major ES events, to print and distribute ESC integration publications, treaties, protocols, and occasion, occasional publication to stakeholders, to develop and distribute informal calls and programs on ESC integration for dissemination on, of radio, television, televisions, and social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Resource mm -hmm. mobilization. Development of the e East Africa ESCDF framework and the validation of the legal instruments between ESC and EADB on the management of the fund. Conduct donor missions to existing and potential donors, strong development partners. Conduct specific donor roundtables for ESC organs and institutions. Conduct visits to non-traditional donors, including foundations, and undertake donor engagement missions, and monitoring the implementation of the PF work plan and comp compilation of progress reports. Office of the Deputy Secretary General, Finance, and administration. The office of this, the office requests the approval of US dollars 18 million five zero seven two sixty nine to cater for the personal emoluments and administrative costs and to implement among others the following key programs for activities in this financial year. Human resource management and development uh, want to facilitate automation of staff management systems to organize quarterly meetings of the ESC uh, of the ESC ad hoc service commission to develop and implement the ESC change management framework and strategy for smooth implementation of ESC institutional review, facilitate the HR staff to attend the meetings of Council of Ministers, Risk and Audit Commission, and the IARA for the agenda concerning HR matters, recruitment and settlement of ESC start project management unit to pay emoluments every month for established staff, pay other allowances paid directly to established staff on an annual basis, to retain project staff under ESC stroke city integrated health program. Administration, to pay for communication services, fencing of the land in Kisongo, to build gabions, prevent erosion to the land in Kisongo, to follow up on staff immunities and privileges, to maintain and review car tracking systems in all ESC vehicles, provide fuel for ESC vehicles, procure two vehicles for the two DSGs. Procurement. Facilitate procurement committee to attend audit, audit and risk committee meetings to respond to procurement related issues. Um, Office of the Deputy Secretary General, Planning and Infrastructure. The office requests the approval of $14 million, 695949, to implement the following key programs through activities in this financial year. To carry out baseline assessment for mobility of selected professionals and students across ESC partner states, to hold meetings of the National Implementation Committee to review implementation of the Common Market Protocol, to hold meetings at the regional level to monitor and evaluate implementation of the Common Market Protocol, to convene the pre-budget conference to agree on the global and sector-specific priority areas for this financial for 2021-2022, to convene sectoral council of ministers responsible for ESC affairs and planning meetings to provide policy guidance, to convene sectoral council of ministers responsible for ESC affairs and planning meetings to provide policy mm -hmm. guidance, internal review of the draft annual operational plan for this for 2020-2021-2022, to engage an external expert for training and sensitization of staff of Secretariat, EYALA, EACH, on ISO 9001 to 2015 standard. Office 
of the Deputy Secretary General, Productive Ashwa Secretary. The office requests the approval of $9 million, 482361, to implement the following key programs activities for this financial year. To convene experts to develop and validate ESC rice development strategy, convene high-level meeting of Ayala members of Agriculture, Tourism, and Natural Resources Committee, convene meetings of, to validate ESC regional agriculture investment plan, implementation plan, and comprehensive African agriculture development program result framework. Validation of protocols, TROC, SOPs pro, to operationalize ESC, harmonized by a pesticide guideline. Sector Council of Agriculture and Food Security, organize and convene meeting with stakeholders and development partners, convene CADP experts to validate the ESC Joint Sector Review Action Plan, to convene legal experts to facilitate this fertilizer bill, and convene sessions of the Sector Council on Agriculture and Food Security. Officer Peter Secretary General, Political Federation. The office requests the approval of $3 million, 908911, to implement, to implement, among others, the following key programs in this financial year. Convene a meeting of partner states experts to review and upgrade the views of the Council of Ministers on the proposed mode of the ESC Political Confederation. Meeting constitutional experts to draft ESC Political Confederation Constitution. Meeting of the constitution experts to, de to develop the stakeholders' constitution report. Meeting of the constitution experts to develop a preliminary report and proposed model ESC Political Confederation Summit. Meetings of constitution experts to draft ESC Political Confederation Constitution. Election observation mission planning and, and deployed in the United Republic of Tanzania. Uh, election observation missions, uh, then uh, eight to attend council summit legal and judicial meetings, nine annual meetings of anti corruption agencies, 10 convene annual meetings of EMBS to review the previous decisions of council in the sector, 10 support sensitization program by ESC youth ambassadors in each partner states at the national level, promote ESC integration among the university community. 12. Convene the annual meeting of the ESC Forum of National Human Rights Commission to review the implementation of previous decisions, decisions in the sector. Office of Director General Customs and Trade. According to the budget estimates, this office was located 696,050 to implement and achieve, among others, the following by the end of this financial year 2020-2021. Pre budget meeting with partner states to consider budget proposals for inclusion in national budget, reading and publishing customs and traditional trade instruments, convene post-budget meetings to assess implementation of national budget after review of regional customs instruments, present customs and trade instruments summit council financial and administration meetings, to convene meetings of the sector council ministers to adopt and approve customs and trade instruments. Trade, eliminate NTBs at the regional level through the ESC regional monitoring committee, convene the sector committee on trade to deliberate on trade-related matters, Remit NTBs at the national level through national monetary, organize ESC preparatory meetings and participate in TFTA uh, meetings to facilitate partner states in their negotiations. Convene meetings to implement ESC US cooperation agreement, including commercial dialogue, and conduct meetings on the tripartite and continental free trade area. East African Legislative Assembly. According to the budget estimates, the assembly was located. US dollars 16 million 755725 to implement, among others, the following key programs in this financial year. To convene the biannual meetings of ESC speakers by June 2021. To organize and participate in the annual interparliamentary meeting. To attend ESC summit meetings. To attend UN parliamentary hearings by June 2021. To attend the conference of the African Caribbean, Caribbean Pacific, and European Union Joint Parliamentary Assembly by June 2021. To attend by annual ordinary sessions of Pan African parliaments by June 2021. To attend invitation meetings of national parliament, facilitate the audit commission to attend meetings of the accounts committee to examine accounts and other related meetings, to consider bills and other legislative matters focusing on the four pillars of integration, to consider and review other legislative matters from AYALA committees, facilitate capacity building for new elected commissioners and committee chairpersons in June 2021, to attend plenary sessions, committee meetings by June 2021, to undertake annual joint planning mid review and end of year review meetings. To transmit bills and assent copies, copies of statu statutes, partner states, to organize the annual ESC interparliamentary meeting and undertake post audit oversight activities. That is implementation of recommendation. East African Court of Justice. According to budget estimates, the ESCJ was allocated $3,970,406 to 
for this financial year to implement, among others, the following programs or activities. One, judge, president, and registrar to represent ESCJ in 12 fora and statutory meetings extended to ESCJ to present a paper on topical issue in East African Magistrates and Judges Association Conference, to conduct training for judges on arbitration and other legal issues, to attend statutory meetings, that is audit and risk Ayala Council and Summit, to procure assets uh, for ESCJ, to hold the court plenary twice a year for policy decisions and planning, to convene the ESCJ meeting of rules or procedure, committed to review the rules of, of the court, and facilitate the ESC staff setup and provide technical support to the sub-registry, like Victoria Benson Commission. The commission requests the approval of US dollars 8,380,057 for this financial year to implement, among others, the following programs and activities. Represent LVBC in administrative and management-related fora, participate in the summit heads of state meetings, develop the strategic plan for 2021-25, to participate in the planning and budgeting of 2021-22 meeting, to review and develop new M&E tools to monitor and evaluate LVBC projects and programs, participate in EAMS meetings to review and update the LVBC SECOM -E and council directives and decisions. To convene a regional workshop to review and validate the draft LVBC report for 2019-20, facilitate ESC study meetings uh, and present LVBC progress report on projects and programs for policy guidance, to facilitate and follow up on LVBC bills, that is the Water Resource Management Bill 2018, LVBC Bill 2019, tier enactment, and to develop LVBC risk management framework, policy and strategy. In the University Council of East Africa, the institution requests the approval of US dollars 10 million 977 for this financial year to implement, among others, the following key programs. Provide M M S M M S C scholarships to female students in participating, students in participating, conduct internal audit related support missions, attend one sector council of ministers meeting on education with one executive and two staff for five days, attend two quarterly meetings of heads of organs and institutions, organize and hold two quarterly assurance committee meetings involving total participants, two executives and five staff, to attend two meetings of the sector council on legal and judicial affairs to pursue the proposed amendments to the protocol on the establishment of IUSEA and IUSEA Act 209, to attend three meetings of the subcommittee on approximation of national laws are aligned, to facilitate the summit directive declaring the ESC a common higher education area, and organize one meeting with the China Academy of Science in China for one executive for three days, the Victoria Fisheries Organization. The organization requests the approval of $3 million, to implement, among others, the following key priority areas this financial year. Participation in the meeting of heads of organs and institutions, participation in the ESC Council of Ministers sessions, to hold L of Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization Sector Council of Ministers meeting, preparation and attendance of the Yala Committee on Accounts as and when deliberating on the audit financial statements, facilitate LVFO Silver Jubilee celebrations, facilitate in-house development of systems database to develop aquaculture database procure and navigate premium software, to develop data and information management sharing policy, procure and deploy network switches, rehabilitation of library room, and participate in partner states regional international workshops, stroke book exhibitions. East African Science and Technology Commission, ESTECO. The commission requests approval of $1 million, uh, 536751 for this financial year to implement, among others, the following programs and activities. Hold meetings of technical committees for ESTECO board, to attend ESC statutory meetings, attend the Yala Accounts Committee, Yala General Purpose Committee, ESC Audit and Risk Committee, and ESC Accounts and Auditors Meetings, conduct the national and regional stakeholders consultation on the ESC Regional Strategy for, indigen for Indigenous Knowledge and Technology, conduct national and, conduct national and regional consultation to develop the ESC Regional Innovation Strategy, carry out mid-term review of a STECO strategic plan, carry out trainings for specific paper writing, Design, develop, and implement the ESC Regional Science and Technology Reference Re Re Repository, and develop and maintain the ESC online platform for young innovators, information sharing on IP issues and linkages with private sectors and investors. The East African Exoil Commission. The Commission requires approval of $1 million, fund the implementation of the following programs in this financial year. Attend meetings of council, attend summit meetings, facilitate exchange of stakeholders among and between institutions that develop 
and use Kiswahili in ESC partner states. Convene regional and national test scholars meetings to design Kiswahili training manuals for ESC partner states. Develop ESC East African Kiswahili Commission Bill. Translate key ESC documents on the four pillars of integration from English to Swahili. Pay staff salaries and allowances. Attend sector committees of sector council of ministers responsible for ESC affairs and planning. To attend the sector council of ministers responsible for science and technology, education, health, sports, and culture. Attend one meeting of Ayala Accounts Committee on audit and financial statements. And attend one meeting of Ayala General Purpose Committee on budgeting. East African Health Research Commission requests $1 million, for the following program this financial year. To develop the East African Health Research Commission Strategic Plan 2021-26, implement telemedicine linkage, linking ESC centers of excellence with other health and academic facilities across the region to organize a biannual workshop to refine the health data to be collected, collected on the ESC web portal for health information, publish at least three East African Health Research uh, journals annually, publish at least two issues of East African Science Journal annually, and convene a regional workshop of East African journalists, journals auditors in chiefs to discuss the in index, indexation of the scientific materials, the e, EA web portal. East African Competition Authority. The authority requests the approval of US dollars one million one two eight two. 240 for the following program this financial year. To develop a records management system to ensure efficiency in case management, develop mergers and acquisitions, guidelines, and relevant forms, to conduct an assessment of subsidies implemented in ESC region and develop subsidiary registers and guidelines, to convene, to investigate, and analyze cross border cases on mergers and acquisitions, notification restraints by enterprises, to convene a partner states experts meeting to consider and develop prioritization framework for competition enforcement and conduct of market studies to conduct national stakeholders awareness and sensation on their obligations under ESC Competition Act 206 and convene ESCA commissioners meeting, provide policy guidance and adjudicate cases. Specific observations and recommendations. Office of the Secretary General, review of the treaty. At the 21st meeting of the Sectoral Council on Legal and Judicial Affairs, The Attorney General observed the need to review the treaty to take into account the circumstances and providing, and providing needs of the community. The Attorney General play a critical role in facilitating the ESC integration by providing legal direction and guidance on all matters related to the community. The Attorney General at the recent, recently concluded retreat resolved to be more involved and give priority to matters relating to the community. In particular, the Attorney General pointed out the need to review the treaty urgently to ensure that it facilitates the ESC integration agenda. Yet the current budget line cannot be used to convene a special session of the Attorney General to review the treaty or analyze and fast track the legal instruments that are pending before the heads of state for ratification. B, pending bills. The committee was informed that the following bills are currently pending before the Sectoral Council on Legal and Judicial Affairs. The draft ES, the draft East African Surveillance Compliance and Information Enforcement Commission bill arising out and giving effect the protocol establishing the ESC Monetary Union. B, the draft bill for the establishment of the East African uh, Financial Services Commission arising out and giving effect the protocol establishing the ESC Monetary Union. C, the draft ESC seed and plant varieties bill, the draft standards, standardization, accreditation, and conformity assessment bill 2017, the draft metrology bill arising out of the current SQMT act that the council directed should be split into standalone laws. Proposed amendment to the section 11122 of the ESC Customs Management Act. The bills were referred to the Sector Council on Legal and Judicial Affairs without additional funding by the 38th meeting of the Council. The bills referred to the Sector Council on Legal and Judicial Affairs are critical to the work of the Assembly and to advancing the East African integration agenda, especially the ones relating to the month that are time bound. To meet the state obligations of the Office of the Council to the community, the Office requires a total sum of 84,000. 280. However, a paltry, a paltry 21,250 has been allocated for this work. The committee recommends that a total sum of 60,030 be reallocated from activity code, that one, to activity code, that one, and uh, this other activity code provide additional funds to the Office of the CTC in this financial year 2020 2021. And this is meant through the following 
facilitate the office of to process the six pending bills and present them before the Sector Council on Legal and Judicial Affairs for introduction in the Assembly at the earliest opportunity. B, to convene and facilitate the legislative drafts persons and Sector Council on the Legal and Judicial Affairs, provide legal input into the bills pending before the Sector Council. Areas of rationalization. The committee noted that the following programs activities have either been overtaken by events or cannot be implemented due to preventing COVID-19 pandemic. For example, due to the travel restriction, the SCG will not attend some of the UN meetings, neither will he attend AR sessions outside Arusha because most of the sittings will be held virtually. Therefore, the funds are marked for such activities should be reallocated and you should refer to re the rationalization schedule. It is just behind. 6.2, Office of the Deputy Secretary General of Finance and Administration, recruitment of ESC staff. During the month of July 2020, a total of 41 vacant positions in the various organs and institutions of ESC were advertised, and the deadline for submission of the application was 21st August 2020. Shortly after the advert came out, some concerned ESC citizens petitioned the Council of Ministers about the irregularities in the recruitment of ESC staff. Available correspondence show that since then, there has been a standoff between the Secretary General and the Council of Ministers over the recruitment exercise. In his letter to the Secretary General, dated 12 August 2020, which is Annex 1, the Chairperson of Council of Ministers reminded the Secretary General that it was the mandate of the ESC Ad Hoc Service Commission to conduct the recruitment of staff. The Chair Council further advised that, they, that any objection to the Council Directive on this matter should be addressed through the same channels that established the Ad Hoc Service Commission. In another letter to the Secretary General, in another letter addressed to the Secretary General dated 24th August 2020, which is Annex 2, the Chairperson of Council of Ministers made reference to the Secretary General's letter dated 14th August 2020, which confirms that the Secretary General and his team are the Secretary to a hero bench on going ahead with the recruitment exercise. The Chair Council expressed displeasure about the Secretary's intention to undermine the authority of the Council. In the same letter, the Chair Council reminded the Secretary General that the Council Directive mandating the Ad Hoc Service Commission to undertake ESC staff recruitment was still in force and it stays and it stays the ESC staff rules and regulations until a new and formal council decision rescinding the initial directive is made. During the committee interaction with the Council of Ministers on 28 September 2020, it was evident that the council was divided on who should conduct the recruitment of staff. However, the committee further confirmed that the council took a decision to create the Ad Hoc Service Commission in 2013 against the backdrop of corruption, bribery and nepotism during the recruitment exercise of ESC staff by then. The committee could not get any evidence from the Secretary General to confirm that, confirm that the Ad Hoc Service Commission was disbanded by Council. According to Article 14 of the Treaty, the Council of Ministers is the policy organ of the community and can give directions to partner states and all other organs and institutions of the community other than the summit, Ayala, and the East African Court of Justice. Therefore, the Secretary General is bound by the Council decision that established the Ad Hoc Service Commission until when such a decision is rescinded. It is the considered view of the committee that the attempt by Secretary General and his team at Secretariat to go ahead with the recruitment of ESC staff, even after they were advertised, other, advised otherwise by the Chair Council, raises serious concerns about their motives. The committee recommends that, one, the recruitment of ESC staff be put on hold until when the Council harmonizes its position on who should conduct this exercise. Two, all the budget lines relating to the Ad Hoc Service Commission and the staff recruitment be reallocated. Three, once the council harmonizes its position on the recruitment of staff, a supplementary budget shall be presented to the assembly for approval. B, video conferencing infrastructure. Following the outbreak of this, during, following the outbreak and spread of the COVID-19 pandemic and the resultant travel restrictions, there has been high demand for and usage of the video conferencing, whereas the ICT department proposed the upgrade of the system to allow sustainable usage of multiple tools this request was organized by council. It is evident there is need to install ICT uh, security systems to mitigate the cyber security issues that are common with all online services. As you have been seeing here, we have been cut on and off for almost two hours. The committee recommends that a total sum of 88,700 US dollars be reallocated as indicated in the rationalization allocation schedule of this report to upgrade the video conferencing facility and cater for the implementation of the security ICT systems and network security services in the financial year 2020-2021. Resource mobilization. During the consideration of the ESC budget for the financial year 
The assembly raised the concerns about the resource mobilization initiatives in ESC. It was noted that all the memoranda of understanding entered in between ESC and government partners were devoid of the oversight role of the assembly. While the committee appreciates the need for diversification of the resource base to avoid reliance on traditional donors and recognize the need to support the assembly to engage various development partners for potential support, only $25,200 has been earmarked for resource mobilization in this financial year. The committee recommends that the total sum of 60170 be reallocated from activity called this to this one uh, to provide additional funds for the implementation of resource mobilization activities in the financial year 2020-2021. With the focus, I want to repeat, with the focus on Ayala and other institutions with limited or no donor funding, meaning we are providing money for, to ensure that also the assembly and other organizations are part and parcel of the donor basket. Area, areas for rationalization. The, the committee noted that given the current financial situation of the community, uh, some of the program's activities were not very urgent in this financial year, where others cannot be implemented due to the legal challenges. Therefore, the funds for these activities should be reallocated as indicated in the studies of this report. Officer Deputy Secretary General Products and Show Sectors. It was noted that besides this being underfunded, this docket is the least funded under the Secretariat. Most of these programs have, be, have, ha, have for many years depended on funding from growth partners. According to the budget estimates of the current financial year 2020-2021, partner states contribution to the budget of the Office of the Deputy Secretary General, Productive and Show Sectors amounts only 3.8%. In particular, the gender department is chronically underfunded, yet it covers a wider spectrum of our population, which includes the youth, the women, persons with disabilities, and children. The committee recommends that some reallocation be made, as indicated in the schedule to this report, provide some resources for the development of gender. East African Court of Justice, extra days for the court sessions. Where the committee acknowledges that the initial work, workload of ESCJ did not require all the judges to reside permanently at the seat of the court, the situation has since changed. Over the years, case backlog has built up, and this has led to delay in the dispensation of justice. Court workload is bound to increase with the implementation of various protocols of the community. Cases go through several stages, that is pre-trial con pre conference hearing and rendering of decision in their lifespan at the court. Therefore, one case may be handled in more than six sessions of the court. The committee was informed that the first instance division had 50 cases pending before it, and at the end of the financial year 2017-18, which has now gone up to 66 at the end of 2019 financial year, it has become impossible to commence hearing a case within one year of its filing, which has led to concerns by litigants over the period taken in determining their cases. And they said that they say justice delayed is justice denied. A request of US dollars 228,000 was put to the council for an increase in the number of working days for the judges from 22 to 32 working days, which is additional 10 days. At, at its sitting of the 8th meeting of the council held on 10th May 2019, council approved the additional 10 days, but added that the court reallocates funds from within the 2019-2020 financial budget which was not possible. The committee recommends that US dollars 228,000 be reallocated, be allocated to the ESCJ for the extra 10 days for court sessions as follows. One, US dollars 146,100 be reallocated from activity court this to that, and US dollars at 1,900 be drawn from the general reserve fund. Lord of ICT in the special of justice. The ESCJ strategic plan provides for the development of ICT to make ESCJ a world-class court dispensing quality justice to the community. The committee appreciates the role ICT plays in dispensation of justice during the COVID pandemic. With the support of the development partners, the ESCJ embarked on preparation of the ESC ICT strategy that is now in its final stages. However, the development partners did not provide for validation workshop for the ICT strategy. Secondly, the amended rules of procedure of the court, 2019, specifically provide deployment of ICT for the court processes, including video conferencing and online services, court documents, among others. The case management system has been upgraded, and now all the processes can be done online. Once operationalized, the ICT strategy will eliminate the use of paper and make ESCJ a paperless court. This will greatly reduce on the cost of stationary and litigation, as the practicing lawyers will almost completely cut down on the travels to Arusha. It will further reduce the trips from partners to Arusha, as the court shall have moved where the litigants are, as opposed to the litigants moving where the court is located. The committee 
commends the ESCJ for the above initiative and urges other organs and institutions of the community to emulate the court. The East African Legislative Assembly, Eyala. Consideration and approval of the East African Budget Estimates Financial Year 2020-2021. The committee noted that the Council of Ministers did not earmark funds facilitated the Assembly during the consideration and approval of the vote on account and ESC budget estimates for financial 2020-2021. Yet it was further, it, yet it was their fault not to submit the budget to the Assembly by 30th April as per the requirements of Section 4.1 of the Budget Act. Since the community could not operate without the budget, during the approval vote on account, the Assembly allocated the total sum of US dollars 1 million 0036360 to Ayala to specifically fund all activities related to the consideration of the ESC budget estimates for this financial year. The House further resolved that during the consideration of the budget, appropriate rationalization would be done across the entire ESC budget to secure funds for this activity. The committee therefore recommends that the sum of 1 million 003360 be secured from the General Reserve Fund, specifically fund Ayala during the consideration of the vote on account and ESC budget estimates for this financial year. Outstanding areas. A bit of outstanding obligations arising out of the implementation of Ayala calendar of activities during the period between the month of March to June 2020 stands at US dollars 2,529055. According to legislation 29.2 of the ESC financial rules and regulations, if this obligation is not settled by 30th, September 2020, which is today, the members and staff of the Assembly will forfeit these areas. However, Resolution 29.2 of the ESC Financial Rules and Regulations provides that such outstanding obligations, which constitute a liability to the ESC, can be budgeted for in a subsequent financial year. Whereas the Assembly cleared part of the areas using the remittances from the Republic of Uganda for the financial 2020-21, the community is under obligation provide for these areas in the budget for this financial year. The committee recommends, therefore, that the total sum of US dollars, 2,529,055, be secured from the General Reserve Fund for the settlement of areas of members and staff of the Assembly. C, reduction in the number of plenary sessions. According to the budget estimates, the Council of Ministers took a lateral decision to reduce the number of Ayala plenary sessions from six to four and the number of plenary days from each session from 21 to 14 days. Besides being, radical, besides being a radical decision, it is the considered view of the committee that is an attempt to undermine and make the assembly ineffective. Besides, according to Article 14.3c of the treaty, in the exercise of its function, the council cannot give directions to, among others, the assembly. Article 49.2g of the treaty gives the assembly the mandate to make its own rules or procedure for the effective discharge of its mandate. According to Rule 10.6 of the Rules of Procedure of the Assembly, the House shall sit for not less than 80 days for the plenary and not less than 40 days for committee sittings. All right, members, if you look at what the Council had approved, it is even less than 40 days, which is against our Rules of Procedure. The committee recommends that six plenary sessions of the Assembly be reinstated with each session running for a duration of 21 days to an additional total sum of $2 million, $329,055, is secured from the annual contributions of partner states to fund the Ayala plenary session. In the exercise of its mandate, the Council should be mindful of its limitations in giving directions to the Assembly in view of Article 143C and other provisions of the Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community. Facilitation of Members with Disabilities Since the inauguration of the Fourth Assembly in December 2017, the Assembly had among its members membership two members with physical disabilities Honorable Matthias Kasamba and Honorable Alex Bahat from the Republics of Uganda and Rwanda, respectively. In 2019, both Honorable Rollins uh, Aburi and Honorable Dr. Oburu, Oburu Odinga got AIDS after sustaining near fatal accidents. The Yala Commission approved the AIDS to provide assistance to the said members for the effective discharge of their duties. However, their AIDS are not on the payroll of the ESC. In 2008, the Council of Ministers approved the appointment of an aid to Honorable Dr. Ndahiro James a member of the Assembly with a Disability from the Republic of Rwanda. The aid was accordingly given a monthly pay of US dollars, 1,888. The Council further directed the Secretariat to formulate a comprehensive policy for persons with disabilities working with the 12 years down the road. No policy has been put in place. The committee recommends that total budget of 91,104 be drawn from the General Reserve Fund, together for the emoluments of the aids of to Honorable Matthias Kasamba, Honorable Alex Bahati, Honorable Oburu Odinga, and Honorable Rollins Aburi Mpuri General during the financial year 2020 2021. 
Each aid shall be paid US dollars, 1,898 per month, which is the exact amount of money that was paid to the aid of Honorable James Sindahiro in the second and third assembly. East African Science and Technology Commission. The protocol for the establishment of a stake provides for the establishment and, cons and constitution of the governing board of more than 50 members. Besides posing a big challenge during decision making, such a bloated board is a big liability to the community, given the enormous financial expenses stressed with these operations. Whereas the Assembly has several added the Council of Ministers to expedite the amendment of the protocol provided for the board, no amendment has been effected yet. The committee recommends that the Council of Ministers amend the protocol for the establishment of the STECO by June 2021, provided for, among others, a lean board. General observation and recommendation. The Council of Ministers has continuously failed to comply with timelines for presentation of the budget to the Assembly, as per the requirements of Section 41 of the ESC Budget Act 208. The extreme delay in the presentation of the budget for this financial year has negatively impacted the functioning of the community. The committee recommends that the Council of Ministers adheres to the timelines for the presentation of the budget to the Assembly. The delayed, number two, the delayed and non-repeatance of funds by some of the partner states negatively impacted the implementation of the planned programs and activities by ESC organ institutions. Despite the earlier recommendation of the Assembly to the Council of Ministers to initiate sanctions against the Republic of South Sudan and the Republic of Rwanda for failure to honor their financial obligations to the community on time, no action has been taken up to date. The indifference of the Council on this matter clearly undermines the integration efforts. Four, the committee noted there was a 6% reduction in the partner state's contribution towards the ESC budget for this financial year. In financial year 2019-2020, the total contribution from partner states amounted to US dollars for the nine, $49,791,446, with each partner state contributing $8 million, $298,574, while in financial year 2020-2021, total contribution is expected to be US dollars. For the six million eight nine six three twenty, with each partner state contributing US dollars seven million eight one six zero five three. Therefore, the total contribution for partner states towards the ESC budget is expected to be reduced by two million dollars eight nine five one twenty four. It was noted that the Secretary proposed to the Council of Ministers to increase the contribution of each partner state towards this budget to, from US dollars eight point two nine eight five seven four to US dollars eight nine five nine eight five, representing an eight percent increase. I commend, we commend the Secretariat for that. To make the matters worse, instead of adopting the proposal made by Secretariat to increase the budget to $8.9 million, the Council took a decision to reduce the contribution of each partner state, as indicated in three above. It is ironical that at a time when the community is growing geographically and institutionally, the Council opted to take a decision to reduce the financial contributions Procedure, of partner Madam states Speaker. toward the ESC budget without any justification. The committee questions the rationale for the continued procedure, creation procedure, of more Madam IES Speaker. institutions by the council without corresponding increase in the partner state's funding to the community. The committee recommends that one, Madam, the, Madam Speaker, procedure. The, con the contribution of each partner state to the ESC budget in financial 2020 2021. Yes, Honorable Member. I can hear Honorable Makame. Please proceed with your procedure. Madam Speaker. Yes. Madam Speaker, earlier some, uh, my colleague wanted to invoke uh, Rule 30 to uh, uh, to suspend the, the rules of the House using uh, 30D so that we extend time. I see we are approaching 5 o'clock, and I will yeah. be in order if we give the chairperson to finish presenting the report so that we conclude the, the other procedures of, uh, and dispense yeah. of the budget. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Makambe, can you please proceed and, and uh, invoke the necessary rules in our rules of procedure so that we can proceed with the with the plenary sitting up? I'm uh, invoking the Rule 30D until the time we finish. Yes, Madam Speaker. It's under the rules of virtual sitting. The rules of virtual sitting, please. Move a motion. Rule 5.1. Move the motion can a member move a motion formally, please? To suspend the rule five. Okay, I can move the motion. Yeah, let a member I move the motion. motion. Can I give uh, Honorable Gideon to move the motion formally? Okay, right, Honorable Speaker, I I stand to move the motion without notice under Rule 30D of the Rules of Procedure of the Assembly to extend time under Rule 5.1 
of the rules of procedure for virtual, sit for virtual meetings and sittings of the assembly to extend time from provided uh, from 5 p.m. until the business on the order paper is disposed. I beg to move. Seconders, please. Yes, I see Honorable Wanjiku. I see Honorable Maria Musi. And all those who have lifted their hands. Yeah. I put a question. Now, I put the question that the time for presentation and debate of this report be extended beyond uh, the five o'clock time that we have within our rules for virtual sittings uh, and as uh, presented by motion by Honorable Gilbert. Gideon, rather, please. Those in favor say aye to the contrary, no? Aye. 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 Those against? Nay. Nay. No, the eyes have it. So, Chair, can you please proceed with the presentation of your report? The committee recommends one, the assembly instates the contribution of each partner state to the ESC budget in financial 2020 2021. The total sum of US dollars, 8 million 298.574, as to when the financial year 2019 2020. This will enable the community to raise an additional. U.S. dollars 2.895124 to fund some of the unfunded priorities. Two, the council urges the partner states to initiate supplementary budgets to provide for additional funding for the ESC budget amounting to U.S. dollars 2,895124. Three, the council expedites the finalization of the sustainable financing mechanism of the community. Number four, the council puts on hold the creation of more ESC institutions and the sustainable financing mechanism put in place. Seven. A review of the budget estimates further revealed that whereas the rest of the ESC organized institution had a 6% reduction in their budgets by 6% or 0%. In fact, even to add, some even had an increment by 74%. The committee, uh, the budget of the assembly was significantly and draconian reduced by 12%. The committee considers this as a drastic and draconian decision that is aimed at crippling the operations of the assembly and further making it irrelevant to the people of East Africa. The committee was baffled to learn that the Council of Ministers never bothered to inform the leadership of the Assembly as to why such a decision was made. The committee reiterates, reiterates its recommendation that the six plenary sessions of the Assembly be reinstated with the corresponding budget. Eight, during the extraordinary meeting of Council of Ministers held on 4th August 2020, the Council expressed displeasure over the accumulated bill of Ayala, which arose from, the council, which are from activities carried out between the months of March 20 to June 2020. As a result, the Council directed the Assembly not to undertake any activities before securing the requisite funds. According to Article 14.3 of the Treaty, in the exercise of this function, the Council cannot give directions to, among others, the, the Assembly. The Committee considers this an attempt by some technocrats as the Secretariat to undermine the Assembly. The Council directive was made in bad faith. Interestingly, it is the same Secretariat and Council that mounted the pressure on this Assembly to convene and pass a vote on account and the budget before securing the necessary funds. The Assembly would like to reaffirm that it will endeavor to implement its planned activities as per the approved budget of the community and shall never abide by the above council directive. Nine, the committee noted that arising from reference appeal number two of 2017, reference number 14 of 2014, the former speaker of Ayala Honor Margaret Nantongo Ziwa according, was accordingly awarded her cost. According to the certificate of taxation, of course, issued by Registrar of ESCJ on the 19th of June 2020, the cost payable to write Honor Margaret Ziwa Amounting to US dollars three hundred and fifty eight thousand eight eight thirty seven six point six six. Uh, the committee was further informed by the Secretary General that the committee also owes uh, the committee also owes Red Honorable Margaret Ziwa retirement benefits amounting to sixty four thousand four fifty, which is yet to be verified by the office of the clerk. And further to this, we were informed by the Secretary General that actually uh, the money should be paid by Yala. The committee recommends that. A total sum of US dollars, 358,873.66, that the committee owes to Honorable Margaret Nadongo Ziwa, a raising of reference appeal number two of 2017, reference number 14 of 2014, be drawn from the general reserve and be paid to her in the financial 2020-2021. The office of the clerk verifies the retirement benefits that the community owes to Honorable Margaret Ziwa, the former speaker, and a supplementary budget request be initiated to that effect. 
Number 10, arising from the recommendations here in, in addition to funds identified by the council, the ESC budget. <laughs> Honorable Kim, can you please mute your microphone? Honorable Kim, please. Can you mute your microphone? Arising from the recommendations here in, in addition to funds identified by the council, the ESC budget for the financial year 2020-2021 will attract additional funding from the General Reserve Fund amounting to $4 million, 135 to cater for areas consideration of the 2021 budget, costs arising from suite of Honorable Margaret Zewa, upgrade of VC, additional days for court sessions, and emoluments for aids, persons with disabilities. And an additional U.S. dollars, 2,895,124, being contributions from partner states after reinstating the contributions of each partner state, U.S. dollars, 8,298,57, as to in the financial year 2019-2020. Conclusion. The committee hereby recommends that the Assembly consider and approve the ESC estimates revenue and expenditures amounting to U.S. dollars 104,063,020 for the financial year 2020-2021 as follows. Organ or institution vote 001, ESC Secretariat for the $8 million, 418,301. Vote 002, the committee recommends the Assembly to approve an amount of money, amount uh, uh, amount of money up to $23 million, 067137, facilitate the activities of the East African Legislative Assembly. Uh, East African Court of Justice, the committee recommends to Assembly to approve an amount of $4 million, 198404, to facilitate the activities of the East African Court of Justice. Lake Victoria Benson Commission, the committee recommends the Assembly to approve an amount of $8 million, 380057, to facilitate activities of the Victoria Benson Commission. The East African Science and Technology Commission, ESTECO, the committee recommends the Assembly to approve an amount of $1 million, 536751, to facilitate the activities of the East African Science and Technology Commission for this financial year. The East African Society Commission, the committee recommends the Assembly to approve an amount of $1 million, 399318, to uh, facilitate the East African Sahel Commission to undertake its activities and programs. East African Health Research Commission, the committee recommends the Assembly to approve $1 million, 879600, to facilitate the activities and programs of the East African Health Research Commission in this financial year. East African Competition Authority, the committee recommends the Assembly to approve $1 million, 128240, to facilitate activities of the East African Competition Authority for this financial year. In the University Council of East Africa, the committee recommends the Assembly to approve an amount of $10 million, 977-276, to facilitate activities and programs of the University Council of East Africa for this financial year. The Victoria Fisheries Organization, the committee recommends the Assembly to approve an amount of $3 million, 077-934, to facilitate activities of the Victoria Fisheries Organization for this financial year. Total of the money that the committee recommends the Assembly to approve for this financial year of all organs and institutions is one million one hundred and four million dollars zero six three zero two zero. A schedule for rationalization, reallocation of US dollars five hundred eighteen zero five zero that was reallocated, that was recorded and rationalized. We I, I hope you all have it. We have uh, Office of the Secretary General that active that uh, called participate in the participate in the three ALA plenary sessions. Secretary General with the protocol officer and one Secretary General outside Arusha. That is seven thousand five hundred US dollars. Justification: Plenary sessions will be held in Arusha, and this will not require any travels by Secretary General and Protocol Officer. This money was reallocated uh, uh, ESCJ activity court at hold court sessions. At the East African Court of Justice, Office of the Deputy Secretary General of Finance and Administration, activity court. That one facilitated the staff of HR department to attend professional forum. That is twenty-three thousand two hundred US dollars. Justification for allocation, not very urgent priority compared to clearing case backlog. Resource, this activity, this money was reallocated to resource mobilization uh, to conduct donor missions to existing and potential donor stroke development partners. Uh, then the other one is to organize annual retreat for staff and get together and team building. 56, 600 US dollars. Justification, convening a retreat for all ESC staff under COVID-19 is not feasible. ESC, the money reallocated the courts of justice hold court sessions. 
Uh, the other one is to procure two vehicles for the two deputy secretary generals, 100,000 US dollars. This money was reallocated with the justification that the vehicles being used currently are in good shape. Besides, buying luxury vehicles is not a very urgent priority during this time of, of, of financial distress. This money was reallocated to the office of the CTC of 63,030 uh, and to resource mobilization. This uh, resource mobilization. 36,970, and uh, to conduct donor missions to existing and potential donors and development partners. Induction of programs for new staff, $1,200. ICT, this money was also reallocated to upgrade the VC and implement the ICT security uh, system. Uh, the other one is uh, mm, just, just one second. Uh huh. To organize quarterly meetings of the ad hoc service commission, $58,000. This money was relocated because the legal status of the ad hoc service commission is being contested in court. Besides, the council is still very divided on this matter. This, matter, this money was relocated to the Eastern Court of Justice, facilitated them to hold court sessions. To coordinate ESC staff welfare services for the promotion of health and safety and wellness, wellness in workplace, like gym running around, for the 4,000 US dollars, this money was reallocated uh, because the expenditure is a non-essential item. Uh, it involves like tea, gifts, and all of that. It was reallocated to ICT to upgrade the VC and implement IC security, IC systems and network security services. To develop and implement the and implement ESC change management strategy for the smooth implementation of institutional review, 25,500 US dollars. This is not a priority since it has been funded for more than two years and there is no report that has come through. This money has been reallocated to the gender department, which had been given zero money to convene a meeting of stakeholders to develop and consider draft policy framework on social protection. To value the assets of ESC Secretariat, ESCG and Ayala, and procure furniture for Secretariat. For the 7,500, it was rationalized to 27,000 US dollars, the 20,000 to be reallocated. The, the reason is purchase of furniture cannot be a priority during the time of financial distress. And in any case, the financial year is on the move. Uh, this money was also given to gender, $20,000, to convene a meeting of stakeholders to develop and consider draft policy framework on social protection. To maintain office equipment and other facilities at ESC for the 3500 no explanation was given to the committee as the Secretariat and their team did not come to attend to defend this budget. This budget was reallocated to ICT to upgrade the VC, this one, implement ICT security to ICT systems and network security services. East African Legislative Assembly to organize annual interparliamentary meetings. Once the 9,300 US dollars, this was duplication because there was already an amount of 382,000 for the interparliamentary games. This particular item is already budgeted for in the office of the speaker. A year, uh, it was reallocated to, re a year to replace the activity description with the following. To enhance linkages with the ESC national parliaments and to facilitate committee chairpersons and the other commission. Madam Speaker, I beg to submit. Uh, honorable members, first of all, I want to thank the Chair Committee on General Purpose and uh, his members for the precise report and very detailed, of course, in terms of uh, activities, expected outcomes, and uh, proposed uh, interventions for the new financial year. I think we are now all very clear and understand where we are going with regard to this year's financial budget. Now, I, I want to propose that this House constitutes itself into a, a committee of ways and means to consider and approve the financial statement for the financial year 2020-2021, and B, a committee of supply to consider and approve the estimates of expenditure for the financial year 2020-2021. Debate is open. Now, honorable members, 
I want to seek your guidance on this one because for as far as I'm concerned, I know we have just received this report today and uh, it has just been presented to us. And being a long report of about 42 pages, we need to have a meaningful debate because we are dealing with the budget of a whole financial year. So um, I stand to be guided by you. But my proposal is that for today we end here and allow members to proceed and read this and internalize this report overnight and compare it with the, the documents that we have so that tomorrow when we we start debate, I propose we start early around 10, we will all be able to present meaningful debates uh, having looked at data and of course internalize the report. So that's my proposal, honorable members. Procedure, yeah. ma Madam Speaker, procedure. Yes, Honorable Makame. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Yes, Honorable Makame, please proceed. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, as, the, as the chair was, uh, was, uh, was, was presenting the report, he hinted that uh, the, the Budget Act of the East African Community bind us that uh, we have to dispense this business today. And for that particular reason, that is why we, we, we sought your indulgence and the indulgence of the House to extend time so that we, ex uh, we execute this business today, uh, because it, today is the 30th day of September. Unless otherwise uh, you, you want to use the powers of the speaker to uh, go beyond 30th of September, which will also be against the financial rules, uh, sorry, the Budget Act of the East African community. Uh, you can guide us on that one, Madam Speaker. Honorable member, procedure, procedure, Madam, I don't Madam, know whether Madam you have Chair. the relevant section that you're quoting, but I'm, as far as I'm concerned, actually the Budget Act even allows us to extend this period. To extend, assuming we were, were cut off by the debts. In fact, we are late. We are late. The Budget Act has been overrun by events. So now what I want to request, and I still want to request you, that you need Procedure. to have a meaningful debate on Procedure. this report. Procedure. It has just been presented to you. So and overnight procedure procedure. I'm still I'm still communicating on what uh, honorable uh, procedure. Or what honorable Makami so please procedure. Wait and I communicate, then I allow your procedural matters. So that is still what I'm requesting from you. As far as I'm concerned, I know the budget act has been overtaken by so many events. And uh, we only go by the guidance that we can go by now and also in accordance with this matter the way we have been conducting business as a house with regard to the budget so it has been presented to us and my proposal especially because we still have we are still operating under lockdown in some countries there is curfew here in my country and i don't know what goes on in the other so we cannot go beyond a certain time in uh, handling these matters that's why I was requesting for indulgence that we go and read the report. We are in the new normal now, and we cannot be very strict to the letter of the law. So that is my request to you, honorable members. Procedural matters Procedure. can now come. Yes, Adam, honorable Aden. Honorable Aden. Um, honorable Aden. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, on the onset, uh, allow me to congratulate you for uh, the noble office. I was not there in the morning when you assumed office, but I came in later when there was network problem. Madam Chair, um, if, if, if there is any matter that requires urgency, is the matter before us today. Um, the community beyond today does not have the comfort of running any further. They run out of all options. Because we gave them, we gave them a vote on account uh, to run up to the end of uh, today, and we have the, today. So tomorrow, literally, we are facing a situation, the difficult situation of the 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 the, the, the shutdown. Madam Chair, we've got one and a half hours to go uh, for for this. In my view, I, I have personally gone had an opportunity to read through this report, and if, in fact. 
I had the opportunity from, and I must commend the clerks very much. As early as about four o'clock in the morning, I, I got I got a copy of 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 of, of this report myself. So so uh, we we've gone through this. We concur with the committee. I don't even see an opportunity for much opportunity for debate. The chair has done a marvelous job in putting it in the best uh, ways forward. We seek your indulgence, Madam Chairman, because you've asked for our for, for, for our guidance on, 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 on this matter. I beg to guide you that this is the moment. Let's spend, even if it is just half an hour of this of, of, of the time we have, I see no sense of urgency uh, more important than what we have in hand today. Let's finish this matter and conclude it this evening. Madam uh, Speaker. Just a moment. I have to first of all rule on this procedural matter brought by Honorable Abdikadir. Now, Honorable Members, I realize that uh, by the fact that uh, the Honorable Chair has read this report and uh, by the fact that we received in our emails this report, some received yesterday, some received this morning, I'm convinced that uh, you are ready for debate because yeah. you seem to applaud the, the position that the Honorable Abdukadir has limited given. Debate. So I hear limited debate because you know we can we can seek the view of the chair council on this matter. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think the members are ready to pro proceed. But uh, we can seek the view of the chair council because we are together with them here. Chair Council. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I think we need to finish up this business uh, to avoid the paralysis of the institution. Thank you. Very good. So, members, we are all in total agreement that we need to finish business today. So, it will be limited debate, perhaps three minutes per member. So now the, the report is open for debate. The debate is open. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Motion. Procedure, Madam Speaker. There is a, a let me let's have the procedural matter, then we handle the motion. Yes, Honorable Christine Dwight. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I really appreciate uh, your kindness for allowing me to, uh, to add my voice on uh, motion uh, 36 for the limitation of debate. My additional information on that, it will be to request members from GP who owns this report not to, re not to debate and allow members we will, from we other will. committees to have a limited no. time to debate so that we can we support yeah. so that we can save time. No. Thank you, Madam Speaker. No, no, we don't agree. Honorable Christopher, I think uh, this is for everyone to, to present their views. And we still have time according to what we have agreed here. We still have one and a half hours. And we are going to limit each member perhaps to to three minutes or five, three to five minutes actually, depending on what you have to Two say. Minutes. And uh, we should be able to pick from all members, whoever is ready for debate. It's not that all of us are going to speak. So those who are ready will go ahead and debate in accordance with how you raise your hands. So now I want to move to the matter of motion raised by... Honorable Kim Guy. No, Mukulia. Uh, Mukulia. Sorry, Ms. Honorable Mukulia. Yeah. Thank you, yes, Honorable right Mukulia. Honorable Can you speak? proceed? Yes, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I move under Rule 30, uh, a motion without notice that the limit and read together with Rule 36 that limitation to this debate be capped for the whole discussion at 100 and 20 minutes. I beg to move. 120 minutes. Two hours. I mean, one, uh, one hour. One hour, which is 60 minutes. Yeah. Are there any seconders for this motion? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. I can see seconded by Honorable Kim Guy, Honorable Makame, I see Honorable Wanjiku, and others. So, I now want to put the question that the motion as proposed by Honorable Mukulia that we limit debate on this budget for 60 minutes, that's one hour, to a period of 60 minutes, uh, be adopted. Those in favor, raise your hands. I want the clerk to help me to count, because now this is a serious matter. We are debating the budget, and we need to know. Can the clerk count the hands up? And record. From all the partner states. I think by partner states. I'm giving time so that the clerks are able to count. Yeah, Okay. Okay. I think the clerks have finished counting. Can we have those against the debate for 60 minutes? Raise their hands. I have one hand there. I'm okay. Can see two hands. So, clerk, can you advise what are the numbers? They want a shorter time, but we support the the Mukulia Honorable Mukulia's. Uh, no, the clerks need to advise me. I'm oh. waiting for the clerks' advice, please. <laughs> <laughs> Clerk at table, I'm waiting for you. Wemile, are you still at table? Clerk Wemile, are you still at table? Yes, sir, Honorable Speaker, I'm still on table. Uh, we tried to count, but we could not manage because we don't see all 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 members because there are our screen indicates our screen indicates that there are eleven who are not we cannot see them. So just go we, state by state. We can go by, by chapter. We can go by if we request state by state, then we can easily count. Okay, by partner state. You can go state by state. Go state speaker, by state, honorable clerk. Honorable speaker, kindly respectively, can you repeat the question before we raise our hands? Now, I have requested the clerk. The clerk said that he was unable to see all of us on screen. Now, the procedure here is we want the show of hands for those who are for this debate to proceed for the one hour, for just one hour. And there may be those who want to debate for beyond one hour or even otherwise. So we are requesting the clerk to ascertain the numbers who are for the debate to proceed for one hour. So the clerk please proceed state by state. Please, the clerk will call state by state. Okay. So wait yes. to be called and then you raise your hand. Uh, thank you, right, Elmo Speaker. I'll start with the Republic of Burundi. Those who are in favor of the motion. Burundi, Burundi, ni Burundi. Oh. See, ah. All of them. How many? The what? Uh, Burundi, all of all member in Burundi are supporting the motion. We go to Republic of Rwanda. Republic of Rwanda. Yeah, seven members from Republic of Rwanda are supporting. I've seen seven members. The Republic of Kenya. You are in Kenya. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> okay. We'll chase you. I, I see all. I see. I see three members from Kenya. I don't see the others. No, That's we enough. have many. They are under the ten. Ten of them. Fatuma, Fatuma, Nur, 
No. Kennedy. Kennedy is also there. Now I don't see them voting. They have they supported the motion? But, uh, yes, they have. Clark, my hand is raised. Is that somewhere there? You can yeah. hear you. Brother. Honorable Nur can also talk. Eh? Yeah, I don't talk. know where he is. He's an analog. He's an analog. Talk through is. <laughs> so uh, I see like those who, the votes I can see from Kenya is, is the three members. I'm told the others, who others maybe they can confirm Honorable but, uh, Uhuru, uh, Honorable... Madam Speaker, through, through you, we can hear Honorable Kennedy speaking and yes. raising his hand. I don't know why the clerk is not able to see him. Honorable Kennedy, yes. Kalonzo, you should raise your hand and speak. Uh, Mr. Clark, I don't know if you're able to see me. Hello. Yes, I can see you now. And I'm okay. Kenya, I've seen you now. So okay. I have four four members now from Kenya who have supported the motion. Re uh, Republic of South Sudan. I see two members. No, three. No, it's okay, it's okay. Four, five, six. Six we members from the Republic of South Sudan are supporting. Six members from <laughs> South Sudan. Uh, we... United Honorable Republic Gideon Tanzania. is here also. But Gideon I'm, is in Nairobi. This is a Kenyan. Yeah. Seven United members United from Republic South Sudan. of Tanzania. Gideon out. <laughs> He's in Kenya. <laughs> United I'm Republic of Tanzania. I see one member. I'm going to raise. I second Bonaclass. This is Mariam. Mariam, second. Four, five. Mariam, who's second? So, uh, six uh, members. We are here also. We are here also. Yes, I have seen you two from uh, Zanzibar. Eight. Eight. Eight members from Tanzania. We are here. You can use Okay. Eight. Uh, Thank you. Uh, right on the speaker, we have uh, eight members from United Republic of Tanzania. We have six members from Republic of South Sudan, seven members from Rwanda, four members from Kenya. Uh, Burundi, all members. And uh, mm. Uganda, sorry, sorry, uh, Honorable Speaker, may I, I get... I hope you counted my vote, uh, Mr. Clark, sir, from Uganda. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, may I get members from Uganda? I want to see votes from Uganda, sorry. From Uganda, have Mary and the other members from Uganda who are supporting the motion. From Uganda. Uganda disconnected. Uganda has been disconnected. <laughs> I know members we are having a connection problem. Uganda Uganda is back now. Okay. Uh, put this one on. Put this one on. Yeah, uh, but Clark, you did not the, you count the numbers who are against the motion. You only counted those four. Who, did you get the numbers against the motion? Uh, right on, Mr. Speaker, I'm finalizing. Can I get the number from Uganda? Uganda, uh, I see Honorable Melim Jenny has supported. Then, uh, Madam, there are four. There are four. Four, four yes. from Uganda. Mr. Clark. Yes, Honorable Oda. Honorable Oda, you speak through the chair, through the through the, the, the speaker, please. Yeah, I think Mr. the clerk, clerk the number the of speaker. That's what they say. You are totally wrong. Yeah, right, Honorable Madam Speaker. Yes, Madam Speaker. Apologies. Can give I'm just uh, clarifying that I think South State. Article 14 of the treaty. So, uh, right on the 
Yes, right, Honorable Speaker. I was just indicating that South Sudan are more than the six numbers which he said. Okay. Okay, you'll be counted. You will be counted now. Sawa. <laughs> Uh, Light Honorable Speaker, we have counted for those who are in favor. Now maybe we count for those who are against. So we, I go back to partner states. Uh, Burundi, all member Burundi supported. So I go to Uganda. If there are member who is against Uganda, I don't see anyone. From Kenya, Kenya, if there are member who is against from Kenya, Members who are against the 60 minutes from Kenya, I see one hand, Honorable Wanjik. No, she has voted. No, she has voted that. From Rwanda. Who is against In me? Kenya? <laughs> no, you're not no I'm not against. I'm for the motion. Oh. I, I okay. seconded, actually. You're raising your hand, that's why you're counted. You have to listen to the clerk, Honorable. Sorry, Honorable Speaker. Sometimes you use sign language. Okay, from the Republic of South Sudan, if there are member who is opposing, uh, from United Republic of Tanzania. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, the following members are uh, supported. Uh, from Burundi, all nine members supported. From uh, Uganda, four members. From Kenya, four members. From Rwanda, seven members. From Republic of South Sudan, seven members. And from URT, eight members. There is no member who has opposed the motion. Thank you, okay. Honorable Speaker. Thank you so much, Clark. A table. Now, I think, Honorable Members, we proceed with the debate. And the floor is open. Chair. Chair. I'll be nominating. Yes, uh... Chair. Yes, I'm going to nominate. I'm going to nominate members. Mm -hmm. This member here. Can I speak? There's Honorable Kenneth. Mm -hmm. Honorable Kenneth, I've seen you. Mm -hmm. Kenneth, the other. Kenneth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to nominate five members. There is the Honorable Order. Are you allowed to eat something on this table? Or like and myself, and Madam Chief, you guys should be giving way. Happiness. Happiness. Kenneth, uh huh. Honorable Happiness. Happiness. Yes, Honorable Happiness, I've seen you. And myself, uh, Honorable Abdi Kadir. And Burundi side. Burundi side. Burundi side. Rwanda. Yes. Kenya. Honorable eh? Victor. Rwanda. Honorable Victor. Wanjiko. Then Honorable Rwanda. Rwanda. Honorable. I want from Rwanda now. Wanjiko. Rwanda. From Rwanda, I'm picking Honorable yeah. Kato Mandangiza. Yes. Yes. Let's have those six and then. And then we move on with more. So we can start okay. with the Honorable Kennedy. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker Chair. Uh, I'll, I'll be very brief. First, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to condole with our speaker. And second, to welcome our new council member. Madam uh, Speaker, to seek some clarification from the, the chair, uh, council and our chair, uh, GP. Uh, my first concern when I read the report was with the issue to do with the Health Research Institute. We are all aware of the crisis that is a, is a global crisis. So I, I, uh, I find it peculiar that this institute has had a reduction in their budget in a time when I would have thought they would be one of the priority areas given what the, the what their mandate is. Uh, secondly, uh, Madam Speaker, we are also aware that the community is continuing to grow 
recently this house passed a few bills which would pave way for the East African Bank. I, I am wondering how the council hopes to fund this new new uh, entity as the community grows. If if each year we are continually looking at reducing the our budget. Uh, finally, Madam Speaker Chair, I would want the Chair Council to tell us why they cannot adapt the similar funding mechanism as is used in the AU. From what we've read in the reports, our absorption is very low. And the reason for this is because the funds either not available, not remitted in time. Um, so why can't we solve this problem once and for all? But and with those remarks, I want to thank the committee for a wonderful report in you know very difficult and trying challenges. We appreciate them, and I, I support the reports. Uh, I only hope that the chair of the of the committee and council can address those few concerns. I submit. To happen. Uh, thank you, Honorable Kennedy, for that precise submission. We now have uh, Honorable Woda. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, and uh, for giving me the floor. First of all, I want to add my, my voice to my honorable colleagues who condole the Right Honorable Speaker for the passing on of his dear mother and also comfort the entire family. And then uh, secondly, I want to uh, welcome the new member of the assembly, Honorable Ezekiel. You're welcome. And then, uh, right on the speaker, I want to congratulate yourself uh, for getting the trust of the assembly and giving you uh, this uh, task for carrying us uh, through. I really want to... Yes, uh, right on the speaker, I first want to thank uh, the chair of the GB committee, uh, Honorable Namara, and all the entire committee for the work well done. And also I want to uh, thank the chair of the council for pre uh, presenting uh, the budget speech. Uh, first of all, right honorable speaker, I just want to talk about the title of uh, of this uh, budget, which is stimulating the economy to safeguard the livelihood, jobs, business, and industrial recovery. And indeed, this is a very important uh, title for our budget of 2020-2021 because uh, the coronavirus has affected all the five, uh, six partner states, and we have really to enhance this sector of our economy. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I really want to add my appreciation to the Committee of General Purpose for the work which they have done within a very limited time. And my concern also in this report is the reduction of the budget of the assembly. 12%, which is really, really very uh, harming our work. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, this assembly has wor been working very diligently, and I want to appreciate our staff who work day and night, and you have recognized that this report was sent to us by four, and some other members got it by eight, because our staff and our clerks, they work beyond the limits. And it's the same thing which we as honorable members work beyond our scheduled times. We work even the weekends and in a very limited and a very unusual circumstances. So for me, I urge the Council of Ministers and the Secretariat to recognize the role which this assembly is playing to promote uh, the welfare of the citizen of East Africa. Uh, there is something which I got in the report uh, which really uh, strike my mind that it's a positive thing because uh, the, the, the Council of Ministers and the Secretariat, they are working on operationalization of the one-stop border post in all uh, our borders. 
especially the launch of the Numili Elego, which is between Uganda and Republic of South Sudan, and the one in uh, between Tanzania and, and Zambia. And also, I really want to draw the attention that all the partner states has been connected uh, by uh, feeder roads and roads, regional roads. And I just want to urge the Council of Ministers to honor their obligation and promise that, that by the next financial year, we will see South Sudan also being connected. And I appreciate also the el elimination of the 16 uh, non-tariff barriers which were between the partner state and as a legislator, I want to see that more of these non-tariff barriers will be eliminated in the future because they are hindering our progress and they're hindering our economy. Right, Honorable Speaker, I also uh, note that the Council of Ministers uh, in uh, concerning the environmental, the budget for the environment that it has been uh, reduced, but I want to urge the Council of Ministers to add more emphasis uh, on uh, enhancing the climate change resilience for our partner states. Ryan Honorable Speaker, all the partner states are really suffering from the climate change and we don't have the good resilience. And my country, South Sudan right now is suffering from I think it's the worst flooding in uh, it's in the history because most of our, our states are flooding, especially Jungule, Bibor, and other areas of South Sudan, and I believe also other areas of uh, other areas in the partner states. Uh, and also, I want to recognize that the Lake Victoria Basin has started also to construct the regional maritime rescue. And this has been one of the problem even in the last years. And uh, this, I think before like five months, we have incurred the loss of lives in Lake Victoria. And this is a very, uh, I appreciate that this project is being started. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, as I read uh, from the report that also peace and security will be given uh, much attention, and I appreciate that because it's peace and security is a paramount for the development of the nations. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I also want to to add my concern about the reduction in the budget of the 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 health and the the health the health and science commission. Because I, I didn't see that there is more money put in research, especially in this time when uh, we are incurring and all the, the world is facing this epidemic of Ebola. I thought that uh, the Commission of Health and Science will be given a more budget because as African, we should look into research and we should look uh, to find African-based cure for those epidemics and in endemics like Ebola and, and, and coronavirus. And right, Honorable Speaker, I just want to assure all the East African who are listening to us that us, as members of this assembly, we are working day and night diligently. As, as they have witnessed now, one of our committees, they have been working day and night, even beyond four, AM to present and also scrutinize the budget. And they have been given very limited time. And I really appreciate you, uh, Honorable Namara and your team for the job well done. I beg to support the report and I thank you, right on speaker. Thank you, Honorable Woda. Now, members, please, in accordance with the resolution we've just passed the motion, we should limit our debate to not more than five minutes most three because I can see many more members want to speak. So the next in line is Honorable Happiness Lugiko. Please try to summarize your, your presentation. Thank you. Honorable Happiness Lugiko, it's your time to debate. Thank you so much, Madam 
Africa for giving me this chance to add my voice to this report. Yes. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Are you hearing me? Yes, we Hello. can hear you, but there's some interruption, but you can proceed. Proceed, Honorable, you have muted your microphone, I think. We cannot hear you, Honorable Lugiko. Are you hearing me? Yes. yes, you can talk. You can talk. Thank you so much for giving me this chance to add my voice on this report. I support it. Madam Speaker, I would like to congratulate the EAC for continuing implementing the single forecast um, territory and operationalizing the one top border post. Example, the launch of the two borders, that is Tunduma, the border between Tanzania and Zambia, and the Nimule Eleg, Uganda and South Sudan borders in the final 19. 2020. This has reduced the co this has reduced transport costs across the national and regional boundaries. It has increased the availability of goods, promoted economic competitiveness, improved the border security, promoted a better international relation between countries, and also it has reduced delays at borders. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Happiness, for being so precise. Uh, Honorable Abdikadir, it's your turn now to contribute to this debate. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Madam Speaker, let me say on the onset that I really want to uh, congratulate uh, Honorable Namara and the team for the job well done. I know how difficult it is to go through what they have been through and uh, getting to us to where we are today is a really commendable job and of course that includes the staff who work diligently uh, day and night to make sure that we have this madam speaker i want to commend the committee very very uh, clearly on their clear statement that it is unrealistic for council to decide to cut partner state contributions from the 8.2 uh, million dollars per year to $7.8 million uh, because we have got organs and institutions of the community that are growing. Uh, unless we're being told that several new institutions like the Monetary uh, Institute, like uh, you know, uh, many of the new entrance uh, institutions that have come in are being cut off, there is no way you can justify cutting the money. And that's why the, the, the people who found the community found it very necessary for us to have this house do what it is doing today. Therefore, the committee has decided to reinstate that 8.2 million. It's very, very commendable. It is realistic. It is in line with the objectives of the community, and uh, I support that uh, very much. The issue of the recruitment, uh, <coughs> Madam Speaker, and, the, and them putting it on hold is also a very rational decision. Let's, let's get the administrative differences, uh, or let me call the administrative issues around that particular issue, um, in order first, then the Secretary General can in future be able to bring us a, 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 a supplementary budget in request for that 58 million to now uh, um, continue with the recruitment issue. I want to uh, laud the committee very much for their support for the courts and the other institutions that they have mentioned, including uh, IALA, that uh, by treaty, uh, Article 14, it's very clear, nobody can dictate the work of the courts. No one, no one can debate, can dictate the works of the assembly. And for that reason, Madam uh, Speaker, I commend the committee very much for finding it um, um, wise to allocate the resources that are highly needed uh, to this particular um, uh, um, 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 organs and institutions. The lack of contribution by partner states, Madam Speaker, makes it uh, uh, extremely difficult for us to achieve some of the good objectives that the committee has mentioned here. I therefore 
throw it back to the council chair and, uh, and, 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 and the secretary general to ensure that we continue to advocate for, for the, uh, submit, uh, the, 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 the payment of the outstanding dues in addition to timely payment of the amounts that are required for this particular, uh, for this particular uh, year. Madam uh, uh, Speaker, I want to be guided by your, by your decision on, on us keeping it short. The social sector, I was hoping to see council finding it wise to put investment or to finding a council to put investment in the additional investment in the social sector, particularly the health sector. Madam Speaker, you will know that during this COVID pandemic problem, two cities became very critical, lifeline to the East African community, the port city of Dar es Salaam and the port city of Mombasa. Why? Because that's where goods destined for all of us uh, come and land. And I thought I would see an investment in the health sector in that particular, in those two particular cities. I think the municipality of Dar es Salaam, the county government of Mombasa, need to be allocated resources. And I, in my view, we've got 74 million that will be in the reserve once all the dues are paid, outstanding dues are paid. I will strongly urge the Secretary General to allocate part of that money to those particular authorities that I have mentioned in Dar es Salaam and in Port of Mombasa, so that we can be able to upgrade their health facilities on those areas, so that in situations of pandemic like now, our supply routes are not disrupted like we saw uh, last time. I want to end here, Madam Speaker, and I want to urge the honorable members to please keep this debate short. Remember, we want to pass this, uh, this, uh, this budget, and therefore we've got procedurally uh, after the debate, those are the two steps to, 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 to run through. And if we are to put this uh, issue through now, in my view, I would say we keep it brief. And if a member before you has spoken to these issues, Madam Speaker, through you, I wish to urge my colleagues that we, we actually end this debate soonest possible and pass this report as has been uh, uh, brought to us so that the community can have a budget tomorrow. Let's not spend all the 60 minutes uh, in debate. This is just my advice. Uh, to, to the colleagues. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable Abdikadi, for your contribution and uh, the advice, which is very timely. I now call upon uh, Honorable Victor. Honorable Victor, to make your contribution to this debate. Thank you, right Honorable Speaker, to give me the opportunity to add my voice to the debate. I will be very, very brief, and I wish to comment to comment on a point with respect uh, to the failure to, for Burundi to honor its uh, financial obligations. Uh, we sometimes focus, focus on uh, ourselves on uh, the non-remittance, but in reality, we need to focus on um, the real issue of the non-remittance. Uh, Madam uh, Speaker, the core issue is uh, the, um, the sanctions, the sanctions, the unjust sanctions imposed on Burundi by West countries. These sanctions are heavily weighing on the shoulders of Burundians. Really, that is why We, in EAC, we have the motto, one people, one destiny. But we need, as a community, to condemn these sanctions for the sake of Burundian and the whole citizens of East Africa. That is why I take this opportunity, Madam Speaker, to thank very much His Excellency, uh, John Pome Magufuri, the President of the Republic of Tanzania, who strongly condemned in a clear words these sanctions. And I would take, I would, um, take this opportunity to urge this August Assembly to, to add the voice to the statement of His Excellency Magufuri to condemn and to advocate for the liftment of this sanction. I beg to submit. Point of information, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, point 
the point of information to Honorable Victor. He has concluded. I don't know whether your point of information is really relevant, but you can give yes. it. Yes, yes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I wanted to uh, inform uh, Honorable Victor that indeed I have given notice of intention for a motion um, through this House to call on the summit uh, of the EAC to adopt one voice and to call for the immediate uh, lifting of the EU. Uh, I mean, of the uh, sanctions against the Republic of Burundi. So that motion, as soon as we have the next plenary, is going to come. Thank you, Honorable Abrikadi. And uh, I think that would be very welcome because we, we all feel for our member state. So it will be a very timely motion, especially at this time. Yes, now the next person is the Honorable Fatuma. Honorable Fatuma. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me the floor. I'd like to start by conveying my condolences to the Right Honorable Speaker for the unfortunate demise of uh, her mother. I would also like also to congratulate you, Madam Speaker, and also the new council chair. But I want on a special note to congratulate the Committee on General Purpose and its able leader for a job well done. They've been able to do a lot within a short time, and at least we have very clear reports that are guiding our discussion. Right Honorable Speaker, at the outset, I would like to support the report, but I'll need some few clarification. The reason why I'm supporting it is because the budget estimate that we're about to vote for is going to help us really implement very critical programs for the community that will enhance the implementation of the four pillars of integration. For example, the consolidation of the single customs territory. This will also improve on the intra EAC trade that is very critical. When you look at the previous financial year, 2019-2020, the intra EAC trade recorded an increase of around 7%, rising from exports of US 2.9 billion in 2017 to USD 3.1. This is good, but we also know that very recently, member states of the African Union, including our own EAC partner states, ratified the African continental free trade area and you hope to have a huge single market. I think really by far, it will be one of the biggest market worldwide. And so I think the issue of trade is very critical and these are some of the dividends that our people want to see. If we can have more trade among ESC partner states, this is something to support. And I'm also happy that there has also been a significant reduction in the non-tariff barriers. But the question is, if we reduce from 18 to 14, you still have four non-tariff barriers, and every time we still have new non-tariff barriers, including some related to the COVID-19 situation. We've seen a lot, many lorries, trucks on our borders uh, because of the bureaucracies related to certificates and all that. So I think, Whereas we are happy that there is some progress, but we have to eliminate the non-tariff barriers so that we can enhance trade among our people. The issue of effective implementation of common market protocol is very critical because at the end of the day, our people want to move freely, they want to trade freely, but we still find that this area is not, is still slow. And these are some of the areas that we can together improve because all partner states, signed and ratified the common market protocol. The promotion of peace and security is very critical because peace and security is a prerequisite for regional integration, but also institutional transformation, where we are talking about the institutional review, but also the sustainable funding mechanism. These are all very important areas, and that's why I think we really need to support uh, this report and also the passing of the budget. Of course, there are still some challenges, 
And uh, I wanted, as I said, to request for some clarification on the budget because one, there is a budget execution by 30%. So I just wanted to know why we have this low absorption capacity. Is it because of late remittance or it's because some institutions cannot imp implement? Because now if we are requesting for more budget, but then we still have 30% absorption capacity, it is still a challenge. Uh, the other issue that has already been raised there's been a significant reduction of this financial year budget by 12% from partner states' contribution, but there's also a reduction by 22% from the development partners. So I also wanted to hear from the council if this reduction from almost 8.2% to around 7 point something is going to be something that is permanent, or it is only for this year when you are experiencing COVID. Is there a possibility that for the next financial year there will be an, incre an increment? Because as already said, we cannot have a growing economy, a growing community with more institutions being created, such as the Monetary Institute that are going to fast track monetary union, but also existing ones, but then start reducing our budget, it doesn't match. So I just wanted to know whether this is only for this year but it also goes to the budget of uh, most of the institutions of the community, uh, including the EALA, because for EALA, whereas there will be that reduction uh, of 21 days to, and I just wanted to be clear that really, for us, we are a permanent uh, parliament. It's a parliament that is working every day for 12 months. So sometimes when you see 21 days, one can imagine that what are members of parliament is doing, but it's even less compared to the, backlog, the work that we have. But I just wanted to know what we are going to do because it is touching on our rules. The rules say six plenaries, but here we're going to have four plenaries. So is there a way that council, despite the challenges of the budget ceiling, at least you can make sure that we have six plenaries. And then again, just to see whether this is going for, to be for this financial year or it's going to be a, a, permanent, a permanent way of doing business because it's going to impact on the, way, on the work uh, of the assembly. Finally, uh, I wanted to know, I think from the general purpose committee, that there are figures there was a budget ceiling of around 97.6 US dollar, but then the proposed estimates by the committee is 104.63,020 US dollar. So, are we allowed to have a different uh, budget ceiling? different from the council or this is just a mere proposal because uh, my feeling was that we have to work within the, 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 the budget ceiling that we have and probably if there is further negotiation probably that could come into a recommendation but, but I have a problem having two different ceilings so these are some of the comments that I had but I really wanted finally to request that the council should make sure that on matters that are touching sovereignty of our country, such as peace and security, democracy and governance, really that we make sure that we, we fund these important programs rather than delegate them to the development partners. I know the Republic of Tanzania recently in their elections, I, I understand that they are going to fund 100% of the elections by the domestic revenues but I think East African community can try its best. If we are doing it at the level of the African Union, where we have introduced the peace basket with the challenges of peace and instability that we have, I think this is an area that you can look into, the issue of sustainable funding, but funding the critical sectors that touch on our sovereignty and also 
the governance of our countries. With that, I want to thank you once again. I want to congratulate the committee for a good job, and uh, I support the report. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Fatuma. I think I can now take the more names. I have Honorable Wusi, Honorable Oda, Honorable Musamali, uh, Honorable Wanjiku. Don't forget Arusha. Yes, Don't Honorable. Forget. Honorable Only. Christopher and uh, Honorable Josephine Lemoyan, please. Uh. Thank you okay. very much, Madam Speaker. Wanjiku. We are not getting you, Honorable Usi. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thought you were still um, putting the names in order. Madam Speaker, let me first also start with uh, my condolences to the loss of the mother of our of our speaker, Right Honorable Martin Goga. We are with him in spirit at this time, and uh, we, we are condoling with him. Madam Speaker, also let me on the same thing, congratulate the new minister from the Republic of Burundi, and we are really happy to, to have him in our assembly. Also, the new minister from the Republic of South Sudan, who also joined us recently. Madam Speaker, as I, let me say I'm a member of the GP and I'm capable of speaking very fast as long as you'll understand me. So I will use less than three minutes, not even five minutes. Madam Speaker, to start with also, let me thank wholeheartedly the Chair Council of Ministers. He's been there from day one and attends all of our meetings. Also in the same, in the same note, let me also thank the Secretary General. With all our issues, but he managed to be there and allow his uh, colleagues to be with us. So without them, we, we will not be able to do this budget. Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, um, I will, as I say, I will be very brief. I will go straight to my point. And uh, first of all, let me also uh, say uh, with my colleagues from Burundi who just finished about talking about sanctions. I'm actually, um, I am with him on his point. We uh, really congratulate him also, first for having new president, but also for showing ways of giving us remittance, even though they have funded their own election by their own money. So they show the way that they really intend to work with uh, Madam Speaker, in the past, after saying that, let me say, in the past, we used to have problem in the budget for the late remittance. And uh, one of our colleagues who is not able to see also asked why there is a, a 30 percent absorption of the budget. Uh, let me say, Madam Speaker, we are passing this budget as a critical time that we are facing with non remittance. As I said, we used to have a late remittance problem, and that gave us a big financial problem. As you can see, in program projects cannot be finalized without funding. Let me also remind our, our colleagues and, uh, that 50% of the budget is funded by partner states. So it is very important for partner states to make sure they remit their contribution because this has been a serious breach of the treaty. Uh, as you know, the treaty establishment in the Article 132 Act 4 really obligates all partner states to remit equally each year. And some partner states have not been remitted. We will be having a lot of problems saying any other problem, but our main problem is remittance. As let me uh, repeat, 50% of the budget of PAC is depending on the partner state uh, contribution. So let me take this opportunity to urge council chair to urge the SG to help us on this issue and take a serious look on how we can be able to help uh, partner states to remit the fund 
so that at least we should realize the implementation of this budget. With, a, with saying that, I thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me a chance. I support the report from the council chair, and I support the report from our chair, and I congratulate also our chair of GP. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Maria Musi. Uh, Honorable Oda Gazinzigwa. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I also want to uh, add my voice in uh, congratulating you, Honorable Rose. Uh, and I want also to welcome uh, the Honorable Minister from Burundi in this assembly. I also want to sincerely congratulate the GP Chair and the team of the GP members uh, for the work well done. But of course, this cannot be achieved without uh, good collaboration with the council and the secretariat. And I feel that uh, this is the way to go. Uh, we are all uh, have the same goal. And I think uh, this is going to help us in the future if we continue uh, collaborating and working together towards the common goal. Uh, briefly, uh, I wanted to, uh, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I support this report, but I want to go back uh, to a few uh, areas which I would wish uh, the council uh, uh, in their deliberations to again look at it. Uh, one, uh, it has been mentioned by most of uh, our colleagues, and uh, this comes every year, and this is the issue to do with the payment, the, the remittances by partner states. Um, Madam Speaker, uh, this is a very serious issue. We have been deliberating on this, uh, and I would like to request the council to once again take it seriously and have time to deliberate on this. I know very well they have been doing it, but if we all six member states have decided to join uh, this community, and if we all really understand the importance of the integration of our member states, uh, the, the, the integration of this community and the benefits uh, we are getting out of this integration to our citizens, I think and I believe that uh, uh, it is high time that we seriously uh, talk to, to each other, especially at the, at the council level, which represents the summit. Madam Speaker, I'm coming back to this because I feel and I'm sure that we still have a challenge of commitment on this. Madam Speaker, we have come, we have been uh, not once uh, talking about the issue of the member states failing to abide to this, not only because of the capacity. We all know that not a single partner state would state that they are financially okay. We are all in our member states facing a lot of challenges. We are all struggling to make sure that we finance our national budget. We make sure that our citizens are being supported in our programs at the national level, but at the same time, we have taken a commitment. And this commitment should be supported and should be implemented in order to make sure that we are moving forward. But Madam Speaker, if we have many examples, our member states are paying their dues to AU. This is not the first time it has been stated. Our member states are paying their dues into different obligations, either national or regional or at the world, I mean at the intercontinental level. Now, if we continue as members of parliament who have been sent by our 
our, 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 our citizens to come and deliberate and look into the affairs of our, our citizens. And you know, go, don't touch into some areas. I feel that it will discourage also those who are trying to do their best. So I, I want to uh, not to go into uh, details of this because it is something which is uh, clear to everyone, but I would request the council to frankly speak to each other on this matter and see how we can move forward. Madam Speaker, the second point I have is on uh, the productive and social sector. This again has been a song of the day. And sometimes I fail to understand why every time we get this budget, we fell short into giving it a priority, especially on health and gender. I don't want to go back into it because of the time, but I, I, I propose that we again look on it and understand the importance of health and also the importance of gender aspects into this whole process. Finally, Madam Speaker, I wanted to have a clarification on why different reductions on the percentage. If I understand well, if the council has given us a ceiling of let's say 10%, I was assuming that this is going to be cross-cutting to all the institutions on their ceiling and cut 10%. So I wanted to understand why in one institution is 6%, another institution is 54%, another institution is 2%. I beg to submit and, and I want to once again congratulate the GP and uh, uh, congratulate all the stakeholders in this process and want to uh, say that uh, we congratulate also all the institutions of the community for the work done in the last year. I submit, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Oda. I now call upon Honorable Musamali to make his submission. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, let me also add my voice to that of the colleagues to congratulate you <coughs> upon assuming this hot but sweet seat. Um, I also want to congratulate uh, the Honorable Minister Ezekiel for joining the House. <coughs> uh, we expect a lot from him, uh, given the fact that he, the docket there, the way it is combined, I think is the best youth, culture, and East Africa. Because uh, that culture is part of our, our Utamaduni. Uh, so I look forward to his contribution. I also want to add my voice to condole with the honorable speaker for the demise of our mom uh, who passed on. <clears throat> uh, it is so sad, but we leave everything to God. <clears throat> honorable speaker, <clears throat> I don't want to waste a lot of time, but I want to uh, <clears throat> bring the attention of the chair council and the secretary general, specifically to page 19 of the report. It talks about uh, key challenges affecting the budget implementation and Roman number one, <clears throat> that inadequacy of resources. Uh, and this was the report of the Secretary General. It talks about the inag that inadequacy of resources and the delays in the disbursement of financial commitments. If you go to Roman number six, it also talks about the risks associated with an unreliable disbursement of development partner funding, particularly in the donor reliant sectors like peace and security. <clears throat> uh, Honorable Chair Council, when you look at the problem, uh, the two problems as stated, you will see that we are in a real state of quagmire, financial quagmire, uh, because <clears throat> we have a problem with the money, delays in the disbursement, but as we have talked about it before, Honorable Chair Council, you are aware that uh, our, man, our contributions from the partner states, even if they were to be 100%, even if each partner state contributed 100%, it does not form 50% of our budget. 
in fact, it only forms uh, 45 to 49% of the budget of normally, which is oscillates around 100 to 111 million. But that is excluding projects funded by donors, meaning that the real budget of the community, uh, if combined, is in 200 to 300 million dollars. Uh, Honorable Chair, Council, this is a serious matter. Now, when you come down to the, on, the, on the same page, uh, strategies for mitigating the challenges, that is uh, Roman in number one. We are saying close up of remittances by partner states to facilitate timely implementation of projects and programs, <coughs> including identification of alternative financing options. Honorable Chair, Council, I want to bring this to you and also to the Right Honorable mm -hmm. Secretary General. As we talk, there is a report, a draft report, which uh, we were told during the deliberations of the committee that uh, there is a draft report on alternative financing. But the biggest question here is how much is that report looking at? in terms of financing the community. Because we are talking of alternative sustainable funding, how much money is that report uh, proposing, such that we know that this is the money which is coming from the partner states, and we know that we are now going to pull our success, or we are going to pull our trousers or our skirts up to see that we get more money. So how much money is that report proposing? <laughs> Because we are going to be talking of a report after report, report after report. How much money is there? So I'm asking this question to the council. Such that we know that, remember that even if we are struggling with 80 point something million dollars contribution per partner state, but if we are to be self-sustaining, we are going to contribute more. Just like the Honorable order, order, order put it, we have been contributing to other international organizations including the African Union. In fact, for me, I would even propose that if it is possible, we stop contributing to them, some sectors, and we contribute to East Africa. Let us first grow East Africa, then we go to the rest. When we have problems here, we start with East Africa, then we go to Africa, then the rest of the world. And then lastly, lastly, it is on Roman number three of the strategies uh, as proposed by the Secretary General to mitigate the challenges. He says that enhanced prioritization of activities to avoid wastage of resources. Now, the Secretary General presented one of the documents here uh, where he needed money for expenditure as rent. And uh, I looked at, uh, we are renting at uh, the Arusha International Conference Center. Now, every month we are paying 17,770 US dollars. And the contracts which you have is about uh, two years renewable, two years renewable. When I calculated in a year, we are paying 213,240. If we multiply by two years, it comes to 426,480 US dollars. Honorable, uh, Honorable Speaker and Chair Council, besides serving the community as a YARA member, I also do work outside that as a businessman. I'm in real estate. If you look at this money, 426,000, and I've just picked only one area, this but for us, Arusha, we have land in Arusha, where the, uh, the community headquarters are. If we got money for two, for three, I mean, four years, rent, which we are renting, we would build a house or office space for our offices, which is equivalent to the number of offices we are renting at the AICC. So to me, when you are saying that we should avoid the wastages, this is also another area of wastage. So I want to appeal to you that you should look at avoiding such areas. So let us pay for one or two years where we, as, as we build, but we should look at 
such ways of avoiding wastages. I thank you, Honorable Speaker and members. And I support the report. Uh, thank you, Honorable Msamali. We now have Honorable Wanjiku Muhia. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'll be very brief, but allow me to give a message of condolence to Right Honorable Speaker for loss of the mother, who, is in, who in extension is our mother. May her soul rest in peace. Also, let me welcome the new minister from Burundi and recognize his name, Ezekiel. And for those who are Christians, Ezekiel was a preacher preached that each man will be responsible for his own act. And with that, then I am hoping he will handle the Minister of EAC well in Burundi, and he will let Burundi to be responsible for its own community obligation. Madam Speaker, as I want to be brief, I am a member of GP, and I want to say it is sad that now we are in this rush, because in my previous work in my National Assembly, we discussed the report of budget close to three or four days. So we had time to criticize, analyze issues like what members are raising here, just like what Honorable Musamari has raised on wastage. We could have points which council can take and implement. And without even uh, going far, let me ask the resource mobilizer maybe to look beyond her, she be proactive, and uh, see how she can resource mobilize for construction of such a premise. Madam Speaker, you realize the budget performance in all our institution is less than 50%. This is due to poor remittance habits from our partner states. They send money very late, so the institutions cannot be able to spend. When you look at this report, page 10, uh, even if virtual meetings we speak when we are sitting, if I was standing, I would Madam fall speak. down. I would fall down or I would faint because of this figure. When you look at the total outstanding Madam at speaker. page 10. Uh, yes, Honorable Makame. Uh, Madam Speaker, at the, when we started the debate, we had uh, an agreement to limit the debate to 60 minutes. So at the uh, like just to remind you that uh, we, we are just out of that time, but uh, to allow the members who have, whom you have already nominated to conclude, and then we move to the Committee of uh, Ways and Means and Committee of Supply. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you for that reminder, Honorable Makam. Right. Thank you. Yes. Cognizant, right. of oh, that, right. proceed. Yes. Cognizant of that, I will <laughs> summarize by saying, page 10, we have total outstanding of 92 92898983. That is the total outstanding of the areas from all our partner states, those that they owe ESC and other institutions. Madam Speaker, the budget that we are discussing now, we are passing a budget of close to 104. When you consider the difference, in essence, we are saying the outstanding is almost equal to the areas. Honestly, this is uh, not practical, and only a research can be done to bring this to the sense so that people can understand. What I mean this that this is sad. This is this sad. Report, this because the, the total outstanding is areas is equal to the budget that we are passing. So in essence, we are working from uh, nowhere. Another point I want the council chair to note is that in this report, you realize the donor fathers, have, most of them have increased while the partner states are reducing. So in essence, we are now going to a donor funded community driven. Instead of driving our own community, the donors are the ones now funding our community. So finally, we may be in the hands of the, the donors. An institution like Research Health Institute, the, com the commission in uh, Bujubura, it is poorly, poorly funded, yet we are in times of COVID. This is one institution which we could have expected it to be funded well. Finally, Honorable Speaker, when you look at IALA, ESCJ, and Secretariat, we are, we are, our deduction comes to 27%. These are the main three organs which hold the whole community. So again, it is sad that we have 12% deduction, 9% deduction, and a total of 27 deduction. Without much, uh, let me say that 
uh, a member had mentioned that members of GP should not speak. But when we are in this rush, it's good that members of GP also speak so that at least they bring issues which are internal and maybe members may not see because of this area. In conclusion, let me ask Secretariat to be cooperating with the members of GP so that they can come in time in front of us. We can have this report in time without rushing our clerks who have worked 24-7 without sleeping. And so in extension, the members can also read this report and discuss from an, in, an informed point of view. With that, Honorable Speaker, I beg to end my contribution, though very limited. I've left all my points, but uh, I support the report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Wanjiku. Can we have Honorable Christopher? Please, let's limit our debate to uh, at least three minutes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, thank, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate our own minister, who just been sworn in right now, uh, Ambassador Ezekiel Nivigira. Also, to pass my condolences to the departed mother of uh, our Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, me, uh, Madam Speaker, I'll be brief. My, I have uh, four points. Number one, I'd like to ask a council to actually reprimand the head of institutions and uh, some council members who are not here today. You know, uh, passing budget is one of the biggest events in any partner state or any uh, economy uh, block. So I'm so surprised to see that none of the head of institutions is here today. Yet all the institutions have the VC. And uh, also, uh, within the Secretariat, I can only see uh, Honorable SG. The rest, they are nowhere. Also, Madam Speaker, this is big, because these are the same people who are going to implement this budget. Uh, second point, uh, Madam Speaker, I also uh, like to ask the council to relook the strategy which they use to decrease the budget yet our economy is growing. Uh, my next point is actually based on the previous budget we passed, where we passed a budget on, uh, on the infrastructure, I mean the, the, the roads from uh, Nyanzarak, Rumong, and Bujumbura. I remember I was a, a, a member of GP where we Pass the budget on the feasibility studies, and I don't know, and I would like to ask which budget line that uh, uh, road was budget for. And uh, the fourth one is uh, uh, about investment into IT. As we can see, IT is playing a big role within our community. If it wasn't IT, I wonder where we should, we, we, we should have been as members actually so also my last point is um, on page on page uh, 23 roman 6 23 roman 6 on election observer mission uh, in the republic of uh, in the united republic of tanzania this budget, I remember uh, when we, we attended, actually we were not attended this, but I know members of AYANA used to take part on those uh, observation missions. But if you look where we are now, uh, I think AYANA members won't be there because there's a procedure. First of all, we have to, to those who will be a, a part of that observation mission, we go through a certain workshop or training. But I would like to uh, ask the chair of um, GP if it's possible to look at that budget line because it might be a query in the next uh, audit commission. You know how it works. Uh, in short, Madam Speaker, this is my, con uh, my contribution and I raise my case. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable, Honorable Christopher. I now want to request, please, honorable members, let's limit our debate to just about three minutes.
So I'm um, picking only those who have not spoken. There is yes. Honorable Lemoyan Josephine, and then we shall have Honorable Nur and Honorable Rijema, and end the debate there. And Mohirwa, so I didn't speak. I didn't day. speak. speak. The member of GP. Oh. You're a member of GP, Honorable. So can we have Honorable Lemoyan Josephine? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, let me start also uh, by congratulating you for uh, being uh, elected our, our speaker, at least in this interim time. And uh, take this opportunity as well to congratulate uh, Honorable Ambassador Ezekiel, who has just been sworn in. And uh, I join in solidarity with our right Honorable Speaker during this difficult time when he lost uh, his mother. We are standing together in bereavement. I understand this is really an extraordinary time. We are passing this uh, budget uh, during the time when uh, it was not possible for us uh, to convene our meetings uh, physically. And uh, we did our utmost uh, to make sure that at least we pass this budget within the, uh, the, the context of COVID-19, which delayed and derailed some of our activities. In that regard, I should say uh, congratulations, GP, for whatever you could do together with all the um, staff who supported you, as well as the, the, the ministers who were around you. While I'm noting with appreciation the achievements uh, registered in the report, actually I, I noted 22 areas of achievement, including the positive trend in trade performance uh, documented in the East African Trade Report of 2019, which is really an indication of significance of the East African community as a regional economic bloc. I think some of these achievements should be amplified so that uh, at least we create motivation eh, amongst the people of East Africa as well as uh, the, the partner states that really this is a, an economic bloc to be reckoned with. But uh, I'm noting also an interesting area whereby capacity building was conducted in the Republic of South Sudan in order to enable them uh, uh, to participate effectively in the integration of uh, the country in the East African uh, Community Custom Union. But another area which I want to register in terms of achievement is the East African community engagement in the continental-wide as well as global-wide uh, cooperation as well as uh, 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 related initiatives. I'm noting also with appreciation that we cannot operate alone. We cannot uh, operate in isolation. 170 uh, million plus uh, dollars have been, or euros have been mobilized in order to facilitate some of our activities. However, I have a few areas. Somebody's uh, mic is on. Uh, some areas where we have challenges that I would like them to be registers include uh, the fact that uh, we have challenges still in the areas of recruitment in general. I think this is one area that we need to find a solution. Recruitment of East African community staff so that we have really the capacity in-house to facilitate our activities. I also note that, uh, and I would like some to get some clarification on issues relating to activities of uh, internal audit. I was not quite sure whether we're going to have four if, um, if you could summarize, the three minutes are I'm over. Going to summarize. If you could summarize. Last but not least, two areas that I'm going to, uh, I want to register. One concerns the purchase of vehicles for our DSGs, uh, but another one is the issue of uh, 45,000 uh, US dollars that has been. Uh, 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 I want to raise the red flag around the $44,000 that have been taken out of the welfare services and promotion of health and safety, wellness in the workplace. I'm not sure whether we are also including in this uh, particular issue uh, funding that we have set aside as contingency when it comes to issues of bereavement. And I thought maybe as a contingency, we should take into account that this particular cost uh, center is including issues of bereavement. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Josephine de Moyan. I would advise where you have a contention that you prepare your written submission so that when we go into stage, the committee of the gen of the of the whole house, you 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 raise the issue and the figures are accordingly amended. 
if that's your wish. Uh, Thank you very I much. now want to. Uh, yeah, now Honorable Noor and then Honorable Rijema. And we end the debate there because the one hour is over. I have information, uh, Madam Speaker, to me. In case I don't get an opportunity. Yes, Honorable Mary. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I realize that I will not be able to speak, but I have an addition. A proposed amendment, one item to do of members with Right, Honorable Speaker, I think that this is a very good by the all members of the GP for including a budget for facilitating the, uh, the assistance of aids to our members with disability. I want to bring it to the attention of the House that uh, right now, uh, Honorable Poker is one of the most disabled members that we have. I mean, when one has been ill for years, and in the condition in which he has been living and uh, working still, and what? still with us, I propose, Madam Speaker, that uh, the Honorable uh, Chris Poker gets uh, considered also as one of our disabled members that need, needs to be facilitated. I wish to submit right on my speaker. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mary, for bringing that point. I hope the clerks have taken note when the commission meeting will be, the next time it will be held. I believe it will, one of, it will be one of the issues. If we can also put formally to the commission in writing this matter, so that uh, it will be considered for implementation. That's what I think the normal procedure is. So once approved by the commission, then we shall source for funding. Thank you. Yes, Honorable Noor? Three minutes, please. I'm going to be strict. Exactly three minutes. Can you switch on your microphone, Honorable Noor? We're not getting you. Switch on your microphone. Honorable Speaker, can you hear me now? Can yes, we can hear you now. Please, Honorable Nuru, proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable, Honorable Speaker. I want to thank you for, for being elected for today's session, and I uh, thank you for your, your competency. Honorable Speaker, I don't want to go into details of uh, uh, our late mother and uh, the minister because of time. I just want to go directly to the point. I abstain myself from voting for this extension of time because there's one process that was lacking. That was the appropriation bill which we are supposed to pass along with this motion, which has not been included or factored in the time. But my abstention was not being recorded. So nevertheless, I really support the extension of time. But as a matter of fact, we never, we never achieved what we wanted because what we wanted was to pass the budget. And the budget cannot be passed without the appropriation bill. So the fact that we pass the motion or the report of the committee without the appropriation bill, Honorable then we are not achieving what we wanted. So I want to ask for the indulgence of, 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 of the time the order paper. time. Yes, Honorable Speaker. Yes, Honorable Speaker. I refer to the other paper. The issue you are complaining about is already there, so maybe you can deal with another issue. There. Item number nine. Yeah, I have to... ...of time, because it seems that we are exhausting the one hour on the motion. So the preparation of me has not even been read up to now. So I would like to extend it to tomorrow, because that is a part of procedure that I wanted to raise several times. But I never got time to raise it. One of the did try to raise it, but on a, on a lighter note. And uh, that one is for, 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 for the Speaker and the House to decide. But on the motion, Honorable Speaker, I want just to be very brief. The fact of the matter is this community is run down because of lack of resources. And lack of resources is because of lack of contribution. What do we do about the contributions of the member states who are not contributing? And, uh, to make it worse, to, to add an insult on an injury, for the few who are really contributing, they want to reduce their contribution. Rather than increasing for those who are able, so they can be able to increase their contribution, they also went further and reduce their contribution, affecting 
the, the, the running of the community further. So are we really in need of this community? Because it seems to be only Yala who advocates for this community, as well as the council and the secretariat are trying to push it down. We don't know where we are reading from the same script. Because we have nothing special as, a, 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 as an institution of Yala, we want to serve this community and our people very effectively. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, we cannot see even how we can be able to, 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 to run this community without the resources. The issue of self-funding has been discussed and has been repeatedly funded, has been repeatedly discussed, report has been prepared. Nothing is coming up. We sit on the job. So, Honorable Speaker, we cannot be able to be just speaking year after year on the same issue, and the matter is getting worse than what we have discussed last financial year or last budget. Look at the time we are discussing budget now. Because of lack of commitment, we could have discussed these things early enough as possible. But the Secretariat, the Council, are, are not bothered, there are no commitments about this issue. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, the issue of time scrutinizing these issues are very critical and we need to do everything according. Those who have put budget on the timelines are not fools. They know the importance and the essence of, of putting those. The budget should be presented in April, it should be discussed in May, it should be adopted in June. So for this is a process. And once this process, one is delayed, then it delays the whole thing. That's why we are in this crisis. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I think the Council must be serious enough, plus the Secretariat, who are just the core, who are the heart of this community, rather than pushing us to the wall as, a, as, as an assembly, they should be able to work how best and effective this institution can work. Look at the first pillars of, 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 of this community. Yeah, the issue of, 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 of customs, the issue of uh, immigration, there are still barriers and barriers. So, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. I can see you speaking, but I cannot hear you very well. So, I end my, 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 my contribution there. We have to be serious. All of us. Thank you. Uh, honorable members, I want us to take seriously the issues of decorum. And the issue of decorum in the House also applies to now that we hold virtual meetings, even the choice of venue where you decide to stream from. I could hear a lot of noise from the background where Honorable Noor is seated, like a restaurant or something of the kind. So perhaps next time, uh, he should choose a better venue. I'm mentioning this because uh, we, this is the this is plenary, <laughs> and we must observe the, the our rules of decorum. So thank you so much. I now call upon Honorable Rijema to conclude the debate on this matter. Honorable Rijema. Uh, thank you, right Honorable Speaker, to catch your eye, and I am the last of the list. Uh, first of all, I congratulate you uh, not only for being elected, but uh, I congratulate you uh, because I have seen the capacity on you of handling this matter. Congratulations. Uh, first of all, I want to condole with the uh, right honorable speaker for the demise of uh, his beloved mom, you know, mom is the first gift from God. To lose mom is very hard. We are with, <clears throat> we are with him. Uh, I want also to congratulate the to congratulate the minister, the new member of uh, Burundi, Honorable Ambassador Nivigira Ezekiel for joining the community. Welcome, Minister. Uh, we will be together working as a, a brother. This is a community for brother and sister. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, I take the floor to support the report, the first one from the Chair Council. Uh, the Chair Council uh, is not, uh, is really new, but the way he's handling this matter, it is very, very impressive. I congratulate him. 
I wanted to congratulate also the member of uh, general purpose, but also the GP uh, chair, uh, Honorable Namara. You are really very, very impressive. You did a very good job, and you read eloquently the report. You deserve to become a very strong, good lecturer in, in the university. <laughs> uh, right, General Speaker, uh, I want now to go through the report. I report this report. It has been late, but you have to, 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 to support it and to let the community working. I have only two points on this report. Uh, the first one is to ask to <clears throat> the chair council. Uh, when uh, my friend uh, Honorable Raden was talking, I was uh, just uh, getting what he was talking, it was my point of view. Why do we have a visit community? What do we want from this community? We want this community to grow. We want the community to become a community like all the community who have been, who have been very, very uh, successful. If we reduce the budget, where do we, do we expect to go? If we don't have some over sustainable funding mechanism, where do we want to go? It is not possible if we want really to grow as a community, if we want to really to make our population feel the good we want within our community and we reduce our budget. We have to do whatever we can do, but we have to increase our budget. And uh, I say this because the community, when we reduce the budget, that means we cannot expect to ask some uh, budget performance. You cannot do that because we have to plan and then make a budget. We make a budget how? When we start by the priorities, it means we have to consider the priorities of our need or within our community. And uh, for our partner states, when they are operating the budget, they put the priorities. I think every partner state has to consider the community as a priority. If not, we are not we are going nowhere. Reason why, even if I agree with uh, my colleague uh, uh, Victor from uh, Burundi, but uh, uh, still Burundi is doing budget, is having priority within the country. The same as South Sudan. The same. That means there are some priorities for each country. We have to think to incorporate in our respective budget, the priority, not only in internal priority, but also to consider our, our community as a whole. I agree, and uh, we will be supporting either South Sudan or Burundi as a brother and a sister, but we have also to sustain this community and to keep it alive to keep it growing, to keep it as a real wish of our population, as a wish of ourselves. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, uh, it is uh, very, very difficult when we cannot think how to get internal alternative sustainable mechanism for fund funding. This problem uh, has been uh, for within the East African community 2009. And it has been uh, discussed even by the Minister of Finance. 
even many consultants have, have been doing this kind of uh, a problem to see how to sort out really uh, a, 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 a sustainable me, uh, mechanism for funding the community. I ask really uh, the chair council to see how to make uh, the colleague, the minister uh, within this community on how to move this matter and to sort out a, a very uh, a, good solution for the community. I thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Rijema. That's why we had to make you wrap up. You've given a, a good wrap up of the whole debate that we've had here. And that's why who wants always a prime minister, always one. Thank you for that contribution. Now, Honorable Members, I want you to agree with me that uh, we all agree that we should now stop the debate here and proceed to the next stage. Now I want to call upon the, the Honorable Chair, the Honorable Chair of the committee to, to give his reactions to the contributions from members and of course also acknowledge the members who have contributed to the debate. Honorable Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, I didn't have a chance to condole with the Right Honorable Speaker who lost his dear mother. Indeed, we condole with him and the family for that tragic, uh, for that tragic uh, occurrence. Uh, in the same spirit, I welcome our minister. We have already interacted in the Committee of General Purpose and is extremely resilient, very resilient and very pragmatic uh, as a member of council. I congratulate you for being sworn in. I also thank our chair council for always being there. But I'm extremely very delighted with the, our chair council, honestly. He has been there with us every time we have called him in the general purpose. He has come. He has never let us down. And uh, uh, I saw also Honorable Nubaru was around, but I think he left. But uh, of all the council members, I want to specifically thank the chair council for always being here to be with the committee and even so with the assembly and for supporting our views and aspirations as, as an assembly. Uh, Secretary General, we thank you so much uh, for always. Uh, for coming up with the budget, because SG had even put uh, uh, more money for contributions, but was chopped by F and A. And I'm convinced it was not even the council which chopped that money. It was F and A. Council could not get time in the two days to surely go through this budget. Uh, I, uh, in a special way, I want to thank all the members who have contributed to this debate. Everyone has supported the, the report. Maybe I will just answer a few clarifications from honorable members. Uh, indeed, the honorable order, uh, order, Jeremiah talked about the issue of uh, underfunding. Uh, Victor, the issue of uh, the sanctions on Burundi uh, not be able to pay. Uh, indeed, you know, there is already a decision of council regarding this matter of the partner states who failed to pay. So we are just urging council to implement their decision because it was already made by council and is already there. Uh, Honorable Ambassador Fatuma, uh, was, uh, she asked about uh, the issue of the budget ceiling. That's why it is very important for us to consult always because uh, when they are coming up with the budget, I think council and the secretariat should ensure that they consult uh, the, 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 the assembly and the committee because one process leads to another, and then you keep on haggling over, and yet would have resolved these issues earlier on. The issue of the budget ceiling, we don't have any law that talks about the budget ceiling. I've been perusing through our legal regime, unless I'm advised otherwise. We don't have a law that says that once council has put a certain amount, that the assembly cannot uh, adjust. And in any case, honorable members, you are aware that this budget was made before the corona pandemic. It was also made without anticipating that we have to vote on account. So it came, it, it came to increase because the council brought to us a supplementary budget. It brought to us a vote on account. It brought to us budget estimates beyond the date which is for the last financial year. So certainly there is no way the budget ceiling would be maintained without us doing our job. So we are, even now, as we are doing now, we are working now, the payment is not there. That's why we are including it in this budget. Um, honorable, honorable, honorable Leontine. Well, raised two issues. One was uh, the 44,000 
for the welfare of staff. We invited the secretariat, and those who are responsible, they refused to turn up to defend their budget. And yet the law provides that we have power to summon our heads of institutions and departments to come and defend their budget. So once you don't, they say equity aid is the vigilant, not the indolent. If you exclude yourself from the long arm of uh, the ambit of, of the law, then you cannot blame anyone for the failure on your part. They did not come, and therefore we found that that budget would be reallocated. But I urge them, I urge council to bring a supplementary budget. This Committee of General Purpose and this Assembly will not hesitate to support if we find that this money for the 4,000 is, is, is required. But for now it is impossible because it will, uh, it will have an impact on all the allocations we have done. The $100,000 for vehicles as a committee, we decided that this was not very urgent because we cannot have departments like Rigo, which is supposed to bring six bureaus to this parliament to develop programs of the assembly, and yet you are buying luxurious vehicles. If council wants again, they can bring a, a supplementary budget and be able to proceed. But under the circumstances, we would not have $100,000, and yet we wanted $60,000 to support legal and judicial affairs be able to proceed with the, uh, having all these uh, uh, legal instruments uh, come into force. Uh, otherwise, all the other members, the Honorable Mary talked about, uh, Commissioner, indeed, we tried to consult on the issue of, uh, the, uh, I mean, Honorable Poker, on the issue of uh, the, the welfare of the PAs, of our members with disability, and we found that the Commission had approved the four members. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure if Commission approves, then there will be no reason why General Purpose Committee would not support. Otherwise, I want to applaud the following members who have contributed to this debate. Honorable Karonzo Musioka, Honorable Wada Jeremiah, Honorable Happiness Wojiko, Honorable Aden Abdukadil, Honorable Victor, Honorable Ambassador Fatuma, Honorable Mariam Usi, Honorable Oda, Honorable Musamali Paul, Honorable Wanjikumuya, Honorable Christopher, Honorable Lemoyang Josephine, Honorable Mary Mujeni, Honorable Nuru, and Honorable Rujema. I hope I've not left anyone. Thank you so much. And I pray that Council, without any amendment whatsoever, uh, agrees to our recommendations and this House approves the report. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh... I now call upon the Chair Council and uh, just as a reminder, there are issues that were raised by members on uh, the health research institution that we have the justification for the budget cuts in light of the current challenges we have as a community, then reduction in the budget in view of current challenges, community growing versus budget cuts, then the funding mechanism, why not adopt AU, those were some of the the issues and then also what plan do we have for recovery of outstanding dues from member states? I just noted a few. And then why different reductions percentage between institutions? And then uh, alternative financing mechanism, when and how much? And then of course the concern from Honorable Christopher that heads of institutions are not around. Perhaps this is just a, uh, a concern that needs to be registered. And of course, others that you uh, you have taken note of, Honorable Chair Council, you can now make your your reply to this uh, debate. So welcome, Honorable Chair Council, and um, I want to thank you for the resilience, Honorable Chair Council. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, and uh, Honorable Members. <clears throat> uh, I think I will I answer this in two parts. First of all. Uh, parts where I have reservation on behalf of my colleagues, which we definitely have to go back and uh, consult with them. And the first one is um, on page 34, 6.7. Uh, the committee recommends uh, that a total sum of 1.3 million be secured from the general reserve. This one, I definitely um, I have a reservation. I will have to go back to the council and see how we handle this. The number two, uh, page 35, this is uh, point C, uh, the issue of plenary. I think, again, this was a council decision, so I'll have again to consult with my colleagues before this item can be announced, so I have um, a question on this. Then page 36. Um, this is on the issue of uh, 
our members, sawa, sawa. persons with disabilities, uh, requesting some money to help them, which I understand personally. Yeah, but again, this item has to go back again to the council because I won't capture this. Uh, then the other issue uh, that I have reservation on is on page 37. Uh, committee recommends uh, this is number six. Um, <laughs> there are a number of recommendations that are put across that require again uh, council pronouncement. So I definitely will have um, refer this to the council. I can take a decision here. Then on page 38, um, number nine. Uh, the total sum to that uh, 500, 308,000 owed to only Margaret Ziwa. Again, this is an issue that we have to refer to the council because it was not um, budgeted for or brought to our attention. When there was a speaker having said that, of course, these issues uh, have uh, reservation the same. The rest, um, I could go ahead, go ahead and see how we can accommodate them. But having said that, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, this budget was uh, prepared and endorsed by the Council. And of course, this was this took into account our situation, as I mentioned some time back, a uh, situation that's not normal, as you all of us know, where all countries are facing difficulties in finding finances to finance the activities, including our national budgets. And so the cut is against this background. Now, um, Honorable Speaker, when we came to the amount 97 million, we had, we had reasons for that. Of course, one was the issue of the pandemic that all of us know, but secondly, is the issue of absorption. And I think as members of the ELA, of course, part of our AEC uh, system, this is an issue that we need to look at. I was calculating, and honestly, at 40%, we are not being using uh, $40 million out of our budgets. So meaning that we have almost $50 million that's carried forward year after year. That's why we have to look for um, budget revisions and other uh, supplementaries that may be necessary to carry forward some money from one account to another account, if there is, if need be. So this, I think, is an issue that uh, we can think about. Number two, uh, when we are debating this budget, we also envisage the situation whereby some expenses that had been incurred before will not be incurred. For example, travel costs, podiums, um, and of course other costs. These could constitute savings that have been incurring some time back. So this type of money might be used to finance other activities that uh, face our community. And so um, my position is that we really uh, stick to the budget because the Act, uh, Article, Article 132 gives the powers of the council to set a limit. Of course, the limit is not stone cast. You can go back and revisit it in our revision due at first um, December this year. In the post, you can go back and see where you can locate uh, money from one area to another area, depending upon absorption. In fact, speaking as an ex Minister of Finance, this is very normal. A budget is not stone cast. You can locate money from less absorption activity to more absorption activity. So I would want to uh, believe that this I shall do in a budget. <clears throat> and so, uh, for me, and speaking, of course, on behalf of the Council of Ministers, I would beg that we stick within the amount that we have budgeted. And of course, if there's an addition, that can only be done either under supplementary or at the review budget that we're going to have uh, sometime in December 1st. Yeah. Having said this, um, let me congratulate my brother, Minister Zakir, but also ask him, ask his government and his colleague, Minister of Finance, to pay us our balances because this is money due to the institution. And as such, I think as a brother, it's good that he talks to his colleagues to make sure that Burundi pays uh, their contribution. Uh, Madam Speaker, 
Um, against this background, let me just uh, pinpoint some areas that you mentioned that we need to look at. There are some course areas mentioned by honorable ministers, so the honorable members of the um, I don't have to go to them because it's a, it's a long list. But let me just look at the issues that have been raised. One, the issue of health and research during the pandemic. This is a legitimate area that have noted. We could go back to our budget and see where we have some money uh, outstanding so that we can allocate this money as, as mentioned by Honorable Kennedy. Now, there is an issue that I think came up which, which is worth thinking about. We are financing our budget using donor funds. First of all, it's a wrong method of financing. Two, it's not sustainable. I know what donor funding means. And so, we may also look at other methods, like we have been uh, advocating to use in the AU, either percentage of imports, exports, whichever method uh, may, may solve this problem of financing that our institution uh, face. Um, so the issue of cutting from 8.2 to 7.2, for me, I have no problem because, as I said, during the budget revision, the difference will be taken care of. I think when we budgeted this, uh, we had this in mind that you could have some surplus from one sector and, of course, take it to another sector. Um, then the other issue that I think uh, came up uh, prominently uh, is the issue uh, faced uh, by, uh, of course, areas which have been mentioned, and I said, for areas that we can always think about this, but also we have asked SG to propose to us um, whether you call them punishments or whether you call them um, uh, sanctions that you can impose to those member states that have not been paying their dues on time. And I think SG has an obligation to write to the council or propose the council what sanctions we can impose to those member states that have not met their obligations as and when they fall due. Um, Honorable Speaker, I think the issue that also has been raised is uh, the issue to do with the purchase of vehicle that I think was mentioned shortly. I understand your concerns that this money should go to the payment of expenditure uh, due to the court, uh, our court. but this, this type of expenditure for us I think is important. As I mentioned, Yes, I've taken note of the issue raised in terms of financing our court, but as I said, it's possible to have some balances by 31st December, which can locate uh, to that item and still allow our DSG uh, to have uh, his vehicle. Um, I think overall, um, I would also wish to state, state here that uh, as we look for tantive financing, uh, as I mentioned shortly, of course, this is not going to be a short-term solution. The best solution would be, as I mentioned short, uh, shortly, is to get money from uh, internal financing mechanisms, that's from areas, to be able uh, to finance activities. And of course, I think including, as Honorable um, Somalia mentioned, building our own premises or buildings to be able uh, to avoid these rain, rains that are consuming uh, much of our money. So this could be an interesting uh, activity that we should, we should think about, and I definitely take to the council. Uh, I, of course, take note of the um, what you call underfunding of productive and social sectors, uh, which, again, uh, will be looked at under the revision budget, and I've taken note of this. I, I definitely make note to my colleagues and look at this issue to address this uh, misallocation of resources for deserving sector like social sectors, gender, uh, health, and, and the likes. Now, differences between reduction of 6% to 4% ETC. I think when we were cutting the budget, we had many parameters we are looking at. First of all, we are looking at the historical absorption of a given sector, how it has been absorbing the budget allocated to it. And so the cuts were, were almost took that trend. If one was not absorbing enough, the cuts, of course, uh, again went that route. But of course, as I said, this is a living document that we could definitely devise as and when uh, the situation allows in December 31st. Um, 
Then the other issue that um, uh, came to my attention, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, is the issue raised um, by <clears throat> a number of members. Of course, of course, we are very, and for good reasons, uh, who were very uh, clear in the, in, the, in the sense that we have to increase our budgets. And of course, I agree with them wholeheartedly. But of course, not now. I think only order brought it up. This budget has been cut for now. But next year, God willing, we are going to increase the budget. It's not that this is a final uh, situation as of now. It is, it is circumstantial. What we are having now is a circumstantial budget, taking into account the situation that we are facing right now. But come next year, we should be able to increase uh, this budget uh, maybe from 8 million, maybe to 10 million, depending upon what we agree between among ourselves in how, course, how our sectors grow. You may recall that our sectors, are not, some of them are not growing or are, are negative growth. So um, under those conditions, getting money even from internal resources is going to be difficult uh, for some countries. And so I think you need to bear with us that this is not possible right now, but as uh, they said, come next year, this, uh, this budget will be reviewed and we can increase from 8.2 up to 10 or plus, depending upon the needs of the community. Um, and so, Madam Speaker, I think I don't have to go through them because there are quite a number of issues that put together have been noted, and I take them, as I said, to my uh, colleagues to look at them and accommodate them accordingly. Of course, when we meet next time under budget revision or meet some review, these issues will have been taken care of. I submit, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair Council. Uh, and uh, I also want to thank the Honorable Chair and Honorable Members for the contributions we have made towards uh, this budget debate. Now, as we go into the next phase of supplying figures, I think let's take keen interest in what the Chair has said and also what uh, the Chair Council has said. So now I want to put the question that this assembly do resolve itself into a committee of ways and means to consider and approve the financial statements for the financial year 2020-2021, and a committee of supply to consider and approve the estimates of expenditure for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. <laughs> Yes, those against? The eyes have it. I see there are more for and uh, you against. The eyes have it. Now, members, we have sat here for quite some time, and I want to request that we allow our clerks to put, uh, put some few documents in order uh, for just five minutes, and then we resume to proceed with the Committee of the Whole House, which is the Committee of Ways and Means to supply the figures by vote. So just five minutes break and we'll be back here. Exactly five minutes. So we'll be back here by, by 7, 7, 17. 17 minutes past 7, we'll be back here. Yes, Madam Speaker, while you're removing the robe, we are giving you time to remove the robe so that when you sit in the committee without the robe, Oh. Mm. Who says so? No. That is not procedure. So so five minutes break, break, break and we will so resume. If you have, a, if you have the wheel. Is it is already late? Don't worry.
Minister of Ways and Means and Easy. Computer Supply. Uh, motion for approval of financial statements for the financial year 2020-2021. Chairperson, Chair Council. Chair, move the motion for adoption of the financial statement. Chair, yeah, no, he's not here, you know what? Honorable Chair Council, we are waiting for you to move the motion. Honorable well, Chair Council, for approval of the financial statement. Uh, Honorable Chair, I, may, I beg to move that in accordance with the provision of Article 132, put brackets 5 of the Treaty of the Law and Laws 76 of the of the Laws of the pro of Procedure, the Committee of Ways and Means uh, do consider and approve the financial statement. Honorable yeah, Speaker, we are not hearing. Sorry, members, uh, my microphone was off. I call your attention to this that I'm proposing a question here. That I now propose the question that the financial statements for the financial year 2020 2021 be approved. And I put the question that the, the financial statements for the financial year 2020-2021 be approved. Those in favor, raise your hands. There's an amendment to move by the chair. No. Those are against. No amendment. No amendment. No. Those are against, please. The eyes have it. <laughs> Uh, now, honour members, now we are going to, to the Committee of Supply where you are supposed to pronounce yourselves on the figures. Approval of the budget estimates for the financial year 2020-2021. Vote 001, the East African Community Secretariat. I now propose the question that the total sum of United States dollars, 48 million, 418,301 under vote 001 be provided for the expenses of the East African Community Secretariat, including the Defense Liaison Office and the Directorate of Customs and Trade for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that the total sum of United States dollars. 48,418,301 under vote 001 be provided for the expenses of the East African Community. Secretariat including the Defense License Office and the Directorate of Customs and Trade for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Those against, raise your hands. 
I see one hand for Honorable Nguaru. Mm -hmm. He was here. Okay, okay, okay. I think there's no hand here. The the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Vote zero zero two vote zero zero two, the East African Legislative Assembly. I propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars twenty three. Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Yes, Chair Council. Yes, um, 001, I have some reservations, Honorable Speaker. And the position of the Council is 48,564,401. Chair Council, I think the House has pronounced itself on this one. And uh, you can you can make a and maybe a motion for committal after. And maybe you can only move a motion for committal after we have supplied the figures, and then the house still decides. The house still decides, but now we are moving ahead to supply the figures. Then you can move a motion on recommittal, like you have alerted us now on vote zero zero one. So it will be one of those votes for recommittal. Okay, I now propose. The question that a total sum of United States dollars, 23,000, 23 million, sorry, 067,137 United States dollars and a vote 002 be provided for the expenses of the East African Legislative Assembly for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 23 million, 67,137 under vote 002 be provided for the expenses of the East African Legislative Assembly for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. Aye. Question on procedure. Chair mm. Council? Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, only the speaker, uh, the council proposes that 002 stays at 16,785,725. 16, I beg to submit. He has to formally remove a motion. I mean, that figure. Oh, no. No, 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 no. There's a procedure in the house. No. There is a procedure, honorable members. Let's listen. The honorable chair will remove. A motion after he is only giving us notice, but we have to go ahead and supply the figures. You can move an amendment now. You can move an amendment now, and then we either say and we pronounce us. By the way, I think that's the best to go. Legal. Yes, um, Madam Speaker, I thought you. I, I thought by procedure you read this, and I hope everybody is seeing me, and then uh, the, the general purpose committee can. Uh, Suggest whatever figure they want to suggest there, but it is this that is guiding you. It's not the report. Instead of uh, the report, because it looks like you are reading the report instead of this. What is what that? Is this? The legal counsel to the community. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, uh, when we when the the council presents the budget for debate. <laughs> I mean, and the, the chairperson comes up with a, a report and even figures for supply, which have been debated upon and agreed by the House. The only duty I have here as speaker is to supply the figures that have been debated upon by the House. Or else you are proposing that we just rubber stamp. In fact, there was no need for this debate. That's what you're proposing, uh, uh, CTC. Shame, but CTC, the report, shame. The, the, the figures have been processed by the House, and uh, matters have been taken into consideration. For example, I want to give you, I'm not debating, but I want to give you an example. That uh, these figures, like now the sitting by the, the Assembly, we have had so many sittings outside outside this budget that was proposed and those sittings have to be catered for and the only way we can 
Madam, Madam we, Speaker. Can, we can handle them is by inclusion in the budget. Secondly, Madam Speaker, information. this was also, I'm communicating, Honorable okay. Makame, I'll give you. Secondly, the other consideration is that the council itself gave a go ahead to, I'm giving an example, gave a go ahead to the assembly, in fact, to the clerk, to come up with figures uh, mm. for the outstanding areas that should be included in the budget. Now, in the budget that was given to the house, those figures were not there. Yes. And now, since it was a council directive, they have now been included. That's why there are changes in these figures. And the report of the, uh, the chairperson committee of general purpose has taken into account those directives and those challenges that we went through that now have resulted into the inclusion of some of these figures into uh, into the, the final budget proposal. The second, some amendments have been made, and these amendments are part of these figures. So these are the figures we are supplying in accordance with the debate that the House went through. So now, what we shall do is to propose the figures and put the question, but the Chair Council will be allowed to, to move an amendment that will still be subjected to the House the House vote. And if the House votes yes, yes, the amendment by Chair Council will be carried. If the, if the House votes otherwise, then the amendment by the committee will be carried. That's how the procedure is, because this is a committee for, of supply. <clears throat> Let's 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 go. Let's let's continue, Madam Speaker. Now I gave an opportunity to the chair council to move an amendment to vote zero. In fact, we can start with let's go by vote. Vote zero zero two because I already left vote zero zero one. The chair council can move an amendment which will be subjected to the house because this is the, the committee of supply. Chair Council, <clears throat> on vote 002. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the position of the Council is that uh, this item will be 16,755,725 uh, dollars. Thank you. Honorable members, the Chair Council, uh, we need a, a secondment for the proposal made by Chair Council. Any secondment? I see. I second him. A honorable Chair Council from, Honorable Member of the Council from Burundi. Yes. yes, I see the Secretary General. Yes, he seconded. Now we put it to vote. These are not the voters. We put it to vote. The proposal by the committee chairperson here is for the supply. Your first proposal, the latest proposal motion. Debate. Are you Clark, stop confusing, Madam Speaker. Let's vote. Aye. Honorable, Honorable Nkuhi, please. We, we are mm. proceeding well. <laughs> Don't worry. No, uh, Honorable, Madam Speaker. We are doing very well, Madam Speaker. Let us just continue. Let's vote. <laughs> yeah, I've been guided by the clerk here, table that uh, now that uh, there's a new proposal by the chair council, we need justification in the circumstances that have been uh, on the floor. That chair council justifies why we should, he's proposing the figure 16, 755725 instead of the figure that was proposed by the chair of 2306737. Honorable Chair Council, justification. Uh, Honorable Speaker, as I mentioned shortly, I heard your views regarding the other, the other payments that constitute the difference between what I'm proposing and what the GP committee is proposing. And as I said, these other payments are going to be passed to, to the, the Council of Ministers 
and we shall give a report accordingly. So as the chair of the council, I cannot commit beyond this. I beg to admit. Now, Chair Council, I'm wondering whether you want us to proceed the way we are proceeding, that we pass this budget. Are you suggesting that we halt the process, the budget process now, that we don't pass the budget at all as we wait for the council to sit? I don't know when. No, Honorable Speaker, there are some items that we are, we are okay with, with, that's the GP committee and the council ministers. There are some that we need to go back and have money for from the revised budget. So that's those that I said have some reservations on passing now before consultation. Madam Speaker, if we are passing, let's pass. Uh, Honorable, Honorable Chair Council, I think we need to understand the procedure very right here. Even one objection being referred to council means we cancel the whole process here. That we do not want this, this is your budget. This is that you and we are not in a hurry to pass this we budget today. Again, Madam you know, but uh, here this is the committee of the committee of the whole house. Wait a minute. And it is this house that they has the the powers to appropriate. And we are now doing appropriations for the various votes. Reasons have been given, and some of them actually come from the council. So I think I want subject this to members. I don't know what members are saying. Clarification, Madam Speaker. Yes, Honorable Order. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. And uh, I think you are right that uh, at this point we, we become clear on uh, the procedure. And I would want to get a clarification. Um, one is that um, in the report, which we, we all supported in uh, the GP report, uh, there was some areas where we requested uh, that money to come from the reserve fund. And I believe, though I haven't gone into line by line, that that is what the chair council is bringing in, that uh, we had a request by the uh, by the report of the assembly now, it's not the report of the NMO of the GP, that we requested the council to look into this matter, and but we proposed where this money should come from. Uh, but by the procedure, uh, the, the chair council is here representing the other council members whom they haven't met to consider our request. And that's where I'm, 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 I'm trying to get some uh, clarification because uh, I remember very well where when I was in the GP committee, uh, we had the same exercise in Nairobi, but the good enough, because we were there physically, we had time to engage the whole council for each and every, if I remember well, for the for the for the areas uh, where point of order, Madam Speaker. The... Point of order, Madam Speaker. I want can to. I, uh... Can I finish? No, I'm 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 putting a point of order. Po po point so of order, yes, Honourable Yamatia. I want to tell the member on the floor, uh, Honourable Order, that we also engage uh, all members of council. Actually, all of them, six of them, on Monday, and that is why the the committee are confident and I like it because even the chair of the council himself was there. And all these things were brought before uh, the, the, the floor on that day. And the resolution made to the extent that we are putting in this report was is so valid and honorable uh, uh, order. There's, I don't think there's anything uh, so much about it. I can see you are drifting from your own uh, fear of unknown probably, because I wish you would have gone through the main budget line by line, as you say, you've not gone through because it is well elaborated. Madam Chair, Madam... Can you, put, um, put you, can you put across your point of order, please? Is it in order then, Honorable, uh, uh, Madam Chair, for Honorable uh, Order to try in a manner that we, 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 the committee did not conclude his work well? Thank you. <laughs> honorable Madam members, uh, honorable members, 
Madam this Chair, if sitting, I can. This is a sitting. No, no, I'm answering now. This I'm answering the point of order. This is a sitting of the whole house. It is plenary. And by our uh, the provisions of our rules of procedure, all members of council are supposed to be here. They are supposed to be here. And uh, I'm made to understand they were also present when the committee was presenting this uh, alterations to the budget. So the only option I have now is to proceed with the committee of supply and supply these figures. And then after supply, then uh, we'll see how to go about it. Now, I want to... Madam Chair, I think I, yes, I was now, on the floor before that. Honorable order, I've already ruled on your matter. Yes. No, so Madam now, Chair. I'm going to put to vote. Madam my Chair, members, but I think figure, you, are, you are taking my... Honorable order, I have ruled. There was a point of order on the issue you're proposing. Point and of the order, is, I have the right to explain the point of order. Which is was raised. I'm me. the speaker to have explained, not to you, Honorable Order. The speaker has explained. Hmm. Now, Honorable Members, I'm putting this matter to not question to you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Order, Order, I I believe you understand the rules of procedure of the House. When there is a point of order raised, I do. It it is the speaker who answers the point of order. And what I know very well here is that when I was answering that point of order, your procedural matter actually was also answered in it because you were bringing a procedural matter of the non presence of council members to handle this matter. But the issue is by our own very rules of procedure, they are supposed to be here. Yeah. Secondly, yeah. they met with the Committee on General Purpose. And by that, I'm left with no option but to put this matter of figures to the House to determine. Because there will be a figure supplied by the, the, the which we are going to supply, and a figure proposed by the Chair Council. Then we put it to we put it to the House to determine which figure we go by. So that is how we are going to proceed now. Otherwise, we will not conclude this matter. Because if we say the Council is to meet, I mean, Chair, the council the is budget, part of, and this is the budget by the council. So, can we proceed? I'm going to put this. Yeah, let's let's to... proceed. Network is. Uh, honorable Chair. speaker. Chair, point of question. order. Chair. Point of yes, order. Yes, honorable Chair. Fatuma. I don't know whom you are ordering now. Who is on the floor? <laughs> There's nobody on the floor for your point of order. Point of information, then, Chair. <laughs> All the same, there is no member on the floor for you to inform. So let me now proceed, unless the council chair is objecting to this method of methodology. Honorable Speaker, uh, some yes. clarification. Yes. I think when, I'm, when my colleagues met uh, the other day, they did not meet to, they did not endorse the figures. I think they were present here, the figures. The idea they should have been here to endorse these figures. So, and I've made very clear that. We are going through into the issue that have raised it in, in our revised budget and accommodate them accordingly. Okay. Yes, Honorable Chair. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Honorable Speaker. I would want to move on the point of procedure that this is a formal sitting of the assembly and the members of council are members of this assembly. Uh, Thank if, you, Chair. If, if, if the Speaker invites members to come and participate in this process, it is an abdication of duty for any council member not to attend this assembly. That is why we expect them that when we are at this stage, they are able to reply. But if they have not come to the assembly, it is not our responsibility procedurally to drag them to the assembly. And we cannot wait for them for who have committed the uh, unlawful act of not attending, that we should wait for them to answer our queries, our issues when they are supposed to be formally here. Right, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move. Thank you, Chair. Madam Speaker, let's proceed. Procedure, 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 Madam yes, Speaker. What procedure now? Honorable members, procedure. unless we, Honorable members, can we proceed with the Committee of Supply? Yes, 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 thank yes. you. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. Now I, I want to put yes, a question. Yes, Madam Speaker. Yes, let's yes, proceed. We proceed. Members, we please proceed. let's observe decorum in the house. Please let's not talk. Uh, I believe now we are quiet. Now, I want to put the question. First of all, for the Honorable Chair Council has justified the 16, and I'm now going to put the question. And I'll request the clerk by show of hands to count. To count members, four and members against. Now, there is a proposal here by, by the Honorable Chair Council that we reconsider the position of the General Purpose Committee and instead commit the figure of $16 million, $755,755 755, as the figure to supply for the the for vote zero zero two i'm putting it to vote those in favor raise your hands by country please clerk count in favor of the proposal by the chair council yeah, that's not our proposal <laughs> it is not the our house has to pronounce yeah. itself Yes. That is the proposal of the against council. The, the, the proposal no. by chair council of the committee. No. It's against no. the committee chair. No. Against the committee chair of committee no. of all the people. No. Raising no. Their hand. No. Members, please listen to me carefully. I've figures here to supply. There is a proposal by the chair council reduce. to reduce. Now, those for reduction, those for oh, for those against. Now, when there is the proposal for reduction is, is rejected by the House, then we shall go by the, the, the figures which have been proposed by the chair of the committee. So now my question is, those for reduction, as per chair council? Zero. Put up Zero, your hands. Madam. Zero. Clark, Please make the observation. Zero. Chairperson, uh, because uh, I cannot see all the hands, then maybe we go by partner states. I start with the Republic of Burundi. The mm. Republic of Burundi, <laughs> those in favor, no, no member from the Republic of Burundi, Republic of Kenya. Mm. Uh, I'm not seeing any uh, from the Republic of Kenya. <clears throat> Republic of Rwanda. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Chair, Council, we let's finish we the voting are, we are process voting. because Chair, we, are we are now voting. voting. We are voting, yes. I'm not seeing any member from the Republic of Rwanda, Republic of South Sudan. Can we, can we hear the question again? We are voting for reduction. Chair, Council's proposal to reduce our budget. No, one of them here, I'm the one to say that. Those in favor, no, they need to know, raise their hands. Honorable members, let's understand this one. To reduce our Before budget. Before I supply any outside. figure, there is another figure that has been brought by Chair Council. And now this is the figure I'm putting to vote. Whether you are for this figure or not. So the moment those again is carried the day, I will go and read. The figure proposed by general the general the purpose committee. committee. So, honorable order, that is what I'm trying to do here. Uh, right, honorable speaker, maybe because after clarification, I start afresh. Republic of Burundi, I'm not seeing any member. Republic of Kenya, I'm not seeing any member. Republic of Rwanda, I'm not seeing any member. Republic of South Sudan, I'm not seeing any member of the United Republic of Tanzania. I'm not seeing any member of the Republic of Uganda. Uh, Honorable Speaker, there is no member who is voting in favor of the proposal by the council. I submit. Honorable Speaker. So that motion has been lost. It's difficult. That speaker. motion has been lost. Honorable Speaker. Proceed. Yes, Chair Council. Proceed, Chair. Members, Honorable let's speaker. listen. Let's listen to each other. We have yes, Chair Council. I don't think 
I don't think we can take on the powers of the council. That's impossible because the powers of the council are given by Article 132. Is that they are very clear. They are the ones who will to look for money and give to the institutions. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> uh, Madam Speaker, the the Madam, <laughs> Madam Speaker, I beg that I consult my colleagues before I can approve these figures. There's no point of approving mean? them by one vote or one, one, one uh, chair, chair of the, the council. It does not help us at all. Mm -hmm. I beg but the chair council, let's support. read this. Let, 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 let's read the chair. rules you are quoting. The rules, the chair procedure. No, no, no. Honorable members, let's wait. Let's read the rules, the honorable read chair council. You can read those rules he's quoting. Yes. And also read the, read the rules which apply to the assembly, perhaps, so that we get the balance there. Yeah, okay, yeah, let me just read them. 49, article, article 49. Article 132 of the Treaty on the Financial Provision of the Community does not confer on the Assembly a mandate to increase the partner state contributions to the EAC budget. Similarly, neither the if budget... If you could read it, Babatim Chair Council, please. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, the article is as follows. Article 132 of the, <clears throat> of the Treaty on the Financial Provisions of the Community does not confer on the Assembly mandate to increase partner state contributions to the EC budget. Similarly, neither the Budget Act 2008 nor the financial rules and regulation 2012 have made any such a provision to enable the Assembly to uh, do what's being proposed today. Number two, the Assembly is aware of the separation of powers and provisions of the Article 9 into bracket 4 of the Treaty the effect is that all organs and institutions shall perform their functions and act within the limits of the powers conferred upon them by or under the treaty. Partner states have already agreed upon the budget through the process provided for in the treaty and the Budget Act and the financial rules and regulation in 20th quarter. The figures were in any case I mean, take into account the financial situation in the partner states, which has been made worse by the COVID. Having said, having said this, the, the, the Council of Ministers would definitely, as I mentioned shortly, take our recommendations and adjust the figures in a supplementary budget. Thank you. I, I, pro, I submit, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Point of procedure. Procedure, Madam, procedure, Madam, Madam Speaker. Speaker. We've already voted. Proce procedure, Madam Speaker. We've already voted. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Procedure. One of our members, please hold on. Just a moment. Madam Speaker, procedure. You said, hold on. You read it. Honorable members, I think I'm going to request the clerk to read verbatim. Article 132 on the budget, on the financial provisions, and also Article 2 and 5 and 4. Chair. Members, Madam please, Speaker, let's have one meeting. Two so the clerk is going five. to read Bamba Thank you, right, Madam Speaker, Speaker. The network has started to shake. Right, Honorable Speaker and all my members. Article 132, uh, clause 2 specifically says. <coughs> read it all. No. Article 32, the entire 132. Article 30, 132 talks about the budget. It provides a, as follows. There shall be a budget for the organs and institutions of the community, save for the accounting institutions. Two, subject to this treaty, a budget for the community for each financial year shall be prepared by the, sec by the Secretary General for consideration by the Council and approval by the Assembly. All the three, all expenditures of the community in respect of each financial year shall be considered and approved by Council and shall be made from the budget. Four, subject, the budget of the community shall be funded by equal contributions by the partner states and receipts from regional and international donations, donations and any other sources as the council, as may be determined by the council. The resources of the community shall be utilized to finance the activities of the community as shall be determined by the assembly on the recommendation of the council. The budget and accounts of the community shall be kept and maintained in the United States dollars. 
Seven, the financial of the community shall run from the 1st of July to the 30th of June. Article 49 of the treaty specifically talks about the functions of the assembly, but as far as the budget is concerned, Article 49 2 says that the assembly shall debate and approve the budget of the community. I submit one of chair. One of chair. I think we've all heard that uh, those provisions and uh, the reason this assembly exists is to consider. And of course, in consideration, there will be variations. There may be reductions. There may be additions. Or else we would just be leaving this budget to the council, and the council just brings it to lay on the table, and we pass it. But because we... Honorable Fatuma, please hold on. But because there's a provision for debate and consideration, my interpretation is that just like we follow the the no. the system of the assembly chair, just like we follow the Commonwealth parliamentary system, is the system we are following here. And I believe this is what we have always also been witnessing in our assemblies, that a budget is brought, it is debated and considered and uh, amendments made. So I would like to proceed as we had already started. That chair, now that the, point, the, the, chair. Chair. Now, members, can we proceed? Otherwise, I won't take the whole day here. Chair, so, I, I, chair also proceed. Article 14. Is very relevant. And the clerk should have read that article 14C. You read it. <laughs> Chair, Article 14C. Article 14 talks of functions of the council. And 3C says, subject to this treaty, the, 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 the council gives the direction of partner state and to all other organs and institution of the community other than the summit, the court, and the assembly. Yes. Chair, that clearly tells you Chair. independent. Can we proceed now? Chair. Okay, now. Proceed. Now that the proposal, Madam members, Madam Chair, members Chair, meeting, proceed. we are proceeding. Chair. Can we proceed, members? Honorable Point of members, clarification, let's Chair. proceed. Honorable okay. Speaker, we proceed. Honorable members, can you proceed? Yes, we proceed, Madam Speaker. Madam Chair, yes, Madam Speaker. You mute your microphone, please. Mute your then microphone. Can you mute your microphone? I now propose, I'm moving on vote 002. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 23 million, 67,137 under vote 002, be provided for the expenses of the East African Legislative Assembly for the Point of Information, Chair. I Point of Information, Chair. That a total sum of United States dollars, 23,067,137 yes, under vote 002, be provided for the expenses of the East African Legislative Assembly for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. And I want the clerk, please, to count by this member This is state. our proposal, member. This is ours. This is our proposal. Count by Raise member state. Raise your hand. Honorable Fancy, you're out of order, please. Just raise your hand. Honorable uh, Chairperson. An, by an, member an, state. An, an, Honorable Chair, I start with the Republic of Burundi. I want to know from the Republic of Burundi who are supporting the motion. The Republic of Burundi. Count the numbers. I, I, I think all members from the Republic of Burundi are supporting the motion. How many? Count the numbers, please. <laughs> Give us the figure. Give us the figure, please. Honorable members from the Republic of Burundi, I don't see all of them. Can you please assist me by telling how many of you are supporting? God, I don't, I don't see them, all of them, Madam I'm Speaker. I'm only seeing four. Nine. 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 Yes. Eight. We are eight. 
So all all of me, all all eight members in, in Burundi are supporting the motion. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, we go to Republic of Rwanda. Republic of Rwanda. Yeah. How many? Then uh, I'm seeing four from the Republic of Rwanda who are supporting. But there is one sitting in Arusha. You are, I hope you are not leaving him out. He is not in the he is not in the chamber right now. So four members from Republic of Rwanda are supporting. Uh, Republic of Kenya. I'm seeing three. One, two, three. Yeah, three. Four. Plus uh, the other one there. I'm seeing four, four members from the Republic of okay. Kenya. I'm here. I'm not there. Yes. Yes, is also there. Yes. So, yes. 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 Come put me on the picture. Black, Come even even our has just called me and he said he's voting. He's voting for. Yeah, put us on the picture. Yeah, out of order. We are out of order. We are out of order. We are out of order. Four members from five members from. No, this is a four. Uh, you, we go to the public of Uganda. We are not five. We are not five. We are seven. See Nur. See Canada, see Fatuma, she is speaking here. Yes. And yeah, I saw it yeah. in, in LA4. We have counted it. <laughs> members, so, yeah. on, only members in the chambers are being counted. <laughs> if members are not in the chambers, please, they will not be counted. <laughs> so Fatuma we have five. Chamber, and Honor Bonuru is in the chamber. Yeah, we have counted him. We have counted Honor yeah. Bonuru. We get to How five. Many Kenya? How, How many Kenya? Five, five, five Kenya. And Kennedy? It's not in, it's the, not chamber. in the chamber. Kennedy is in the chamber. Honorable <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Kennedy, are you in the chamber? Can you raise your hand? Mushoka has said he has been disconnected he was trying to... In, so please, do not talk of a member who is not there. He was trying to to support. So, Kennedy so, Mushoka is not there, please. Honorable yeah. member. We go to the Republic of Uganda. Republic of Uganda, one, two... Republic of Tanzania? Uganda. Where is Mujeng? Uganda. Honorable I'm seeing two, two, two from the Republic of Uganda. There's one of Mary also somewhere. Yeah, it's not the I don't remember we don't we don't see Anna <laughs> Mary Mujeng. Maybe she is the speaker. <laughs> you voted so the from Republic of Uganda. Uh, the Republic of South Sudan. <laughs> Republic of South Sudan. One. That is one in the order. Okay. Yeah. Then one in Kenya. So one in Kenya. Two. Kenya two. Uh, uh, is Captain in Nairobi. We are we are seeing the we are seeing two member from and we don't see the rest of the chapter South Sudan. We only see the one in honorable Dr. Oda and the, the one who is in Kenya. Yeah. 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 Honorable Mr. Club, we are three sitting here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right here. Yeah. 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 Three. Five. So uh, we have five, yeah. five for the Republic of South Sudan. Five members of the Republic of South Sudan. How many from South Sudan? Five. 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 United Republic of Tanzania. I'm here, number one. United Republic of Tanzania. Fancy number one. Are they, are they all answer? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is Is it? 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 Is
We have yes, counted you, Honorable Happiness. Mr. Council, can I conclude with the voting process? Then I'll come to your point of procedure. 13. Those against? 22. Mm -hmm. Let us Plus chair know how many were supporting it. 30. Eh? 30 members. Uh, Honorable Chair, 30. we go to those who are against. I start with the Republic 30. of Burundi. 34. Those those who are against it, no member because all members in the public Burundi voted for Republic of Kenya. No one. I, I don't see anybody. Republic of uh, Rwanda. I see one, two, three, three Republic of Rwanda. Uh, Republic of South Sudan. <laughs> No, no. Republic of United Republic of Tanzania. No. Uh, Republic of Uganda. No. So, on, uh, right honorable speaker, uh, chair, three members are opposing, 30 members are supporting. I submit. Okay, thank you, Clark. Uh, so those in favor have it. Yes. Chair Council. Honorable Speaker, I think we have to be clear at this point. The role of different organs of, the, of our community. The Secretariat, which does the preparation. There is the Council, which does the consideration. There is the Parliament, which does the approval. It seems that the parliament is doing the three phases or the three parts of the process. And I believe, in my opinion, we are getting it to break. Number one. Number two, even in the, in the English system, I've been Minister of Finance, there is no way the parliament can increase the budget of growth to the parliament. They approve it and make adjustments after it's been approved. I have never seen a budget being refused in the parliament or increase the parliament by the, the party, I have not seen that myself. No, I've been in social finance. And my budget, I've been in the initiative. You have never been in Procedure, Procedure, Honorable Speaker. We have voted already. Madam Chair, let's proceed. This minister was not in the Members, please, let's listen to each other. The Chair Council is speaking. Procedure, Honorable Speaker. Yes, the Honorable Namara. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I would want to bring the attention of Council and other members that uh, the treaty for the establishment of the East African community is the grand norm. It provides for principles and certain laws, but you cannot implement the treaty without operationalizing it through subsidiary legislation. That's why we have the Budget Act. That's why we have the financial rules and regulation. And when you're interpreting or construing any provision of the treaty, you must look at it as a whole. Don't look at one provision and you quote it in exclusion of others. For example, uh, Article 14 provides the powers of, of uh, the powers of, uh, of council in as far as being the policy organ and what they can do. They can give directives to all organs and institutions, except for EYALA, Summit, and the African Court of Justice. Number two, the Article 132 you are quoting also provides about the powers of EYALA in terms of uh, appropriation. When you go to Article 49, again provides the powers of EYALA in regard to budget. When you go to the Budget Act, it is very clear that once council has brought the figures to parliament, they refer, the parliament will, will discuss, debate, and appropriate. The financial rules provide that parliament has powers of reviewing the budget that has been brought by council. So all that one gives powers to parliament to appropriate as it views possible. So those are the mandates that we all have. We are all complementary, uh, uh, chair council. It's a shared mandate. Uh, only was uh, uh, point of, point of procedure. Point of procedure. The budget is a process. Point of I would procedure. advise, let the assembly do its work. This budget will ultimately go Point to the, the summit members for, for ultimate assent. So at that stage, Chair Council, you can interject. And the, the, if, chair, if the summit deems it fit to reverse the budget to the assembly or to the, to the council, then there we shall consider. But for today, we have to pass a budget. 
for today we have to pass a budget and this is your budget chair council that's what i would advise what we pass here is not the ultimate because it has to be assented to by our members of the summit so let the assembly including you you are observing perhaps you will advise summit otherwise but for now we are going to pass the budget and the proposals as they have been considered so by, by the council and the, and the budget committee so can you proceed on the Yes, Chair, let's proceed. Vote number three. First, please wait. Uh, Honorable Dubai, Honorable Member of the Council was raising an issue, and I want to listen. Let's listen to him, Honorable Members. But I've guided. That's how we're going to proceed. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, Honorable Chair. I just want to echo what the Council Chair has just reiterated. If you read Article 132, sub Article 2, in terms of the budget process, there are three procedures there. Number one is preparation of the budget, which is the function of the secretariat. Number two, consideration of the budget, which is the mandate of the council. And number three, which is an approval of the budget, which is a sole mandate of the assembly. Now, what was tabled through the, pap the, the order paper today, what was tabled was what was considered by the council after preparation by the secretariat. It is the function or the duty of the assembly to approve it or not to approve it. Mm -hmm. Going back into reallocations, to me, that is a consideration. That's my interpretation. That's a consideration. I'm afraid we may spend all this time, we may go to the summit, and we may come back, which to me, is a wastage of time. Okay. I beg to submit. Okay, it's okay. okay Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. I've taken into I've taken into oh. consideration. Oh. Oh. Members, please. Uh. Members, can we talk? Can yeah, we, have we move one on? We move. Speaker, no, we have one 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 yeah. Allow me to make my reply to the member of the council. We have listened to your proposals, and this is exactly what we've been reading. And uh, the only option we have as a house is to proceed in accordance with our rules of procedure and also by the provisions of the same treaty you are quoting. And then the process of whether the summit will assent to it or not is also part of the process. So let's proceed. And then when we reach that stage, the summit will determine whether to assent or not. It will revert back to the house and we make other considerations. So, Clark, vote 003. Vote, vote, zero, vote zero, zero 003, the East African Court of Justice. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 4,198,406, under vote 003, be provided for the expenses of the East African Court of Justice for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question. That the total sum of United States dollars four million one hundred and ninety-eight thousand four hundred and six thousand under vote zero zero three be provided for for the expenses of the East African Court of Justice for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor say aye or raise your hands, put up your hands. Um, there is disturbance, right, honorable. Honorable Fatuma, please, Honorable Fatuma Ibrahim, please, I think it's coming from yeah. your side. Can you switch your oh, Yes. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Those are, we are in the voting process. Let me proceed, and then Chair Councilor will give you. We are voting. can proceed when he has the, yeah. Okay, Chair, Chair Council. Honorable Speaker, the position of the Council is the vote of 3 million. 
970,406. I submit. Is, is okay, the chair council has made the proposal. Just to move the motion to amend. And uh, you, you, you oh. mm -hmm. chair council. The procedure is that he makes a motion. To you know, we are, this is a, a house of uh, debates. Whatever proposal you are bringing now is again a subject of debate. So you have to put, put, move a proper motion for this figure and the justification and then the house debates and we put the the figure to vote just like the what we have just done chair council so can you move a motion uh honorable speaker I, I i beg that we we consult again as i mentioned earlier on before this can be passed because there's some amendments we can allow and others that we think we, they are not within the, 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 the powers of the council to accept. I submit. Members of the assembly, I now put the question. Well, uh, the figures as proposed by chair council. I want to put the question to you members for adoption or otherwise. So those in favor, raise your hands. Zero. Those against, the nays have it. So Chair Council, this figure, figure has been rejected by the members of the assembly. And I now go ahead to put the question for the supply. I will now put the question that the total sum of United States dollars, 4,198,406 under vote 003 be provided for the expenses of the East African Court of Justice for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. Those against? Can you see my hand? <laughs> yes, we have seen. Okay, the eyes have it. Vote 004, the Lake Victoria Basin Commission. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 8,380,057, under vote 004, be provided for the expenses of the Lake Victoria Basin Commission for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 8,380,057 United States dollars under vote 004 be provided for the expenses of the Lake Victoria Basin Commission for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable Speaker. Yes, Chair Council. The council concedes this figure. Uh, thank you, Chair Council. Yes, those in favor, raise your hands. <laughs> if he has considered, there's no need to vote. There's no need to those vote. Against... Count by two hands. Those against, please. I'm not counting those against. The, the eyes have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Move the next vote. Vote 005. Vote 005, the East African Science and Commission. Members, can you mute your microphones, please? Only one can mute your microphone. Can you mute your microphone, please? Now, honorable members, I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 1 million. 536,751 under vote 005 be provided for the East African Science and Technology Commission yes, for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that the total sum of United States dollars 1,536,751 under vote 005 be provided for the East African Science and Technology Commission 
for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. <laughs> Madam Speaker. Yes, Chair. Yeah. Yeah, yes, the, the Council consider the figure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Council. Raise your hands. Uh, council didn't support others. <laughs> Members, please, decorum, observe decorum. Those against? Vote, uh, vote 006. No, the, 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 the eyes have it. Vote 006. Vote 006. <laughs> the East African Society Commission. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars. 1,399,318 under vote 006 be provided for the expenses of the East African Kiswahili Commission for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that a total sum of United States dollars 1,399,318 under vote 006 be provided for the expenses of the East African Kiswahili Commission for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. Yes, Chair oh, Council. The, the Council concedes the figure. Thank you, Chair Council. Those in favor, raise your hands. Raise. Those against, raise your hands. <laughs> The eyes have it. Vote 007, the East African Health, Com Health Research Commission. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 1,879,600 under vote 007, be provided for the expenses of the East African Health Research Commission for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that the total sum of United States dollars, 1,879,600 under vote 007 be provided for the expenses of the East African Health Research Commission for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hand. Madam Speaker, the council concedes the figure. Thank you. Those in favor, raise your hands. Yes, those against? Those against? The eyes have it. Vote 008, the East African Competition Authority. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, one million. 128,240 under vote 008 be provided for the expenses of the East African Competition Authority for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that the total sum of United States dollars 1,128,240 under vote 008 be provided for the expenses of the East African Competition Authority for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. Chair Council. Madam Speaker, the Council concede the figure. Thank you. Those in favor, raise your hands. Those against, the ayes have it. Vote 009. I now, please, honorable members, mute your microphones, please. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 10,977,276, under vote 009, be provided for the expenses of the Inter-University Council for East Africa for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 10 million, 977,276 under vote 009 be provided for the expenses of the Inter-University Council for East Africa for the financial year 2020-2021.
Council Madam Chair. Speaker, uh, the Council considers the item. Thank you. Honorable members, those in favor, raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Those against? <laughs> the eyes have it. Vote zero vote zero one zero Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars three million seventy seven thousand nine hundred thirty four under vote zero one zero be provided for the expenses of the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 3,077,934 under vote 010, be provided for the expenses of Lake, Lake, Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization for the financial year 2020-2021. Council Chair. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, the Council is okay with the figure. Thank you. Honorable members, those in favor, raise your hands. Apple, one or two. <laughs> those against? The ayes have it. Motion, yes. motion for the House to resume. Chair. Chair, Council. No. Uh, no, um, Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the House do resume and the Committee of Supply of the Supply and the Committee of Ways and Means report there too. I beg to move. Honorable Chair, Council, you remember we stood over vote 001 and uh, this is the time now before we proceed before we we proceed this item is now under debate and we consider it honorable chair council chair council what is the one madam speaker 001, the position of the council is 48,564 million, 500, 48 million, 504,401. I beg to submit. A justification, Honorable Chair Council, because we now have to put it uh, for debate by members. It's the only vote that has not been, uh, has not been supplied. Yes, Honorable Speaker, in our last council meeting, we did urge the council to, be, to go into a cost-cutting mode and introduce some expenses to bring the budget to the lower than the previous year. And this is what we are proposing, Madam Speaker. Uh, the proposal by the chair of the committee is 48418301. So I think we are in agreement since you're saying we are in a cost-cutting mode for this specific vote. So we shall proceed to supply 4841 Thank you. I now Madam propose Speaker, the question. 48,564 Honorable Chair, your justification does not agree with the figures you're reading. The justification you are giving us agrees with the figures the Chair has presented. Honorable Chair Council. Yeah, that's a fine chair. So, yeah. Clarification here, Chair. Yes, Honorable Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Chair Council. Address the chair, ma'am. Chair. You're addressing the chair. Yes, Honorable Chair of the committee and uh, this matter I'm bringing it to, to the attention of the chair council. Chair council, uh, one of the items which we are budgeted for uh, under the secretariat was uh, recruitment. And uh, that item was reconsidered 
because of your position, the position of council was that we hold recruitment. And that money therefore was reduced from the secretariat, rationalized it to other uh, priorities, and halted the process of recruitment. Now, if you say that we restate the budget as it is, don't you think that uh, that item again will, 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 will has to be funded when we are supposed to remove it? So the clarification point I'm seeking here is that how do you want us to treat such a matter? Point uh, of procedure. Ideally, it reduces on your budget. Point of you procedure, it. Chair. Thank you. Chair, yeah, council has to answer. Madam Speaker, I think our position is we did hold the, the, the recruitment, not stopped it. So that money should be used when actually the recruitment has been done, as it has been done. So, point of procedure that this yeah. money for the recruitment be maintained until it's uh, it's a uh, it's such a done uh, next year or whichever time we Point of doing. procedure, Chair. Yes, Honorable <laughs> Council Member from uh, Tanzania. Thank you, Chair. I noted that the Assembly has already voted on all votes. <laughs> Voting means approving. If that is the case, what is the reason for debating something which has already been approved? Is a preparation for the consideration. Very wise. Uh, Honorable Council Member, this item was stood over. It was the first item we, we, we proposed for supply and it was stood over because the Honorable Chair Council objected for this specific I'm item. Sure. It was stood over. We did not consider. But uh, the explanations here which have been given by Chair Council, we cannot pass a budget on, on conditions on condition <laughs> and i i further clarification rather than speak madam chair yes honorable chair i would want to seek uh, clarification from the chair council he has said one of the reasons why the budget was reduced is because of cross cutting uh, across the community now in the budget for secretariat especially the secretary general we removed the money which is that the 70500 us dollars meant to facilitate him to attend three plenaries outside Arusha. Because we deemed that for purposes of ensuring we don't spend too much, we have three plenaries in Arusha. Is council chair trying to tell us that yeah. I should just give that money to Secretary General, even if he's not going to use it, just to maintain the budget? I would want that clarification. Madam Chair. Chair yeah, Council, please. Chair yeah, Council has to answer, please. <coughs> uh, Madam yeah, Chair, Council, think... maybe as, as you answer, you see, when you're passing a budget, it is for an item that has been approved by the House. But in this particular instance, even the, the, the council members do not approve of the secretary going ahead with the recruitment process. So once you don't approve of it, which you demonstrated during your committee hearings, once you don't approve of it, the only option the, the committee has is to, to remove money from that item. It cannot be passed pending, pending on condition. Once the item is disapproved, actually the budget is also removed. So you disapproved of recruitment. That is the basis that I understand the Honorable Chair has used to, to reallocate these resources. Honorable Clarification, Chair Madam Maybe Speaker. you can clarify to us, Honorable Chair Council. Clarification. The question he has also raised. Madam Ch Honorable Madam Member, Chair. Chair Council is on the floor. Uh, Honorable Chair, I think the position of the Council is we have uh, requested for this money and uh, whether it's for the recruitment which we have stopped but uh, postponed, not stopped. As and when it's resumed, that money be allocated to that item. That's number one. Number two, the issue of the travel for the SCG and legs, again, the, the move they have taken has to be again be approved by the by, by the council no. again. No, Otherwise, no. No. <laughs> well, that's our position, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Honorable Fancy, 
<laughs> Madam Chair, I, I'm very surprised by seeing the uh, council chair removing the money for recruitment. As he knows, since almost last year, we don't have a proper uh, uh, clerk and, and, and deputy clerk. Oh, this one is and now I've heard, I've heard, I've heard that they are postponing the recruitment until next year. So they this assembly to collapse. That is my question to him. Honorable uh, oh, oh. Chair Council. Yes. Budget, this, we are considering budget estimates. And they are not cast in stone. That's why several times the no come for supplementaries and the like. So for now, we are going to pass the budget as we deem fit. And as you deem fit as council, why I say you deem fit is because you disapprove of some of these activities. So once you disapprove, the house does not provide for such an activity that has been disapproved. So once the activity is reinstated, then we shall again go for either environment or for a supplementary to finance such an activity. That is the budget process. So now, our honorable members, can you mute your microphones, please? Can you mute your microphones, honorable members? Check your microphone in front of you. And mute it. So members, I think now I am going to put the figure that the chair council has uh, proposed. The chair council has proposed a figure of 48 million five hundred and four four hundred and one. I'm going to put it to vote. But mind you, these figures have already been the figures we have approved are taken into uh, uh, consideration the adjustment, the adjusted figure. So I put the matter to vote. Honorable members in favor of increasing the budget from 4841801 to 4850401. Those in favor of the chair council's position, please raise your hand. Those against, I can see one hand from Honorable Mary in acceptance of the chair council's position. Those against? No, Honorable Mary, Honorable Chair, Honorable Speaker, you haven't seen us. Oh, okay. Those are in favor or against? Okay, those are four. Those are four hands. I'm seeing four hands. Please. May you repeat the question, Procedure, please? Madam Speaker. Order. Madam Speaker. Order. Order. Yes, Honorable Chair. Is it in order for the Honorable Francoise and Honorable yeah. Bahad, who have signed on the General Purpose Committee report that they have presented, for them to come and be as if they are giving a minority report on the, and there's no the, minority the report when they are members of General Purpose? Yeah. It's not in order. Honorable yeah, members, in order. In order. Uh, Honorable members, definitely that is not in order, especially when you sign in agreement, you cannot come to vote against what you signed in agreement for in the report. Honorable Francois, Honorable Francois, please, I'm communicating. Honorable Francois, in short, you are not in order. So can we proceed with the voting? I see those in... Honorable Francois, okay, go ahead and give your clarification. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm supporting the, the figures provided by our, our chair council. First of all, this budget is from the, the council. This, this, as far as committee is concerned, there is a point that was a missed out. There is a point of, of vehicles, of DSGs, that is not being brought on the floor of the house. And even we asked the GP consideration, I oppose that figure to be reallocated, and they are all aware, and now I'm given a chance. So Order, Madam Speaker. Speaker. I think it is my right because no. all members are being asked 
either to support or not supporting. I think I'm in order because I'm also a member of, of this house. And you know that when we pass the budget by majority, I expect the majority decision, but the majority that does, does, does not ignore the minority without even minority. Point of order, Madam Speaker. Point of order. Honorable, can I first give advice here? Honorable members, I want to beg your indulgence to take any session of the committee and all activities of parliament seriously so that we, we don't have this kind of position where members sign in approval when you sign a report in approval you have you have signed in detail you need to read the report it's very important always read the reports before you put your signature that of incompetence. because when you come to disapprove your own report which you have assented to in the house you really i don't want to say any more words but <laughs> it is out of order you can only dissent when you have not signed and you come with a minority report but to sign and then come and disapprove in the house is really against our own rules of procedure so i want to encourage members that Let's try to read reports. When they bring for you a report to sign, read please read through so that if you are in disagreement, you have time to object to the report that has been presented. So, honorable members, I think let's proceed in accordance with the rules of procedure. So those four, I saw four hands against. Those against the uh, uh, those for the position of the chair council. Now those against the figures uh, provided by the chair council. Please raise your hands. Who have been struck out because they are members of GP. Okay. Yes. So the eyes have it. The nays. So the nays have it actually. <laughs> The nays for the figure are supplied by the chair council. Now, the only option we have as a, a, a house is to go ahead and supply these figures. I now propose the question that a total sum of United States dollars, 48,418,301, and a vote 001, be provided for the expenses of the East African Community Secretariat including the Defense Liaison Office and the Directorate of Customs and Trade for the financial year 2020-2021. I now put the question that a total sum of United States dollars 48 million, sorry, I now put the question that a total sum of United States dollars 48 million 418,301 and a vote 001 be provided for the expenses of the East African Community Secretariat, including the Defense Liaison Office and the Directorate of Customs and Trade for the financial year 2020-2021. Those in favor, raise your hands. Those against, those against, raise your hands. <laughs> the eyes have it. Motion for the house to resume. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Chair, council, please. Resume and the committee of supplies and the committee of ways and means report there to uh, beg to submit. I now put the question that the House do resume and the Committee of, 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 ways, and, uh, of ways and Means and Supply do report there too. Those in favor say aye to the contrary, no? Those in favor? Those against? The ayes have it. 
Report from the Committee of Ways and Means and the Committee of Supply. Show me where you are here. Chair uh, Madam Speaker, I beg to report that the Committee of Ways and Supplies has considered and approved the financial statements, and the Committee of Supplies considered and approved the budget of East African Community for the financial year 2019 2020. Uh, first, 2020 In both cases. Council, please. Pronounce the figures as supplied by the, by the house. Yeah, Those are the figures you have to supply. <laughs> thank you, Madam, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Madam figures Chair. are supplied by the House Honorable Chair Council. Uh, Honorable Speaker. Oh, Comfortable with the figures, oh, just let the House consider the budget and pronounce and. and uh, and supplied it with amendments. You may not pronounce the figures if you are uncomfortable with the figures. Okay, amendments. Okay, um, Honorable Speaker, I beg to report that the Committee of Ways and Means concerning approved the financial statements and the Committee of Supply considered and approved the budget of ESC for the financial year 2021 with amendments. Uh -huh. Where are you? Motion for the for the adoption of the report of the Committee of Ways and Means and the Committee of Supply. Honorable members and oh chair council. Chair Council. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the report from the Committee of Ways and Means and the Committee of Supply be adopted. With amendments. With amendments. <laughs> I now put the question that the report of the committee of the whole house be adopted. Those in favor, raise your hands. Procedure, procedure, Madam Speaker. Yes, Honorable Wanjiku. Honorable Speaker, please pronounce the figures as per the assembly as the assembly has passed in full figures. The fact that the amendments means Chair Council acknowledges the figures, and the figures are unanswered, Honorable Member. Nothing changes the record of the answered. So whether we pronounce the figures or not, so long as the Honorable Chair Council approves or acknowledges that there were amendments is enough and those amendments are unanswered so please yes, let's uh, honorable speaker i made the amendments i did submit to the house <laughs> and i'm uh, <coughs> Uh, Honourable members, uh, item number nine of, on the order paper, the East African Community App Appropriation Bill 2020, Bill Second Reading. Chair Council. Uh, Madam Speaker, the, the object of this bill is to appropriate a sum of the United States. 97,669,788 out of the budget of the community to meet expenditure for the organs and institutions of the community for the financial year 30th June 2020. Chair Council, justification? As the uh, chair council has given justification, I now propose the question yeah. that the, the East African Community Appropriation Bill 
2020 be read for the second time. Here, yeah, Council. Hmm. No? Second be, time. You should have done this. Uh... Procedure, Madam Chair. Yes, Honorable Abdikadi. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. Madam Chair, this House deliberated for many hours on the budget that is before us this evening, uh, from the whole afternoon until now. We've gone through figures vote by vote, approved and voted them vote by vote. And whatever we voted in for anyone with a logic to see is a total sum of 104063020. We cannot pass and possibly attempt to pass an appropriation bill different from the budget that is being passed by the House, which has been supplied to the House by the Committee of uh, Ways and Means and by the Committee of Supplies. There is no way. Chair Council put a spirited argument to the House to persuade the House to. to, to Change those figures when we were at the committee stage of ways and means. That was the appropriate time for him to fight for his for the figure of uh, 97. The House argued and debated otherwise and resolved and voted to pass a figure of 104063020. That is the figure we will appropriate. The Honorable Chair Council, and as a man who understands how Parliament works. It's not the first time that this house is changing these figures. He might be new to us, but I chaired a committee that has changed these figures before. We've, uh, we have changed these figures before. And Madam Chair, let me make one argument that I was holding since the whole of this afternoon, very clear. Uh, Council Chair, this budget process did not start today. It did not even start a few weeks back. It started back in pre-budget -pre early last year. And the figures we were given the figure that we have now of 104 is actually conservative from the figure which we were given in the pre-budget. And that is what this House decided to adopt. Move on. Madam Speaker, let, let me say, Article 49.1 of the, of, the, of, 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 the, of, of the treaty is, is, is very, very clear. The Assembly shall be the legislative organ of the community. An appropriation bill is a, is a piece of legislation. We are just about to pass a piece of legislation. It is our work. It is us. When you further read that um, uh, article, Madam Chair, you will realize that uh, the approval of the budget of the community, if, if it were to be taken face value to say that, you know, Approval means that 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 we are we, we, we are uh, looking at we are sorry we are now back, back in the main, main uh, screen. screen. Members, can you mute your microphones, please? Mute your microphones. I don't know where to see I don't know if I'm visible where I am, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Madam we can Speaker. See you. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I will. This one. Who is that? Right? I don't know this face. Yeah, they have gone off. They have switched them off. It's there. It's there. Can't hear. There you. Can you please? Your microphone is muted. Please, Honorable Babdikadi, please. Can you switch on your microphone? Many. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I was uh, making. I'm, I'm sorry that we are technology is trying to fail us on one side, but we are depending on another. So we have standby. Even if it is anybody trying to switch Nairobi off, there is no way you will switch at all, us off. Nobody, because we are experiencing serious uh, uh, disruptions on on our main screen here, Madam Chair. I must I must protest that that is happening to us, especially as we get to this critical uh, point of passing the budget. I want to help and stand very strongly with the person who took over from me in this committee, Honorable Namara and his team. They have worked very hard. They have done a diligent job. They have done what is allowed of them by the treaty, Madam Chair. Tomorrow, 
it shall not be said that this committee has not this uh, the, the assembly has failed to pass the budget of the community their house tonight is ready to pass and use its powers according to the treaty to pass the budget of the community and that is what we are ready to do now madam speaker any other attempt to try and produce other figures which were not supplied to this house by the committee of ways and means is not allowed in, in, in our procedures there is no way council can report back to this house or purport to report back to this house figures which which were not voted for during the committee stage i mean or the the, the stage of the ways and means the, the, the ways and means let us go to the exact figure for uh, for, for the total sum 104-063-020 is what we voted for and is what we will appropriate. Thank nothing you. more, nothing, nothing less, less, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable thank members, you. thank you. Yes, yes. Honorable yes. members, I'm only here to guide, yes. the debate, to guide the debate of the House, and I'm happy that uh, you are very attentive. Point I was also wondering what members were doing. Now that we've made sir. that correction, I want to request Point. the Chair Council to the respect the position of the House, that these are the figures that have been approved. And as we proceed now to the, to the appropriation bill, the figures will be read <coughs> once again, and we pronounce ourselves on those figures. Because Madam the Speaker, final appropriation is what we are now moving to. Madam we are Speaker, now to do the final appropriation. Honorable member from Burundi, please. Madam Speaker, can you Madam the Speaker, please? Yes, Honorable Chair, Council. <clears throat> uh, I did mention some some reservations on some items. I said I'm going to con con consult my my colleagues before they approved. Number one, and that, that was very clear. Number one, number two, we, we did give GP 97 million budget. Mm -hmm. Now, approving 101 means I have to go back to, to, to the pattern I, don't approve it. The I should have done the same before we are here. I cannot approve what the pattern states gave me to approve. I submit. Honorable yes. Chair, uh, Council, this is the committee of the whole house. Not the council meeting. And uh, we are sitting here as members of the, of the house and a committee of the whole house. And now here, where there is disagreement on figures, we voted. We Point voted the on the figures that were provided by the, the council, and we also voted on the other figures. So the figures that members voted for are the figures we are going to appropriate honorable chair council. That is the procedure in the House. Uh, 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 honorable Speaker, can I... Can I have a, a small procedural issue. Honorable Noor, I'm still talking here. What What's the, uh, the procedural matter, Honorable Noor? Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Honorable Speaker, I want to, uh, uh, to tell the Chair of Council to really understand the process and procedures of the House. The essence of putting the Council members to be members of this House is for them to argue their case convince the members, and in the final analysis, they can have, as a minority, their, their say, but the majority of the members have their way. I think that one must be understood. There's no two way about it that we are passing the budget or we are not passing halfway that we are going to consult. This House has the mandate to pass the budget finally. If at all the Council could be able to pass it, then they shouldn't have brought it to the House. So please, the House has approved what it has approved. I can be able to understand maybe the position of the, of the Chair of the Council because he may have no have time to prepare an appropriation bill afresh, depending on the amendment that has been made by the members. Because maybe he has prepared the bill earlier, which reads 97 million. But for now, as we are in crash program of passing this budget at midnight and burning the oil, the chair must be able to adjust his figures according to what the House has passed. There's no way that we approve the budget of 104 million, and then we are going to pass a appropriation bill of 93 million. He should not expect that. 
be logical. Let's, let's, let's understand each other. Uh, in the final analysis, it's not, the, it's not even the summit who is going to approve this budget. It's this house which has the mandate to approve and make laws of the, of the community. So despite the fact, I'm sorry, that maybe the, the chair of the council, this is the, the first proceeding that he is participating in, in, this, in this kind of situation. And it is also a very awkward situation because in normal circumstances, these two aspects can be separated because the motion could have been passed and then the, the, the chair could have been given time to go and prepare appropriation bill depending on the amendment that has been made by, approved by the House. But if there is no time now, I don't know how we can be able to, to, to place a, 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 a appropriation bill which reached 97 million before the House and then we debate it and approve it. Uh, it's only for the House to amend it the way they have, we have amended the, 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 the earlier figure. <clears throat> so let him read whatever he wants to read. But in the final analysis, we are going to vote and approve what is necessary and what has already been approved by the House. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Members, there is a, a motion in the House already, and the motion was that the East African Community Appropriation Bill. 2020 be read for the second time. I now, since the, the debate, we have already debated on these matters, and the chair has already presented the report, I now put the question that the East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020 be read for the second time. Those in favor, raise your hands. Those against? The eyes have it. The East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020. Bill Committee Stage. Honourable members, during Bill Committee Stage, we shall consider the bill clause by clause. And I wish to remind you that the same bill has a provision for the funds to be allocated to the organs and institutions. Ordinarily, the funds that you supply are the same funds that you put in the appropriation bill. So you may take note of that. So at some point, the chairperson of the Committee on General Purpose, when we are considering the schedule, where those figures are provided, shall have to move a motion to effect the changes in respect of what you do during the Committee of Supply. Close one. I now put the question. That close one do stand as part of the bill. Those in those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those I against. We are not in favor. The chair should move the, the, the amendment be a motion. Members, please wait. You will move your amendment. The time is the, the chair will guide you. The chair will guide you. So we are now on clause one. And I propose the question that clause one do stand as part of the bill. And I put the question that clause one do stand as part of the bill. Those in favor say aye. Raise your hands. Aye. Aye. We need we need the appropriation bill. It was, it was with the GP. This is the appropriation bill. We are now on close one. Those against, raise your hands. The eyes have it. Close two. The schedule. Close two. The bill. We have not passed that. Close two. We have not done close one. This shows you are moving. Clause two of the bill. I now put the I propose the question that clause two do stand as part of the bill. I now put the question that clause two stand as part of the bill. Those in favor raise your hands. We are following Namara here. Namara, if we see your hand up, we are our hands also up. <laughs> Those Namara, against, I'm, I, I only look for your hand. Honorable oh, Fatuma, for members, please decorum in the house. Those against? 
The eyes have it. They shed you? The schedule, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. I would want to, uh, to amend. I, would, I, 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 I raise to move a motion to amend uh, the schedule of the bill uh, regarding the money which was appropriated to all organs and institutions. Uh, so vote by vote. And uh, vote 001. I move a motion that we amend the figure of the AC Secretariat from forty-eight million dollars five hundred sixty-four four zero one to forty-eight million dollars four hundred and eighteen three zero one. I beg to move. I now put the question that Propose. the amendment Propose. to vote zero zero to the schedule vote zero zero one as proposed by the chair. Do stand as part of the the bill. Those in favor say, raise your hands. Those against? Those against? The eyes have it. Right now, Speaker, I I I move a motion. Oh, no, 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 chair. I move a motion to amend vote 002 on the figure of the East African Legislative Assembly from $16 million to $23 million I beg to move. Uh, honorable members, I now put a question that the amendment to the schedule on vote 002 uh, from uh, 16 million seven five five seven two five to 230 do stand as part of the bill. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Put, put, put. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Those against? The eyes have it. Uh, right honorable chairperson, right honorable chair, I move a motion on vote 003, the East African Court of Justice, that uh, the figures of $3 million, be amended to $4 million, I beg to move. Honorable members, I now put the question that, schedule, that the schedule be amended on the vote 003, the East African Court of Justice for the figure provided 3970406 to read now as, pro as proposed by the chair to read for figure 4198406 as provided by the chair. Those in favor say aye. 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 Raise your hands. The eyes have it. Right now, Chair Person, I raise to move a motion to amend the vote 004, the like Victoria Benson Commission. Uh, not, not amended. Oh, no, no. Uh, right on, Madam Chair Person, I concede on the other votes on the like Victoria Benson Commission, vote 004. To remain at eight million dollars three hundred eighty zero five seven. I beg to move. You read the vote. All. Read all. Read all. all. Uh, uh, also, the, all the other votes, vote zero zero five, the East African Council of the Royal Commission. I beg to move that it remains at one million dollars five three six seven five one. Vote zero zero six, East African Expiry Commission remains at one million dollars three nine nine three one eight. Vote 007, the East African Health Research Commission remains at $1,879,600. Vote 008, East African Competition Authority remains at $1,128,240. Vote 009, the University Council of East Africa remains at $10,977,276. Vote 010, the Victoria Fisheries Organization uh, to be $3,077,934.
and also uh, right honorable chair i beg to move uh, a motion to amend the total from 97 million dollars 669708 to the new figure as as approved by the assembly of 104 million us dollars 063020 i beg to move uh, madam chairperson now honorable members and i propose that the figures for vote 004, Lake Victoria Basin Organization, 8,380,057. Vote 005, East African Science and Technology Commission, 1,536,751 dollars. Vote 006, East African Israeli Commission, 1,399,318 dollars. Vote 007, East African Health Research Commission, 1,879,600. Vote 008, East African Competition Authority, 1,128,240 dollars. Inter-University Council for East Africa, uh, United States dollars, 10,977,276. Vote 010, Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. Uh, Three million dollars seventy-seven thousand nine hundred thirty-four, and a total figure therefore, a total figure therefore of United States dollars one hundred and four million sixty-three thousand twenty, do stand as part of the bill, as provided for in the schedule. Will those in favour say aye by raising oh, your dude. hands? Those are against. <laughs> the eyes have it. My hand is very clear. <laughs> the, the title. I now propose that the title of the bill do stand as part of the bill. As part of the bill. Members, please, do stand as part of the bill. And I now put the question that the title do stand as part of the bill. Those in favor, raise your hands. Aye. Namara, Tukoju. Namara, Kwapi. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Can I do as it be? Those are Guinness. <laughs> the eyes have it. Motion for the House to resume. Chair, Council. <coughs> yes, no, sir. Uh, <coughs> Honorable Chair, I beg to move that the House to resume and to move the whole House here to report here to You report here. Uh, Honorable, Honorable Members, and I propose that the 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 house do resume and the com <laughs> I now put the question that the whole house the committee of the whole house has considered the the bill and and do resume and the whole committee of the whole house do report there too. those in favor raise your hands the eyes have it. Uh, a report from the committee of the whole house. Chair Council. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, I beg to report that the committee of the whole house has considered the being titled. East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020 and passed it without amendment. With amendment. Honorable Chair, with amendments. Please pronounce your With amendment. Honorable Chair Council. With amendment. Honorable Chair Council. Chair Council, please. We are waiting for you.
So, Madam Speaker, Kennedy Ayerson should switch over his, 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 his uh, computer. Kennedy, you can switch off. Honorable Chair Council, you have a duty to report what has transpired in the House. The position of the whole House, not just the opposition, but the position of the whole House. So you are now, we are now waiting for you. Madam Chair, uh, Madam Speaker, may I procedurally, on, on a point of procedure, remind the Council Chair that should this process flop at this yes, stage? Yes, Honorable. That will this process flop at this stage because of any reason, especially one coming from the council chair, it means that this bill has flopped, it has collapsed, the whole six process months. of budget making has collapsed, That's a and it's not months. going to get another six months before you can bring this bill back to this house again. Let us not joke with the procedures of the House, Madam Chair. The House has decided and made a decision at the committee stage. The Chair should feel no guilt at all in reporting what the House has decided. It might not necessarily reflect what he wishes to, but it is what the House has decided. That decision of the House at that stage must be reported. I thank you, Madam Speaker. You, you, yeah. Yes, Honorable Chair, Council, you have, you have a duty to report the position of the House, that is what you have to. It's not just about your position. This is the committee of the whole House. And the position taken, Honorable Order, please. Honorable Order, I'm, concern, I'm, um, I'm giving a... Uh, yes. Honorable I Chair. A, I beg the advice of CTC before I move this uh, board. Yes. CTC, please. Okay. Okay. Here, yeah, Council. CTC. CTC, can you please advise the chair council? Oh, please advise. <laughs> the question is if CTC is still there. <laughs> Can we have no, CTC you your computer. giving advice on this matter to the chair council? CTC, please. Honorable Batuma, mute your... Honorable Speaker. Honorable yes, speaker. chair council. Yes, I want SG and CTC, especially SG as a counting officer, to intervene in this situation and CTC. I <laughs> Chair Council, Chair Council, the only advisor to the legal advisor to the House is the CTC. It is the CTC who can only give you advice at this moment in time, not the Secretary General. Even the Secretary General stands to be advised by the CTC, just like all of us here. So, can we have the position of Mr. Fatuma, please? Yes. Arusha, please do confirm whether CTC is still within the house. Clark. Right on up. The CTC is in the house and the, I think he's on the floor now. CTC. Yes, I hope uh, you have understood the matter before you. Uh, if you have not, then uh, the chair council can uh, explain to you the matter for which he requires advice. Otherwise, we are proceeding with the supply of figures and the uh, the issue here is that the House has considered these figures and approved the figures. Amendments. What now, amendments? we are considering the bill. And I believe the question the Chair Council wants to know from you is which figure does he pronounce himself on? That is what he requires you to advise him. <laughs>
Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, um, as I understand it, the Chairperson of Council came with a bill with, um, with I think, 97 million, as I see it. And um, the, the, the House took a certain direction to amend. Now, I think it is important to one one capture the if the position of the chair council has been captured on the hand side because i know the as far as the council is concerned they had suggested they had approved and i think that was in tandem with that 132 sub article 3 they had approved the budget of 97 million dollars and and some other figures slightly beyond that and I, I would like to believe that has been captured if if that is has been captured because that's the position of the chair council and the, on behalf of other members of the council so the, the bill was brought to you, and uh, I understand he has, he has received some amendments in, in, in terms of the figures. So what you are considering now is the bill as amended. amended. But I also believe you have captured the, 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 the position of the chair council in respect of the fact that uh, in, in pursuant to the provisions of the treaty, they had brought you a figure. And... Uh, what? The law say, and 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 you have amended it. So what you are considering now is the bill as you have amended it. I I, I suppose that is sufficient yeah. here, Chair Council. So Chair Council, I think the citizens has advised you accordingly, and we need to pro move to proceed with the bill as amended. In short, that's what I've understood. So Chair Council, now that the bill has been amended. The figures that we are going to proceed with are the figures as amended by this house. And those are the figures you'll have to read, Chair Council. So, in accordance with the advice of the CTC, those are the figures we have to consider as amended. So that's how we are going to proceed, with Chair Council. Um, Honorable Speaker, I want the CTC to pronounce himself which figures, or which figure for that matter, are we debating or approving now? At the council. At the council. Uh, council point, this is the position of, of the whole house. This is not council. Point the procedure. What we are approving is the position of the committee of the house, not the position of the council. So, CTC, can you answer the question accordingly? Yeah, I, I suppose the, the chair council only has to say they, they approve the bill as amended without necessarily going into the details of what has been, because they have already presented this position anyway. So it will be sufficient to say the bill as amended. Thank you again. Thank you, chair council, chair CTC. So I now want to put the... Question. I want now. I now request the chair council to report to the to house. Give the report from the committee of the whole house. That's the stage we are now. Motion Chair Council, please, as I passed by CTC. <coughs> Madam Speaker, I think the report that I think the report that the committee of the whole house has considered a bill entitled the East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020 and passed it uh, with amendments as divided by CTC. <laughs> thank you, Council Chair. Thank you. Special uh, Chair Pole. My friend, is there any socket there? Hello? Are you okay there? We permit you. We permit you. Because How do you resume?
and the committee of the whole house do report there too. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, please pull it for me. He knows where to put it. This is the owner of the house. Honorable yes. Nur, please. You, you will do it. Yeah, okay. I now put the question that it is the report of the committee of the whole house be adopted. Those in favor, raise your hands. Namara, where are you? Objection. Namara. Yes, Honorable Chair. Objection. Namara has objected. We are all objecting. Honorable Namara, please stop <laughs> misguiding us. Yes, I object. I object that I would want to record, to move a motion to recommit clause two of the bill to the committee of the whole house. Give just question, honorable. Uh, the, the, my justification, uh, Honorable Chairperson, is the right honorable speaker is to reconcile the figures in clause two with what we are provided in the schedule, the bill. Can can you read the reconcile the figures? Honorable Speaker, if I tea now, honorable me. members, and I move a motion that we do recommit this bill close to two. consider clause two for amendment as the chair has proposed. I now put the question. Those in favor for recommittal of the bill for the purposes of clause two. But Ken, you're Those right. Why, favor? Madam, Madam uh, Speaker, point of procedure, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we we had we had we went through the committee of the whole house, and the uh, chair of budget committee took us close by close. We voted. Uh, the first clause being that clause with 48 million under yeah. as you vote yeah. zero one, zero two as 23, and we have voted up to no, the total of one zero four zero six three yes. zero two zero. Now we have resumed back the whole house. The chair yeah. council has reported back to the progress that has happened at that stage, yeah. it is now asked to vote the bill and to go to the third reading of the bill. Why are we recommitting close two back to committee stage? Why are we taking the house no. back to, to, to the committee stage? The chair of uh, GP needs to come clearly on that argument, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Honorable yeah. Abdikadi, I let me explain. Honorable members, we are not amending the schedule. We are amending clause two. Of the bill. And I don't know whether it is being screened on your screens. If you read clause two no. of the bill, the figures, the figures do not match with the figure, the total sum in the schedule. And therefore, it has to be reconciled. That is what the chair is proposing, that we reconcile the two figures. The two figures do not match, so that's we, where we well, are. Well, uh, I stand, I stand guided, and Madam I hope... Speaker. I stand guided. It's the right thing to okay. do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question, we, Madam we are back. We are back in the uh, in the committee at the bill committee stage. Committee of the whole house. We have to reconsider those two. Close two of the bill. Honorable Chair. Uh, right, Honorable uh, Honorable Chair. I want to move an amendment at on close two of the bill to amend the figure that's provided from United States dollars ninety seven million six hundred sixty nine thousand seven hundred eighty seven hundred and eight to a figure of uh, 104 million 063020 i beg to move uh, honorable members i now propose that clause 2 
as amended do stand as, as part of the bill? I now put the question that clause two as amended do stand as part of the bill. Those in favor, raise your hands. Kono, kono ju, kono ju. Namara, ju. Namara. Members, please observe. Him, you are a member of yes, those against. Those against. The eyes have it. Motion for the house to resume. Chair Council. We can't hear. Chair Council, please. Chair Council has to move the motion. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, I beg to move that the House please resume and the Committee of the Whole House uh, report that to. Uh, honorable members, I now put the question that the, the House do resume and the committee of the whole house do report there too. Those in favor, raise your hands. Those against, those against, the eyes have it. Report from the committee of the whole house. Chair Council. Um, Chair Council. Madam Speaker, I beg to report that the Committee of the Whole House has considered the bill entitled the East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020 and passed it uh, with amendments as divided by CTC. Council Chair. Uh, adoption of the report from the Committee of the Whole House. I now beg to move that the report of the Committee of the Whole House be adopted as amended. Will those in favor raise their hands? Namara is raising his hand. Members, raise your hands. Those against? Those against? <laughs> <laughs> the eyes have it. <laughs> the East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020. Yeah. Bill third reading. Chair yeah, Council. Put on microphone, Mr. Councillor. Uh, Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020 be read the third time and do pass. Chair, you have to, Chair Council, you have to indicate as amended in your wordings. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020 uh, be read the third time and be passed okay. as amended and as advised by the CTC. <laughs> <laughs> I now put the question that the East African Community Appropriation Bill 2020 as amended be read for the third time and do pass. Those in favor, raise your hands. Aye. This member, raise your hands. Aye. Those against? As advised by CTC. As advised by CTC. Those against? <laughs> the eyes have it. The bill, the bill for an act 
the bill for an act entitled the East African Community Appropriation Act 2020, an act of the community to appropriate a total sum of 100 million, 104 million US dollars, 63,020 stands passed by the House. It has been a long journey. I want to communicate as advised by the council and the members that have stood with us up to this time and the house for successfully passing the budget for the East African community for the financial year 2020-2021. One. including the appropriation bill for financial year 2020. Congratulations, honorable members. Thank you. Thank you. A very nice, uh, Madam Speaker, today. Madam Speaker. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Chair Council in particular <laughs> for his resilience and for having been there. Thank you, Council Chair. Through the whole process, Thank you, Council Chair. With agreements, with disagreements, but I, I think we agreed <laughs> to disagree and agree finally. So I want to thank you, Chair Council, for being there all this time, and I want to thank you for the resilience. Yes. Honorable Chair Council. Thank you so much. And Honorable Ndumbar was also is, is also around. Now, Honorable MCTC. members, having passed this. Uh, the bill and also the appropriation bill for, for the year, the financial year 2020. I now adjourn the House Senior DA. Well done. Well done. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. You are the best. I need to give. Congress, Congress, the honorable members. I need to give. Yes. Congratulations. 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 Congratul